out of 10 cats. He's coming home, David the Deal. From The Apprentice, Ruth Badger. And their captain, John Locke. And facing them tonight, sweet Swede, Ulrika Johnson. Naughty but nice, it's Alan Carr. And their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, here's your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello, and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys, and statistics. Did you know, for example, researchers say 65% of men are happy to have sex on a first date. Happy? We're high-fiving strangers on the night bus. <laughs> The richest man in the world, the Sultan of Brunei, has 257 lavatories in his personal palace. Must be all that foreign food. <laughs> and the scent of a human footprint is so strong that even humans can follow it. Although, to be fair, they can see it. <laughs> it's a footprint. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellists' job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean, David, Ruth Badger, what have the nation been talking about this week? I think they've partly been talking about Big Brother, which, uh, which has just been on, hasn't it? One thing that I think is interesting about this year's Big Brother is they have got that bloke on who's got Tourette's syndrome. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens at that bit where Davina says, you're live on Channel 4, please do not swear. <laughs> Because he's going to explode, isn't he? <laughs> I, I, did, I did watch a little bit of it, and they seem... I, I, I don't know if I'm wrong, I may be wrong, but they seem incredibly thick. Yeah. <laughs> they say, I mean, it's like they could have gone to Argos with a net and just thrown it. <laughs> there were 12 people all the way. And they actually go through a selection process, don't they? <laughs> what is the selection process? It's just someone saying, are you stupid? <laughs> no, are you really stupid? I think it's either, have you got tits, or do you like tits? Yeah. <laughs> that woman, she called Lee, who, who spent £35,000 on her breasts. 30mm breasts. Look, have you seen them? They're grotesque. It looks like she's done it in loose change. That's another... <laughs> another five, uh... No, there's another £5 in here. <laughs> <laughs> there is this Kit Kat thing going on at the moment, is there? Have you seen Kit that? Yeah. You can, yeah. If you eat a Kit Kat, there's a golden ticket and you have to go into the Big Brother house. Oh, Gordon Brown keeps taking me in for Tony. I've got another Kit Kat. What have a Kit Kat? <laughs> Can you get sympathetic to your ex? Because I think I've cut it off watching Big Brother. What? Yeah. Sympathetic, sympathetic you know, you, you, well, you put it on and within a minute you're going, WAITERS! <laughs> right, should we have a look and see whether Big Brother is one of the top five yes, most talked about things this that. week? Yes, it is. Yes, 57% of you have been talking about the return of Big Brother. One of the housemates, Imogen, is a former Miss Wales. She won it by wearing a sheepskin coat and shitting down her legs. <laughs> Right, moving on. Dave, Alan, Ulrika, what have the nation been talking about this week? Well, they've released that thing that Nottingham is the most dangerous place to live in England. Well, they think it was Nottingham, there was someone being mugged in front of the sign. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just ridiculous because they said, like, Nottingham's the most for gun crime and if you live in Leicester, you're more likely to get sexually assaulted. Now, I've seen the people of Leicester <laughs> and if I got sexually assaulted, I probably would move to Nottingham and hope to get shot. <laughs> <laughs> South End. I don't know if anyone's been to South End, but that's the safest, yeah. isn't it? And I think that's Essex. I'm thinking that's full of criminals. <laughs> but obviously, these criminals are commuting, aren't they? <laughs> to Nottingham. Bang, bang, then coming back to South End, and then when the police come along, it's like that scene from Bugsy Malone, where all the tables turn over. Hey, what crime? You know what I mean? <laughs> Alan, I can tell you that's not in our top five. This is the story that a new study has shown Nottingham to be the most crime-ridden place in the country. You know what Nottingham needs? A sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Sean, David and Ruth, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Well, there's a big debate about uh, whether, whether the NHS should fund uh, alternative therapies. Crystals and uh, healing massages, or sort of, I don't know what they do. I don't know what that is. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Reflexology. Yeah. 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 I mean, Reflexology and stuff yeah. like that. Somebody's got the choice of having something that may make you better or is going to completely cure you. Which one would you choose? Well, I think the thing is, if it's alternative therapy and they do it for you, you should be allowed to pay them with alternative money. <laughs> <laughs> Buttons. Yeah. 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 All I know is if I'm in an accident, I want to hear a siren, not wind chimes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to 
to a hospital, not a bleeding wigwam. <laughs> of it is rubbish. Look at that aromatherapy. <laughs> it is rubbish. When you smell something, it makes you feel better. Now, my brother does that, but he does it with glue. Your <laughs> 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 reflexologist is a load of rubbish. I'm not sorry, no, I'm it's great. About... What, what's I got a... pregnant through reflexology. Oh, that wasn't reflexology. <laughs> <laughs> that guy should be struck off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. When I was growing up, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's all alternative therapy in our house, basically. I'm of that age, though, you know. You go to your mum and say, I don't feel very well, she said. I know what you want. You want putting in a bag and shaking up. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Laughter was the best medicine my dad always used to say to me, which is why when I was six, nearly died with diphtheria. <laughs> <laughs> I can't breathe. Knock, knock. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? Done a, done a poo. Can I have some antibiotics? No, that. Dave, have you brought up in a cartoon? <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, well, let's have a look and see whether alternative medicine is it one of the top five talking points this week. Yes, yes it is. OK, Dave's team, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Um, Beckham's party. Yeah, mm. probably. Um, he was going to have a fly past. This was the interesting thing, wasn't it? He was going to have, like, a, a Spitfire and a Hurricane and a Lancaster bomber fly over the party. And, uh, and then they withdrew that, said a bit insensitive before the World Cup and all that business. But I'm thinking, that's a missed opportunity, that, isn't it? Put a tent with David Blaine in it, Gordon Ramsay, P. Diddy, <laughs> the Osbournes, a bomber going over, just one bomb, one phone call, that's all it is. <laughs> that's fine. She was excited, though, about the, uh, the planes coming over, cos she was hoping one would have a food pass the long time. <laughs> <laughs> they had this auction, didn't they? Dubai apartments, diamond-encrusted watches, all that, but no meat raffle. <laughs> Party, that, is it? <laughs> Wayne, Wayne Rooney bid £150,000, didn't he? Yeah, for a weekend for... with P. Diddy. In P. Diddy's went... apartment? Yeah, I said, he's here. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> you could just go and have a chat with him at the buffet. He's <laughs> <laughs> but I thought Puff Daddy must have, when he actually saw Wayne Rooney, thought, God, imagine him crashing round my house for two <laughs> days, <laughs> knocking vases over. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have Shrek in my house. <laughs> <laughs> bashing open the doors, not lifting the lid. <laughs> He's opening all his cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> Rumour is that Wayne Rooney's injury is progressing incredibly well. But people forget, you know, he is like 90% monkey. <laughs> Don't forget. I'll tell you what I found interesting. Posh and Bex have thrown this party for the World Cup. And there you've got our hopeful dancing. And everybody's going, no, because he's the hope to go and win the World Cup. And it was the, the Okie Koki as well. Yeah. <laughs> he kept it in for the left leg bit. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing is that you say that, but apparently, you know, he's been in this oxygen tent, but he doesn't like it because it yeah. leaves him feeling very kind of clear headed and yeah. lucid. Yeah. And so, <laughs> he doesn't like that. The thing is, I, all, all tents are full of oxygen, aren't they? All tents, yeah. 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 I, go camping, I don't go in a hermetically sealed vacuum. No. no. I leave the flaps open, had a bit of air in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's all it was. Yeah. He just went on a camping holiday. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether the Beckham's workout party is one of the most talked about things this week. Yes, it was. Yes, 47% of you have been talking about the Beckham star-studded World Cup party. Wayne Rooney was seen dancing despite breaking his fourth metatarsal. If you're watching, Wayne, the fourth metatarsal is the one next to the toe that didn't have any roast beef. <laughs> OK, two more to get. Fingers on buzzers. It's got to be, be the home, home office. office thing, hasn't it? I mean, there's been so many things going wrong, haven't there? And, like, the Home Secretary's never, like... They're not admitting it's their problem. They keep blaming the Home Secretary before them, going, well, well, that's what happens when you let David Blunkett do the filing. <laughs> <laughs> there's a to talk about... Immigration Minister said he didn't know how many illegal immigrants are in the country. Yeah, she said, I haven't got a clue. You think, well, obviously, because they're illegal. Yeah. <laughs> no one knows. How are you going to find out? You can just go into a room and go, would all the illegal immigrants stand <laughs> over there? <laughs> right, there's none in here, Sarge. <laughs> OK, let's have a look and see if a series of Home Office blunders are one of the top five talking know, points this week. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, the number one talking point this week has been a series of Home Office blunders. The new Home Secretary, John Reid, has launched a five-week knife amnesty. My advice is, don't hand it in like this. <laughs> <laughs> OK, one more to guess. Fingers on buzzers. We saw, I think it might be the Eurovision Song Contest. 
Because it's not really political now, it just means nothing, does it? They just put, vote for each other, don't they? Did you see the band that won? I, I've got a still of Lordy. Uh, you see any of them underneath their masks? It's the Norlands. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't even watching Eurovision. I was flip channel hopping and I clicked on it and I thought Leah's family from Big Brother had got a karaoke machine. <laughs> The thing that Dave said about the political thing, Terry Wogan was going on about that. He's saying the Balkan states all vote for each other and it's all political It does now. every year. Yeah, but I don't understand that. Are you really saying, right, that if Serbia invade, are about to invade Croatia again and their, their armies are massed on the borders, someone's going to go, no, hold on a minute, they gave Boo Bang a Bing Bong 12 points. <laughs> Well, lay down your arms. Yeah, and I went, oh, we gave Turkey two points, but they gave us bird flu, so do you know what I mean? It's like... It's... <laughs> Those guys, they wear... They wear <laughs> they've been saying that they wear masks and they'll be very... Because a lot of people have worn masks and got very successful, like Kiss and Slipknot and Mick Hucknall. Yeah. He, <laughs> he had a fat suit as well, so it worked for <laughs> But I thought maybe they didn't wear masks, they're finished. Maybe they left the sauna on full. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether the Eurovision Song Contest was up there. Yes, it was. <laughs> the Eurovision Song Contest reaches a potential audience of one billion people, but an actual audience of 28 gay guys. <laughs> all dressed as different countries. This is fabulous. <laughs> well, at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, David and Ruth have two points. Dave, Ulrika and Alan have three points. <laughs> The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information. So it's up to the panellists to fill in the gaps. Uh, here's your first question. 72% of women base everyday decisions on what? Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Always. It works for me. And you've made some great decisions. <laughs> yes. Seventy percent of women base everyday decisions on whatever pops in their pretty little heads. <laughs> Come on, Ruth, how do you I'd base your decisions? The mood of the day. Was you in a mood when you came up with that murder mystery thing? Because that was shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that ladies do while they sleep. Dreams. Yes, seventy-two percent of women base everyday decisions on their dreams. OK, here's your next one. 90% of Brits say the high street is overrun by what? Is it those people, like, you're walking along, you feel really good? Excuse me, have you had an accident? And you're like, no, I always look like this. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> is it all people? Market Day in Charlotte's like cocoon. <laughs> <laughs> those of them, why do they give them a heating allowance? They're never in. <laughs> <laughs> is it dog shit and Cafe Nero's? Starbucks. It's retail related. Is it boots? <laughs> I love boots. I always say like boots. I, like that. I say oh, boot. Well, I say you write it that big. I'll say that big. <laughs> I say, is this boots? I say look, you upset the customers. You know what I mean? Make it smaller. I'll say it smaller. Come on. Chain stores. Correct. <laughs> okay. Seventy-five percent of duck hunters say duck hunting is what? Something they have to say very carefully. <laughs> Dogging with a gun. What do you think, Bernie? You, you, you phoned it around in the bush and then the police are there. What do you say? I was hunting ducks. <laughs> it's very easy to hunt ducks in this country because if you think most of them are fed on bread, aren't they? So they're all heavily constipated. <laughs> There's a duck in my local park. Honestly, he's like a space hopper. He's just a bit of beef, <laughs> like that. And he's just more... He's like, uh, uh, uh. He can't get over to Duck Island. All... Do you know where they live? In the middle of the pond. They live on Duck Island. Is that what he's called? He lives on Duck Island. All the ducks. <laughs> in a fairy tale. <laughs> no. Every park has got a pond, doesn't it? And there's an island in the middle of it where all the ducks live and the humans oh. aren't allowed there. We handed it over to the ducks in about 1826. Yeah. <laughs> Ducks they have all their own laws. They can hang ducks there and everything they want. <laughs> have you ever, have you ever had a real good look in the Duck Island? It's disgusting what goes on there. <laughs> They're like animals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but a lot of ducks are heavily constipated. That's not exactly what I have on the oh, car. Oh, really? <laughs> it's about how the ducks might feel. Oh, it's painless. It's not cruel. I'm going to give you that. <laughs> that is near enough, yes. Yes, 75% of duck hunters say duck hunting is not stressful for ducks. <laughs> I don't know how duck hunters sleep at night. Oh, hang on, I do. On lovely downy pillows. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's five points for Sean's team and five points for Ooh, Dave's team.
The next round is called Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement and all they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Sean, David and Ruth, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. You can also do a laughing yoga, laughing exercise for the heart and mind. What you can do, just laugh. Very easy. Don't feel shy. <laughs> That was Guru Yogi Ramesh and his own unique brand of yoga. Here's your related statistic. The average woman laughs 100 times a day. The average man laughs only 50 times a day. What do you think? Is that true or false? I think the average woman is laughing maybe twice as much since the latest divorce settlement laws, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that could be quite Let's true. Let's hope so, because I'm going through a divorce. You're going through a divorce? I am. Has he got lots of money? No. Are you laughing more since you got divorced or oh, less? Yeah. Uh, I'm laughing. So you're happy? Twice Toby. as much. <laughs> Who's got the money? What's Him the... or you? Hang no, on. well, I'm going through one <laughs> too. Calm down. Really down. Well, no. Are you having one as well? <laughs> Mine's nearly through. Which one's that with? No. <laughs> 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 oh, no, you Mr. two just go. <laughs> you tend to a really catty loose women. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, Ruth. Can I tell you a real thing that they missed out on this uh, poll programme? It's a real poll. It was in the UK Jewish News, right? And I, I was voted, I was voted the sixth most sexy Jew in the world, right? <laughs> Number five was as Alan fucking Sugar. I right? <laughs> a man who looks like a crumpled tea bag. <laughs> OK, Ruth, if you had to choose between Alan Sugar and David Baddiel, who would you go with? Alan Sugar. You're fucking fired. <laughs> The average woman laughs 100 times a day. How do you measure a laugh? 100 times a day is a lot, isn't it? Could be one laugh. What is one laugh? Is that her? Huh? Is that a laugh? <laughs> <laughs> if I go, ha, 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 Does that count as one or seven? You can do quite a deep laugh, can't you, Alan? Yeah. <laughs> That's what he uses in dark clubs. That's the voice. That's oh, the my God, it's you! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. What do you think? True or false? I'd say that's true. I think it's not true. Ruth thinks it's true, so, Sean, you've got the casting vote. False. It's false. Absolute. Bull. It's not just false, All it's Tommy Cop. Yeah. <laughs> it's absolute Tommy Rot. It's You're false. absolutely right, it is false. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Justice. Yes, it is false. Women laugh 55 times a day. Men have a baser sense of humour, so they laugh more, on average, 69 times a day. <laughs> 69. <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> David, Ulrika and Alan, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Polish a floor and put a rug on it. You might as well set a man trap. I think he'd only just come from the hospital. <laughs> a public information film there highlighting the dangers of cleaning your house. <laughs> Here's your related statistic. Every year, more people injure themselves with vegetables than with chainsaws. <laughs> if you go to one of these parties that have vegetable-based party games, <laughs> Halloween, mate of mine, uh, third-degree burns to his face, bobbing for chips. <laughs> but, well, that... <laughs> you see, with a little wire basket, Ben, he'd been down as far as the basket. Come on! Ah, <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Can't tell. Too many blisters, mate. No idea. I mean, chainsaws, they are quite, aren't they? You can imagine people injuring themselves. They're quite menacing. Like, you wouldn't get Eminem coming on stage, would you, with a marrow? <laughs> <laughs> I ate me wife, the bitch. <laughs> Mofo, you know. Looks like he's really here. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what do you reckon? If you're stupid enough to injure yourself with a vegetable, the chances are they're not going to trust you with a chainsaw, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely true. This is definitely true. This is true, true. Yeah, For put, the very I'll reasons. I'll put a whole pound on it. Really? Courgettes on it. I'd say it's true. You say it's true. You're not well. asking them. You're I know, asking I'm just us. checking in with the Badger. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely true. true. It's got to it's be true. true. So, well, I can tell you that the answer is true. Yes. yes.
Yes, every year, 14,000 Brits injure themselves with vegetables compared to just 1,200 who injure themselves with chainsaws. So, at the end of that round, I can tell you that it's six points for Sean's team and six points for Dave's team. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and it's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Top thing men look for in a pub. I think the top thing I look for in a pub is a door. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to first hear, how do I get in? <laughs> <laughs> and then I would like a fine selection of organic wines and world music on the jukebox. <laughs> Stop it, you. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, what do you look for in a pub? Um, normally the bar. <laughs> it is drink related. Oh, oh so a good selection of lagers, beers. Oh, doubles, doubles offer. Two Happy doubles, hour, Dub two hour. doubles for Happy hour is the right answer. Rick is going again. Yes! Come on! Yes, the price in a beer, that's the same. Yes, the top thing men look for in a pub is happy hour. Most unlucky thing that can happen to you. Is it leaving war torn Basra, having sex with a minging immigration officer, then being re owned in Nottingham? <laughs> Uh, that is significantly worse than what I've got down here, but this is... You've got to remember this is a survey by direct line. The unluckiest thing I've ever heard it happen to anybody... Do you ever hear this story about... This is true story. Fabio, the, the male model... You ever heard of Fabio? He's had, he was his male model, lived in Hollywood, and he had loads of, like... He was on loads of posters in the 80s, thick hair. He was on... This is a true story. He was on a roller coaster... Yes. ..in a Disney World, and he was hit in the face with a goose. <laughs> a goose. He's going on this roller coaster. He's one of the best looking men in the world, and a goose hit him in the face <laughs> and ruined his career. Smashed all his face to smithereens. Yeah, that was unlucky. Unlucky What about the goose? The goose got in the papers. Most geese don't get in the papers. <laughs> <laughs> on a similar note, very uh, completely true story. Aristotle, the great thinker, yeah. he, he died. Aristotle, when a hawk or an eagle was carrying a tortoise that he had, you know, taken from the ground for food, it dropped the tortoise. It fell ten thousand feet and hit Aristotle on the head, which means that one of the most cleverest men in the world, in that flash of insight just before he died, yeah. thought, I've just been hit on the head by a fucking tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> That's his last thought, a great man. Yeah. yeah. Probably thought, tortoises are heavy. <laughs> Let's write that down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's to do with kind of homes and, you know, something that might happen in your home. Is it your house being flooded? Oh, plumber, plumber It's problems. to do with flooding, but something else as well? You've just decorated, you've just painted, you've just put a That's carpet, the right though. answer. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, according to this survey from Direct Line, the most unlucky thing that can happen to you is your house flooding after you've decorated it, unless you've decorated it in the style of a fantasy mermaid kingdom, <laughs> in which case it's the icing on the cake. <laughs> well, that noise tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the game, which means the final scores are Sean, David and Ruth have six points, but Dave, Ulrika and Alan have nine points. They're the winners. <laughs> to our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. See you next week. show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, it costs £164,000 to bring up a child in Britain? That's why I've sponsored one in Africa. It's only a pound a week. 16% <laughs> well, of men use their uniform to impress women. Yes, I work in a toll booth. 39% <laughs> of Geordies exceed the recommended daily allowance for alcohol. Turns out it's not an accident, they're just pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> Oh, 
What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave Steen, what do you think people have been talking about this week? The police raided this chemical bomb factory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, in East London. Well, an MI5 informant said there was a device in the house capable of releasing a cyanide cloud. In the event, it was a glade wisp. <laughs> <laughs> and then they went in and shot somebody, didn't they? And yeah. they said it was in a scuffle, and it turns out it wasn't. Two days later, they admitted that the, uh, the policeman, his gloves were a bit too thick. He had these big, thick gloves on. And I think he's gone, against the wall, bang! Oh, shit, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and his lawyer, the suspect's lawyer said, when they came in, he said there was no freeze, there was no identification, <gasps> we didn't even know they were police. Who did, who, who did they think they were? <laughs> who, they've got chemical suits on, they've got machine what? guns. Is it environmental health? Um, <laughs> You'd well, be mixing your household waste with your plastics again. <laughs> <That's> you <know. laughs> But the thing about the gloves was, I thought, they, they said, you know, like, gloves, you, you can use gloves, but, like, have big, thick gloves as an excuse for being shit at the trumpet. But not for shooting someone. <laughs> <laughs> and all, all they found was aspirin. aspirin. Aspirin, that's dangerous. Well, they won't let you buy three packets, will they, at the supermarket? <laughs> you try getting three packets through Asda, you can't do it. Or you might go out in the car park and kill yourself. <laughs> Look at me basket, love, that's low fat yoghurt. I'm not on the edge. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just... <laughs> They said that when they shot him, they said that he was wearing pyjamas. And you think, terrorists don't wear pyjamas. <laughs> I, think, I think you'd be thrown out of Al-Qaeda for wearing pyjamas. <laughs> Police intelligence is a worry, though, isn't it? The statement they've made recently is, well, we can't find them, but they might still be in there, or they're somewhere else, or they never existed. Oh, narrowed it down, then. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think the worst thing about this whole story was the police said that in these times you should get used to this. What, 300 blokes turning up and shooting you accidentally when you're in your gym jams? <laughs> I, I've always slept naked and I've built three fucking atom bombs and no one's been round. <laughs> well, that's point. your answer. Is it a top five talking point? Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. The third most talked about thing this week is the increasingly controversial police terror raid that took place last weekend. I imagine that even the A-team couldn't have made a weapon with the stuff they found in that house. <laughs> I got a Henry the Hoover and some silly bags, stuff you jibber jab. <laughs> George T, what have the nation been talking about this week? The man on the roof. He was escaped from the police, and he, they, they trapped him in an alleyway or something, and he got onto the roof, and that was it, stalemate. And he, he was on the roof for about 12 hours, and they sent him up some lunch, down some KFC, and people thought it was outrageous that police would spend taxpayers' money on KFC. Do you want to have a look at the picture of this guy? It's not actually very good publicity for Nike, is it? Because <laughs> <laughs> they probably airbrushed that at brick out and put a javelin in there. <laughs> How long do you think they were planning to keep him up there? Well, he was up there chucking tiles. Yeah, he was chucking bricks off so, the roof. Yeah, 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 he was chucking all the tiles off the roof, so definition, it wasn't going to be that long a sitting before he ran out of a roof. <laughs> I'm very concerned about the media coverage on this, because essentially what the story is saying, that if you want to take a black man down off the roof, just send him up a bucket of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, that's your answer. Let's have a look and see whether it's one of the top five talked about yeah. things this week. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, this is the story of a suspected car thief who bombarded police with bricks from a rooftop and was given a KFC meal by officers. One onlooker said, and this is a genuine quote from the Sun newspaper, it's disgraceful, some innocent people are starving while this chap is being served like a king. <laughs> <laughs> is that the king of Peckham, is it? <laughs> OK, Dave, uh, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? It's got to be the World Cup. It started today! Hey. I think there's one thing that the Sun has been really harassing, almost bullying people into having England flags. Like, if you haven't got an England flag, you'll come some kind of illegal, immigrant, treasonous, psycho-terrorist nutter, because you're not going... Or Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got a bit out of hand, because, like, I was, I was at traffic lights the other day, and this bloke pulled up next to me and had an England flag, and he said, where's your England flag? And I said, look, mate, I don't need an England flag. I drive a Rover. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
comes <laughs> bottom in every what car poll for handling, safety, economy, comfort. It's shit. I still bought it. Stick your flag up your arse. <laughs> that is patriotism. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy the World Cup. I'm gonna pay attention to it in a way I never have before. See, the thing is, America loves it when you win. But what's great about here, a few weeks ago, I was walking past the pub, and there was a bunch of people celebrating. So I poked in to see what was happening, and dude told me they were celebrating the West Ham game. And I said, oh, they won. He said, no, they lost, but they played well. <laughs> and also, two teams can play and draw here, mm -hmm. and people will still, still could possibly be happy about that. In America, that's just two teams that didn't win. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm, I'm learning more about the culture and what y'all see is good enough for victory or near enough. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> is it one of the top five? Let's see if it's yes. up there. It is, of course, the most talked about thing this week. The big news is Wayne Rooney is fit. Well, he's not. He's got a head like a potato. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Sean Locke, what have the nation been talking about? They've, they've killed... Know. They've got... Well, as the, the lamb is used, they've got Al Zakawi. And he's an evil ne'er-do-well. Yeah. He'd been, he'd been a definite villain in a Dickens novel. Where did the evil start? <laughs> did he, like, have a push bike when he was younger and go, you can't have a go, my mum said? <laughs> he was killed in a safe house. I don't think I so. Was be clear. <laughs> the walls look safe, but on the roof, big finger like that, is it? <laughs> well, let's see if it's there. <gasps> <gasps> yes, this is the story that Iraq's most wanted terrorist, Abu Musab al Khazawi, has been killed in an operation by the US. Al Zakawi launched a terror group with $200,000 he was given by bin Laden. That was a hell of an episode of Dragon's Den. <laughs> OK, one more thing to get fingers on, Buzzy. Um, I think it's the Heather Mills-McCartney divorce that's been all over the papers. And it turns out that she's um, been doing a bit of porn when she was younger. She was not porn. No. It's, it's a yeah. sex manual. Did Paul McCartney not know? Did he not know? Well, he's claiming he didn't know, but, I mean, surely he would have known you that. You would know, wouldn't you? You'd know, because you keep getting phone calls from Domino's saying, have you seen our pizza delivery boy? <laughs> <laughs> we sent him out two weeks ago. <laughs> she wasn't doing that, though. No, she wasn't doing she that. She was only oiled up, you know, with a German. The song described the pictures as shocking and outrageous and disgusting <laughs> and printed the pictures. I just thought that was rather hypocritical of the... Of the Sun <laughs> I might say, it's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They're not they're absolute, actually... I tell you what, Peter, they're absolute bounders, <laughs> those chaps. <laughs> can I ask something? Yeah, you she can... had her knickers on, didn't she? Do you, I've not seen a picture of her pie. Have you? Her pie? <laughs> like, nobody's seen that. How from Newcastle She's got a you? pie! Pie! <laughs> She's got a pie, Johnny's interested suddenly. <laughs> She'll break your heart, Johnny. So they're sort of like going porn, 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 ah, ah, ah. And then on page three, they've got a bird with a tits out. How do they work that out that she's so bad and then they're printing? Because she's doing sexy news in brief. Then tomorrow, page three, they'll have a, they'll have a, a, a page three girl <laughs> yeah. she's going, I think it's great they've killed out the car we. I think it's going to completely bring stability to the whole Middle East. Well, hang, hang, hang. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, like, round our way, you and you, a one-legged woman is coming into 50 million. You wouldn't be sitting around taking the piss out of her. You'd be buying flowers and fucking champagne. <laughs> I'm not going to make fun of her. I hope she comes a-calling. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, you don't know me, but I've read about you lots. I come across as some kind of stalker, and I like your ex, it's music. <laughs> <laughs> I know you bring money round to mine, and we'll have a, you know, a dip in my hat size bathtub. It means you'll basically have to have a bath sat on my head, but I'll... <laughs> I'll use a straw and keep spitting water over you. Oh. Call me. <laughs> well, is it one of the week's big stories? <laughs> Yes, 
It's a shame the McCartneys are breaking up because they were so well suited. Heather is, in many respects, like a beetle, in that she's had a leg pulled off and she's kept going. <laughs> So at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Johnny and Peter have two points. Dave, Jane and Reg have three points. <laughs> the next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information. So it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Here's your first question. The average person spends two and a half years of their life what? Is it lost? Two and a half years lost? Watching Lost. <laughs> the obvious person spent two and a half years of her life in Argos. <laughs> Searching through the catalogue. Oh, no, that's the easy bit. Thicko. <laughs> <laughs> Standing there while you know there's just three lads upstairs getting drunk, carrying one lawn while we're going... <laughs> <laughs> Is it two and a half, half years? years of their life wow. under three? Uh... <laughs> Having sex? Yeah. <laughs> Two and a half years? Yeah. Well, if you added up all the times? Yeah. I'm up to about 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie. Is it, did you say it's Coo Hang on. Cookie. He didn't say it right, but he did say it. <laughs> Cooking, I said. <laughs> Cooking. Sorry? Cooking. What, sorry? Cooking. Cooking. Well, I, I've got cooking, but I'll give it to you, Dave. <laughs> 26% of brides-to-be what before the wedding? Is it flying from Thailand? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Peter? Ah. Does it cover their tattoos with makeup? <laughs> 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 or is it make sure they have at least one fat bridesmaid? <laughs> Just the one. That fat, fat bridesmaid does serve a purpose. <laughs> 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 it's to do with how you organise the wedding. Planner, wedding. Correct answer, Dave Spike. Oh, brilliant. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, 26% of brides to be hire a wedding planner before the wedding. The good news for wedding planners is, thanks to changes in the law, they now get to get married themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's three points for Sean's team and five points for Dave's team. <laughs> The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Sean, Johnny and Peter, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. was from the 1957 B-movie, The Brain from Planet Arus. Your related statistic is as follows. 72% of Americans believe that in a war with creatures from another planet, America would triumph. <laughs> True or false? Independence Day, America won. Yeah. War of the Worlds, America won. Yeah. Planets of the Apes, America didn't win. So I think... If those documentaries are anything to go by, then <laughs> two out of three sounds. I sounds think, you possible. know my problem with Independence Day? What? They won with a laptop, yeah? yeah? They managed to hack into the alien computer and bring down the spacecraft. I can't get my laptop to interface with the printer. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with finding a Scart League for the ball. <laughs> <laughs> my problem with War of the Worlds was there was no way to stop these aliens, and then suddenly they all just get a cold and they die. <laughs> That's the only way you beat them, though, isn't it? Like in the Triffids. It's, they don't use conventional weapons, it's seawater. And I think the way to obviously beat aliens isn't, isn't with, like, normal weapons, is when they come down, they're on a lovely big buffet, right? It's all dodgy prawns. <laughs> <laughs> Mussels that haven't opened properly. <laughs> Put a bit of chilli in the tiramisu. <laughs> I think it's true. I think it's terrifying, but it's true. I think the thing, did, did, alarming sorry, thing Peter, about Sorry, can that... I just clarify? Aliens are not coming, they're not on their way. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a story. It's like right. it's like a what if. 
<laughs> oh, it's here. It seems like one of them, another one of them factoids that points to how dumb Americans are, which I don't have no problem with. 72% of Americans believe that they win in a war against an alien race. What it doesn't say is that 72% of British people <clears throat> believe that a draw would be good enough. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, true or false? What you're saying is, is are Americans thick? Yes, they are. Thick as pig shit. Rich? Um, I hate being put in a position to defend America. Um, so, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you're saying that it's true, are you sure? Yeah, I think it's true. Well, I can tell you that, in fact, it is false. Oh. Only 16% of Americans think they would win in a war with creatures from another planet. OK, Dave, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. That new Superman film looks amazing, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was the star love dancers there. Here is your related statistic. 55% um, of women say they've asked a man to dance to try and work out if he'd be good in bed. True or false? I think it's false. Two words, Michael Flatley. <laughs> he can dance, he'd be shit in bed, wouldn't he? Why? He never uses his arms, does he? So, there'd be no foreplay, then he'd kick the shit out of you, wouldn't he? <laughs> Do you, do you think it's true? Have you ever pulled anyone who's a good dancer? No. But I do think, actually, I do think if they're a good dancer, they can move their hips. Yeah, I reckon it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jimmy, that's so horribly why frightening. You, why do you pull your first though? <laughs> you dance more like you've, you've been hung on some railings, right? <laughs> yeah, I do, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> it's Virgil from Thunderbirds <laughs> at a party, relaxing after they've saved the world. <laughs> I sit down and I'm brilliant. And the so second I get up, People think you're allergic to music, don't yeah. they? <laughs> you're so bad. He's got a music allergy. <laughs> Turn it off! <laughs> what are you going to go for? Um, I think it's true. true I think, I do. It, well, men can't dance, generally speaking, and women are shit judges of men anyway, so... Um... <laughs> well, I can tell you that the answer is true. Yes, 55% of women have asked a man to dance to try and work out if he's good in bed. To be fair, dancing is a good indicator. I tend to dance for about 10 seconds and then I have a bit of a cry. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's three points for Sean's team and six points for Dave's team. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and it's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Britain's top con. Crisps. Crisps, the biggest con ever. If you compare the actual weight ratio to cost <laughs> of actual potato you get in a bag of crisps, it's disgraceful. An average call. bag of crisps, there isn't even a quarter of a effing potato in there. <laughs> Yet they manage to charge upwards of 45 to 50 pence for a bag of them. <laughs> It's an absolute disgrace. It's a scandal. It's been going on for years. It's got to stop. I don't mind when they make a bit of an effort. They turn them into shapes, like Monster Munch. Fair enough. You get away with that. You've done some work. Charge me a bit more. But you've sliced a potato, you've fried it, you put it in a bag. It should cost about 3p. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Kinder Surprise? It's a top con, that, isn't it? It's not a surprise. It's a plastic toy. You know what it's going to be. If it was a mouse's head, that would be a surprise, wouldn't it? <laughs> No, then it would be called Kinder Shock. <laughs> <laughs> Top Con. Is it those phone lines that when you phone you up, they say you've won a holiday? Uh, and you're, no, no it's the ones you ring up for sec. Oh. <laughs> you are both right. Oh. But you got it first, so you get the point. Woo! Britain's Top Con is premium rate phone lines. Most embarrassing thing that can happen to a man on a night out. Being with your, with, with your friend in your flat, just kicking it. <laughs> 
decided to just eat a few aspirin, then 300 police officers kick the door in, and then they shoot your friend, and then you feel bad because your neighbor up the street is being bad and throwing stuff at people, but they gave him a piece of chicken. <laughs> I had a very embarrassing thing. I was in a restaurant once. I was on my own, and um, there's two women kept this door. They kept looking across at me. Kept looking, and after a while, about five, four or five times, I went hi like that, and they went. <laughs> <laughs> and, so they went huh. and then I looked round. I realised there was a menu board above my head. Is it having your flies on, Don? Yes, correct answer. <laughs> yes, according to this survey, the most embarrassing thing that can happen to a man on a night out is leaving his flies undone. On the plus side, though, you do get your own seat on the bus. <laughs> Don't you, Johnny? <laughs> Sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Johnny and Peter have four points, but Dave, Jane and Reg are the winners with eight points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. We'll see you next week. Good night. a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, research says you have a 1 in 3.5 million chance of being killed by a snake bite, and that figure rises significantly if you're allergic to cider. <laughs> <laughs> a snail can travel over a razor blade without cutting itself, or, to put it another way, sometimes scientists get bored. <laughs> The average man uses 38 sheets of toilet paper every day. The average woman uses almost twice that much, which is fair enough. Women have two bottoms. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellists' job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave's team, what have the nation been talking about this week? I would imagine World Cup. World Cup. Stick him in echo, yeah. you know what I mean? It's been going on a week, no real surprises, but from Sven's tactics. He's a clone, isn't he? The man's a clone. I mean, all right, we threw out, we? we threw to the last 16, but it makes you think, doesn't it? We play Sweden next, so he's got probably Rooney in goal. <laughs> Ulrika up front. I don't know, I'm just guessing. <laughs> but mind, the Germans have been trying to put off, haven't they, with having all that slag and stuff off with Beckham's family, yeah? Yeah, indeed, yeah. Yeah, when they were saying... <laughs> they said that his mother was a 50-year-old, fat-armed peasant who drinks sangria. So she'd be right up Wayne Rooney Street. Then. <laughs> <laughs> they also, they called the Beckham's children dwarves, which is just stupid. <laughs> 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 children. <laughs> So they grow up, then call them dwarves. <laughs> it's just it's calling calling children dwarves. It's a bit like calling a baby. Go goes baby going, Oi, you bald bastard! <laughs> Baldy! Did you see this Julian? They slagged off his family in the place. Whose family? Well, David Beckham's family being in in the German press. They've slagged off his family. They've said they're not very nice. It's horrible. Oh, oh well, no, I'm a seaman. <laughs> I 
went to the World Cup, actually. I went, I went last weekend. The England fans are very well behaved. There was a few Polish fans arrested for make, doing Sieg Heils, because that's illegal in Germany. You're not allowed to do a Sieg Heil. And you can get two weeks in jail for goose stepping, which isn't a problem for most England fans, because they walk like ducks. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with the Sieg Heiling, did you hail a cab while you were out there? Yeah. Is there two a... arms. <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking about England. Brazil only won one nil. The favourites, five to one favourites. They took Ronaldo off. Did you see that? They took Ronaldo off because he was too fat. <laughs> He's enormous, isn't he? And the coach said, uh, "This is the first step. We've got six more steps now." And I thought, "Well, he'll not get up." Him. <laughs> you're going to need, need a chairlift. Get him up. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether the World Cup is one of the top five most talked about things this week. Oh, oh yes, of course it is. Sven Goran Eriksson has lifted the sex ban for England players, despite Colleen McLaughlin's desperate pleas. <laughs> <laughs> a German newspaper this week attacked David Beckham's family. The paper called his sister a pig, said his mother had the smile of a peasant and that his father was nothing more than a kitchen fitter. Beckham was furious. He said he also does bathrooms. <laughs> Steve, what have the nation been talking about this week? The, the Big, Big Brother. Are what? you a fan? I do watch it, yes. I'm fascinated. They've been in five weeks, which is like more than you get for murder these days, isn't it? So it's like... <laughs> Who's your favourite? Oh, I don't... I sort of love to hate people in it, so Grace at the moment. Bitch. <laughs> I think what she is, is she's no idea um, how unbearable she is. She thinks, really, she's quite a nice person. And, in fact, is... A massive bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you just wish there was somewhere we could all phone up and, and get her kicked out, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> if only we could have a say. <laughs> <laughs> want them to sort of have sex, that's the thing, isn't it? They get them in the house and they want them to have sex. And then they fuzz it out. <laughs> they fuzz it out? Yeah, they're doing it. That's foreplay, isn't it? <laughs> Is that you doing foreplay? Yeah, that's basically how I do it. <laughs> Ways that woman <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Jimmy Carr. Oh, Jimmy Carr. This week they went in with the, the golden ticket. The Kit Kat thing. Yeah. They might shoot the winner through the roof of the Big Brother house <laughs> in a glass lift like the Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> <laughs> and it lands on a spike. <laughs> <laughs> I think what they should do is switch the cameras off and don't tell them. Yes! <laughs> yes! Them out for another eight weeks, and everyone that gets voted out, they come out, and there's not even a mini cab driver. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with that is, it's such a good idea, I'd want to see it on telly. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, you watching Big Brother? No, I've made an absolute pact not to watch it. I well, I'm know. the same with Corrie. <laughs> 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 I like the celebrity one. Yeah, no, it is, it, is, it is kind of tragic, but that's kind of what I like about it. Is it? Would you ever do it like Celebrity Big Brother? No, I wouldn't fancy that. I wouldn't want to sleep in a sort of dormitory arrangement with <laughs> who knows who next to you. There's no <laughs> fucking chance of finding me in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, might be, you might be innocently eating your Kit Kat right. and, uh, <laughs> and find a ticket, although... Whether or not you could manage four fingers is anyone's guess. <laughs> I feel I'm violated by a pun. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it a top five talking point? Let's have a look. <laughs> yes, Big Brother is the third most talked about thing this week. When Grace leaves the house, she's most looking forward to having some booze. That shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> What else have the nation been talking about? Is it the Queen's birthday? God bless her. 80 year old. Is that what it is? Yeah, cos I saw, I was driving through Windsor and on a roundabout they had a big sheet. Happy 80. <laughs> <laughs> does she have two birthdays as well? She does, which explains why she looks so fucking old. <laughs> I'd love her. I'd love her to get to 80 and just get leathered. Show her arse or something. Yeah. See her kind of <laughs> holding the bar up, down in Zambuca shots. All she'll probably do is uh, say, thank you very much, have a cup of tea, Go out the back and strangle a pheasant. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she enjoys. <laughs> yeah, I, <don't. laughs> so I love that picture of her just finishing off a pheasant. Just going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> be great. Just looking around, makes no one's looking at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Apparently, her excuse for it, she said, was he put it out of its misery. 
I thought they were quite happy living in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Philip says he's going out the back choking a pheasant means something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, have you got any birthday message for the Queen? I think she's totally unnecessary. You know, we don't, what do we need a Queen for? <laughs> Bees have a queen, for Christ's sake. <laughs> we don't need a queen. We're far more sophisticated than bees. And anyway, they get to shag their queen. We don't need any of us. Have you I, sent I, a I'm... birthday message before? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's one of the biggest stories of the week. <laughs> yes, the queen is now 80. To celebrate the queen's birthday, the Royal Mail has issued a commemorative stamp. A stamp with the queen's head on it. Where do they get their ideas? <laughs> OK, Sean, sure, your team. What else are the nation be talking about? I think the X Factor style contest for the Tory mayor candidate. That David Cameron is another one of his attention-grabbing scams. All the public can vote for whoever they want to be the uh, Tory candidate to stand up against Ken Livingstone. He is amusingly saying it's not a publicity stunt as well. What he's basically saying is, if you live in we're London. so useless, we haven't got anyone to beat Ken. So any nutter out there who fancies it, some tramp sitting there combing his hair with a shoe, you can, <laughs> run, <laughs> you can run London if you fancy it. He was on our show, actually. He came on our radio show about a month ago. And uh, the, the most interesting thing we found out about him was the fact that if he had to shag one of girls allowed, it'd be Cheryl Tweedy. <laughs> well, that was a probing interview, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, in fact, you're making him sound bad there, but you asked that question. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he just offered it up. Questions about... Maybe he just offered it up. <laughs> went, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Cheryl Tweedy, I did. <laughs> the thing about the X Factor, they have auditions, don't they? So I like the idea of some toothless granny singing Dan Danny Boy while she's banging a tray over her. <laughs> <laughs> you could go, yeah, we want her to run London. <laughs> For all that. Uh, think... Danny Boy. <laughs> all the pipes. <laughs> 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 I'm getting scared living <laughs> She sounds all right. <laughs> right, OK. Uh, well, that's your answer. Let's have a look if it's one of the top five most talked about things this Which week. Which means it is. <laughs> <laughs> OK, one more to get fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about this week? They've been talking about, which is, well, the front page of every paper I've seen, is the soft sentencing by oh. judges. Mm. The naming... Uh, the Sun has been naming and shaming judges, and they're showing pictures of judges, which I don't think is going to work, because, you know, because they've all got 17th-century wigs on. <laughs> they're not going to get a lot of hassle in the street. In fact, the only time they're going to get recognised is if you're facing them in court and you're hardly likely to go, you're that soft judge who gives out all those really lenient sentences. <laughs> and I think you're doing a great job. <laughs> 53 people, is it, since 2000 have been released. They've served like five, four, five, six years. And they've been sentenced to life imprisonment. It's like the life of what? Hamster? <laughs> what? Oh, are we sentencing people in dog years? <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, if, if nothing means what it says, if life doesn't mean life and six years doesn't mean six years, you might as well bring back hanging. But it doesn't mean hanging, it just means you have to wear a scarf for a while. <laughs> <laughs> What, what happens to all the crazy judges? With all the mad judges just go like, 30 years! <laughs> I think send them down. It has, hasn't started, haven't even started yet, Your Honour. 10 years, shut up! <laughs> I 50 like... years, <laughs> who wants it? <laughs> <laughs> mad judges. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look and see if judges is one of the most talked about things? Yeah. Shall we? Yes. Yes, it is. 200 judges have been named and shamed for being too lenient. Top of the list was Louis Walsh for letting Lucy Benjamin win Celebrity X Factor. <laughs> At the end of that round, Sean, Julian and Edith have three points. Dave, Sally and Dave have two points. <laughs> the next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Sean, Julian and Edith, 32% of Brits think Pete Doherty needs what? I think he needs to go to jail, cos he's in court every bloody week. <laughs> he walks out, <laughs> off his face usually, gets into an uninsured, um, you know, untaxed car, crack pipe, a phone in one hand, drives off using his feet... <laughs> and goes, oh, what's he like? <laughs> Perhaps he needs a new spoon. <laughs> the amazing thing is... He, he does all this crime and he never gets, never gets put away. He's going to see that bloody lenient judge, that's why. <laughs> he gets arrested so much, right? Every time he buys drugs, he gets arrested. So I think he needs a new dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, 
that one that doesn't phone the police as soon as he leaves the house, going, yeah, I've just sold it to him. <laughs> uh, do you like his music? Uh, I like, used to like his music, I don't like what he's done recently. If you're watching, fuck you. <laughs> She's Radio 1. Good luck selling some records. <laughs> Thirty-two percent of Brits think Pete Doherty needs what? New a bath. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thirty-two percent of Brits think Pete Doherty needs a good bath, and then that bath needs a good clean. <laughs> Dave, Sally, and Dave. Ninety percent of doormen say the point of their job is what? Is it mainly opening and shutting doors? <laughs> <laughs> or twatting? <laughs> Can I say that? Yeah. I know. <laughs> Yeah, big London ways. I know. <laughs> 10% of women say that part of their job is to keep them out of prison. The other 10% didn't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, what, what do you make of Dorman? Do you like him? No, not really. Well, there's a Dorman in our local pub, and I went for lunch one day with my trainers on, and I went to get something from my car and came back and he wouldn't let me in. Because <laughs> it had gone seven. <laughs> and I wouldn't allow trainers. And you were a celebrity? And I was on the telly. <laughs> I mean, ordinary people, I imagine that happens to. But that's... <laughs> this has happened to a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you that, yeah. No. Give you that. 90% of doormen think the point of their job is to provide security. The other 10% presumably think they're modelling bomber jackets. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's five points to Sean's team and four points to Dave's team. <laughs> The next round is, believe it or not, I'll give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Dave, Sally and Dave, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. I like being older because I can do what I want whenever I want. Movies are cheaper. My husband is all mine. No more competition from the job. I find in retrospect that I spent a lot of time doing meaningless things for people I didn't really like, for organizations I didn't really believe in. I can't get pregnant anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Some very old people there. Here is your related <laughs> statistic. 31% of over 65s believe that their age gives them the right to behave badly. Is that true or false? That sounds awful, but I think it's true. I think they go, ah, sod it, I'm old, I'm going to moan. 31% of over 65s think they're living in 1944 anyway, don't they? They don't know when they And they drive that way as well. That's behaving badly. <laughs> Last time they passed the test was in a Saracen Armoured car at El Alamein. <laughs> Driving in the road, stickers in the back window, I lost a leg at Dunkirk and all that. <laughs> <laughs> and they do, they drive as if they're permanently looking for a parking space. <laughs> I've sort of got my neck with this woman. <laughs> she was 96 and she did wing walking. You know where they go on a plane, in a stunt plane? When she landed, she had the face of a 16-year-old. <laughs> All the wrinkles had been blown back, <laughs> down her back, and congregated in her knickers. <laughs> I remember driving back from Blackpool once, right? You've lived a life. <laughs> Rock on! And there was an old woman driving the opposite way up the hard shoulder. <laughs> and I stopped and I said, are you all right, love? Is this the way to Blackpool? <laughs> No, you've got to all go that way, and then the other side, they all go that way. And she was just, just carried on. Mr. Well, there's that old story or urban myth about an old woman falling her husband up who's coming back on the M65 and saying, be careful, I've just had a report on the, on the radio <laughs> yeah. that there's, there's a mad bastard driving the wrong way up the M65. He said, one well, mad bastard, there's fucking hundreds <laughs> Oh, it's funny up north, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they always go shopping on a Saturday dinner time. They've got all fucking week to go shopping, <laughs> haven't they? <laughs> all week. And you're in a hurry on a Saturday dinner time. They're in the queue with the coupons. And do you take bird's eye? And you take, how much is it? 175. Give them here two quid. Fuck off. Go on. Who is Dave? I can't understand why you keep using the word they. <laughs> Show. Okay, 31% of the over 65s believe their age gives them the right to behave badly. Yeah, true or false? What do you think? I think they think it's true. We all seem to agree on this. You think it's true? true. Well, I can tell you that the answer is false. Oh, no. Only 3% of pensioners think that their age gives them the right to behave badly. Yes. And the three in question are Foggy, Compo and Clegg. <laughs> okay, Sean, Julian and Edith, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate <clears throat> your statistic. Okay, there's Dick Shepherd just about to attempt to go through our special seaside special van. I think it's well and truly on fire now. 
Here he comes up to the approach. Here he goes, keep the fingers crossed. And he's through! He's <laughs> well, right the way through. The, it is still on fire. And let's see if he's going to get out all right. We're just all keeping our fingers crossed at this stage. The fire seems to be, no, the fire's still there underneath the bonnet. And they're just at this very moment trying to get him out. Yes, there he goes. They're, trying, they're tipping it up. Still very much on fire, I'm afraid. And they're just trying to pull him out right now. Yes, Dick is, I think, all right in there. Yes, he's definitely all right. I can see Dick moving inside there, so everything seems to be all right. Yes, here he comes. He's all right, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, Dick Shepard. He's made it. A nice round of applause. Well done, Dick. Dick Shepard. <laughs> you know, people talk about how, like, uh, telly wasn't like it used to be. You know? <laughs> that was a Saturday night. That was a show called Saturday Special. So the highlight of the show was him driving into a removal van on fire. <laughs> that was it. That was the finale of the night. You drive into it and then you crawl out. Ta da! <laughs> okay. Your related statistic. 21% of men admit to having done something that put their life in danger in order to impress a woman. <laughs> True or false? I think it's false, cos I think it's higher. Cos I think men think that switching off the PlayStation is putting their life in danger. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, has a man ever done anything to impress you? Um, he did come round to my house driving a Fiat. <laughs> <laughs> that did the trick. Have you? What, have I ever done anything to impress a woman? Watch loose women. <laughs> yeah. long, I think the best way to impress women is take it to a car boot sale. Get anything you want. <laughs> Money's no object. You silver tongue, you. That, that glove, have it. <laughs> There's a dashboard from a Vauxhall Viva there. Take it away, it's yours. 21% of men admit having done something to put their life in danger in order to impress a woman. True or false? It's true. It's true. Well, I can tell you that the answer is true. 21% of men have done something to put their life in danger to impress a woman. Once, driving a girl home, I turned into traffic without checking the blind spot properly. Man, she was turned on. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's six points for Sean's team and four points for Dave's team. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and surveys. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. UK's most endangered animal. A unicorn. Because <laughs> I was just thinking of the other day, I haven't seen one of them for ages. <laughs> what about a dragon? I only say that because a mate of mine put an advert in loot for advertising a dragon for a laugh. Right, and this bloke phone him. This dragon, is it, like, no, is it like a lizard thing? He went, no, it's a proper dragon and everything. He said, oh, like one of them iguanas, big iguana. No, no, it's a big 20-foot dragon. <laughs> oh, you mean like one of them, uh, one of them kimono dragons? One of them big ones, them kimono dragons? No, it's a proper 20-foot, breeze fire, all that. <laughs> he went, oh, I better leave it then. <laughs> is it Smurfs? I've always worried about the long-term future of the Smurfs, cos there's, there's only one female Smurf. <laughs> yeah, but she's a slut. <laughs> Is that the right answer? No, it's not the Smurfs. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you the answer. It's the water vole. Water voles have difficulty reproducing, because they can't get it up while Bill Oddie is watching. <laughs> Kids' favourite thing about summer... <laughs> Is it that their knives glint in the sunshine? <laughs> Is it fishing for sticklebacks and then making a fat kid eat it? <laughs> Stop crying! Eat them! Yes, it's a great answer. Yes. <laughs> no, clearly not. Uh, you're mental. I don't think there's anything better that reminds me of summer than setting light to a barn. <laughs> and then standing back, admiring my handiwork from a safe distance while the farmer ran around frantically with buckets of water. It's somewhere you don't have to go. Not having to go to school. Correct answer. <laughs> kids' favourite thing about the summer holidays is no school. Surprisingly, only 1% of kids said their favourite thing about summer was eating ice cream. I guess, once you've tasted methadone, Gino Ginelli can fuck off. <laughs> oh, 
And that sound tells me it is the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Dave, Sally and Dave have four points, Sean, Julian and Edith have eight points. <laughs> they are the winners. Thank you to our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Krishnan Guru Murthy, Lord of the Manor, Vic Reeves, and their captain, Sean Locke. And facing them tonight, from Little Britain, it's David William. He's got the X Factor, Louis Walsh, and their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, an American man called Charles Osborne has had the hiccups for the past 19 years? If you're watching, Charles, boo! <laughs> the lenses in your eyes continue to grow throughout your life, which explains why old ladies are so good at word searches. <laughs> 90% of women would prefer a man to be chivalrous rather than politically correct. That's why, when some slag is slinging a rook, I always open the door. <laughs> right, let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean's team. I think they've been talking about the whaling. The Japanese tried to reintroduce uh, whaling. You know, they're the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with whaling? <laughs> <laughs> You're on the proper news. <laughs> what do you know about Wales? Japan says we want to start whaling again, and they're trying to persuade world opinion on the International Whaling Commission to back them. And they say, if you don't back us, we'll just leave and do it anyway. So that's the Japanese for you. Was well, that going to be on Channel 4 News? <laughs> <laughs> so to conclude, that's the Japanese for you. <laughs> what can you fucking do? <laughs> <laughs> I like Krishnan tonight, because you've got a couple of buttons undone, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> you should do that more on the news, you get more I'm viewers. not allowed, I'm not allowed. I tried reading the news without a tie once and my boss wouldn't let me go on. You like to wear shorts on a really hot day. <laughs> <laughs> but whales are supposed to be one of the most intelligent animals on the planet. I read somewhere this week, a whale's supposed to have an IQ of 2,000. Don't know how they measure that. They can't even hold the fucking pen. I know. <laughs> they can in the little hole. <laughs> But well, that whale that came up the Thames, one day in London, died of stress. <laughs> with that. They're supposed to have very therapeutic qualities, whales, aren't they? Their whale song is supposed to be relaxing. You know, that, that noise, they're sort of like... Oh. <laughs> I think you know, it sounds more like they're faxing. <laughs> Louis? <laughs> did, you get, did you get that? <laughs> that sounds like G4. The whale brothers. <laughs> Let's see if it's one of the top five talking points this week. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, commercial whaling is back on the international agenda after Japan forced a vote. To be honest, I went off whaling when it went all commercial. I like the early stuff. <laughs> right, Dave, David and Louis, what else have the nation been talking about this week? World Cup. Can't get away from it, can you? Um, we, we won the group, didn't we? Uh, two old draw with the mighty Sweden. <laughs> But there's been more interesting, the wags. The wives, the wives, wives and girlfriends. I would love to be a footballer's wife. <laughs> and this is a great life, you just get to go out shopping all the time. Oh. <laughs> but, but Colleen sent one of her friends back to Liverpool to do some shopping for her. From Baden-Baden back to Liverpool, obviously the fashion capital of Europe. <laughs> I mean, how badly do you need something from JJB Sports? <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Who's going to win? The best team. <laughs> the best kickers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah best... come on, the striker. <laughs> I'm with Vic on this. England United. <laughs> not a clue. Christian, have you been watching the football? Yeah, I mean, the tragedy of Michael Owen, obviously, is... Is he awesome. not very good? <laughs> <laughs> His terrible injury, which was really upsetting. What injury did he get? Cruciate. A cruciate ligament. Where's that? It's just around your knee. Yeah. <laughs> cruciate. You show me on your knee. <laughs> see your knee. <laughs> Please. <laughs> David, you seem to have nailed your colours to a different <laughs> mast tonight. Well, did you ask not to be with me? Because no. last time I was with you, and you seemed to not like it. <laughs> and now I'm over here yeah. with Louis Walsh. I think you're perfect boy band material, aren't you? <laughs> Who out of us here today could make it in a boy band? I think Jimmy. Jimmy? Ah. I think Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about pundits, though, has anybody else so irritated in this World Cup by the amount of statistics that they throw in during a game that you're just completely not bloody interested in at all? <laughs> I mean, lots and all the time. It's just, you know, that's the 199th goal since 1938 scored by a Swedish bloke. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, he said the other night, he went down the line in the England substitute, so he went, Theo Walcott there, he's got a provisional driving licence. <laughs> Has he? Well, get him on then. No, get him on now. <laughs> Louis, presumably the Irish supporters are getting behind Wayne Rooney because he's fairly Irish, isn't he? Yeah, he's pretty Irish. He looks Irish, doesn't he's he? He's got the Irish name. He, has yeah, Irish he comes from Liverpool. Yeah. And also, he's shaped like a potato. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a really good footballer. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Which is lucky, because otherwise he'd be in Asda car park. Well, I would. <laughs> is he the striker? Yeah, the striker. The striker's gonna win. Mickey Rooney, come on! <laughs> <laughs> Football, yes! <laughs> Albert <watching>. Finney, not it! <laughs> Is Albert Finney in the, in the group? No, no, he's not, and you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to watch an England game with you commentating. <laughs> Right, let's have a look and see if the World Cup is one of the most talked about things. I, I'm guessing it is. <laughs> yes, of course. The number one talking point this week. Yes, England are through to the last 16 and will play Ecuador on Sunday. A lot of people are taking sick days to watch England matches. Unfortunately, Michael Owen is one of them. <laughs> right, Sean, Vic and Christian, what have the nation been talking about this week? People have been talking about that photo that was in all the newspapers. Did everyone see that? Prince Philip uh, breaking wind on the <laughs> World Bank. Oh, take Just away your from... OBE. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I, I... He looks very pleased with himself, doesn't he? <laughs> As he raises one leg. Pull one's finger. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that every member of the family has a slightly different response. Yeah. yeah. Prince Harry, being young, thinks it's very funny. <laughs> the Queen is not amused. <laughs> Prince Charles just, just looks confused. <laughs> does explain that when they're in the carriage together, she's always going like that. She's both <laughs> mad. The reason they're laughing, he's probably treading on a fox's neck. They <laughs> <laughs> love that kind of thing. Who's the boy at the back? Prince think... Harry, you know Harry. that. He's doing the owl thing, isn't he? Going, <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to blame it on an owl. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, Grandad. <laughs> I'll get you out of this one. <laughs> it's an owl. <laughs> <laughs> Pushes the Queen under the duvet. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask him. <laughs> oh, Prince Philip breaking wind. Let's see if it's up there. <laughs> yes, Prince Philip was photographed supposedly farting on the royal balcony. He denied it, forgetting that that, of course, means he supplied it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dave, your team. What else have the nation been talking about? What do you think, Louis? Top of the pops been cancelled. Yes, drastically. Well, I imagine you've been talking about it, haven't you? Well, it's a bad day for pop music, you know? Because we're all going to miss it. It's going to be like the Queen Mum. We're all going to miss it when it's gone. Is she dead? <laughs> Still. <laughs> Still dead, yeah. She did Top of the Pops three times, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> so does Vic. I've been on three times, yeah. and I presented it once. I remember the first time I went to Top of the Pops was with boys on, and we were absolutely delighted. We were going to London, we were doing Top of the Pops. And then we got there, we found out they had to sing live. 
Couldn't they sing? I'm not saying anything, but we had a big problem. <laughs> <laughs> we sorted out in the end, because some of the guys had sore throats. So. Oh, sore so oh, throats? Yeah. So, 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 oh, they had sore throats? That's a hell of yeah. a coincidence, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> so we got a full mine. <laughs> what do you think <laughs> killed Top of the Pops, Louis? Is it you? <laughs> <laughs> Is it you? Is it the curse of Westlife? Mm. Nothing to do with Westlife. Girls Allowed. Or... You fancy Boys everybody Zone. in Girls Allowed. I know. Anyway, I do. I met you at a party. And right. I asked Every one you of them. to set me on a date with any of Girls Allowed. You did. You asked them all en masse. So what did they say? They told me they'd get back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if Tom the Pops is up there. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, the BBC have asked Top of the Pops. Former host Jimmy Savile will be turning in his grave. Hang on, he's not dead. What's he doing in that grave? <laughs> oh, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about? Is it uh, Gordon Brown's been hinting that we're going to build some more nuclear weapons? Mm. Because we need them, don't we, obviously. How are we going to pay for them? We've no money, the country's cash strapped, so you're going to pay for them. It's a lottery, a lottery-funded missile <laughs> programme, <laughs> isn't it? With the, with the lottery thing on the side going... <laughs> <laughs> it could be you! Because <laughs> the Russians aren't really a bunch of a threat right now, so who's he want to fire them at? Because the chances of getting a genuine discussion of global politics here are slim. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's a good idea, Dave? Well, I think the lesbian groups are delighted because it gives them a chance to have another camping trip. <laughs> <laughs> Krishnan, uh, the nuclear programme, we know pretty much nothing. Tell us. Gordon Brown's announced that he wants to retain our independent nuclear deterrent because we really need it, because our existing one isn't actually targeted at anybody. Ours isn't aimed at anyone. No. <laughs> so if we press the button, it's... Oh, I hope oh, so. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> it. press cut in office, that button could go any time, couldn't it? He'd be like, come here, love, come here, come here, bang! <laughs> Is it a top five talking point? Let's have a look and see. Yes, it is. Yes, Gordon Brown has pledged to spend £25 billion on a new generation of Trident missiles. Why put all that money into nuclear weapons? £25 billion worth of fireworks would destroy the world. <laughs> and at least then Armageddon would be a party. <laughs> at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Vic and Krishnan have two points. Dave, David and Louis have three points. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world, and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to the panellists to fill in the gaps. OK, uh, Dave, David and Louis, 15% of pet owners are upset because what? Their love can never be legal. Have <laughs> you got any pets, Louis? No, I've no pets. No. <laughs> I could see you with a little dog. No, <laughs> no. A little dog and a cigarette holder. No. <laughs> You're thinking of Simon Cow. Sharon Osborne's got... What, what dogs has she got? She's got two dogs. Small little white ones. Has she tried to give you one? No. What? <laughs> <laughs> a dog I mean, Louie! <laughs> he thought I meant sex! 15% <laughs> of pet owners are upset because what? That's not a very nice place to put a firework. What is the answer? <laughs> all right, all right, I'll tell you. 15% of pet owners are upset because they can't spend more time with their pet. If it's any comfort or consolation, your pet couldn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Sean, Vic and Krishnan, 12% of men have thought about, but not got round to, what? Take it away, Vic. <laughs> Points in oh, the bag. Uh, <laughs> it's obvious, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's obvious. The octopus thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, like digging it out, putting an octopus on the head <laughs> with many bells on the tentacles. <laughs> no, no. Is that the answer? No, of course it's no. not. <laughs> we're just messing around. We're, we're just messing you about, Jimmy. We're just collection. messing you about. <laughs> smashing your back with <laughs> stupid answers. Christian. Is it, is it smashing in James Blunt's face? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sean, what do you think? Is it put their record collection in a, you know, a weird order, like order the fatness of the singer? <laughs> They've got meatloaf at one end, Prince at the other end. So Elton John moves up and down all the time. <laughs> <laughs> at the other end, you've got your Danny Minogue. It's not that most blokes would have one of hers in the record collection, but I don't know. Is What's it that? What's wrong with Danny Minogue? <laughs> Isn't that like you're in a sort of East End comedy? What's wrong with Danny Minogue? 
Yeah. You've got a problem with Danny, you come to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it is in fact 12% of men have thought about but not got around to doing voluntary work. I do more voluntary work if they up the wages. <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's two points for Sean's team and four points for Dave's team. The next round is Believe It or Not. I'll give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Dave, David and Louis, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. The Daily Mirror calls on you. Who? Us? Yes, and millions of other young people like you. Hey, you two, cut it out. You're the Daily Mirror, aren't you? Can't you stop them? Stop you more like it. What? Well, why spoil their fun? I never carried on like that. And look at the mess you made of things. Oh, don't worry about him. The Daily Mirror believes in young people, and that means you. Well, that was an advert for the Daily Mirror from 1983. <laughs> <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 75% of young people say their biggest worry in life is spotty skin. Is that true or false? Louis, what do you think young people worry about? Did you have spots when you were young? Very few, yeah. But I got clearer still. I sorted them all out. They didn't have clearer still when you were young. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any pop stars with spotty skin? Mick Hucknell. Mick Hucknell's spotty. He's not good looking. <laughs> no one knows if he's spotty because no one's been able to look for long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Vic's not taking a great part in this round. <laughs> I found it on the floor. There was a bit of loose. <laughs> You know, this stuff on the floor. <laughs> so I thought, you know, why miss out on an opportunity like that? <laughs> it's a golden opportunity. <laughs> True or false? If you're at that, at that age where you're getting spotty skin, that's adolescence, puberty, and there's all the things that go with that, like chatting up girls, and you think they'll be am amused if you do that thing on the back of the knee that makes the leg collapse. <laughs> <laughs> I did it to Christine Argues in the dinner queue once. She had a tray. <laughs> and I did both knees. <laughs> 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 What were you worried about when you were young? Because you were told me you were very confused when you were young. <laughs> and you resolved those issues. <laughs> Just stop You'd it. Love it if I kissed you. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. You would love it. You just need to try it. I don't know whether this is the forum. It is. <laughs> I am ready. <laughs> Let me just give you a little kiss. No. You kissed Louis earlier. <laughs> well, you kissed my knee earlier as well, so... I want to work up your body. <laughs> right, 75% of young people say their biggest worry in life is spotty skin. What do you think? I'd say it's true. You think it's true? OK, well, I can tell you that the answer is true. Sean, Vic and Christian. Let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. For Tony, it's audition time on Star Quality. <laughs> that was Tony Rudd. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. No, that was Michael Jackson. No, it was Tony Rudd. <laughs> but that guy's not even a Jackson looky like, sound alike he, look alike he's and just a not in anything at all alike he. He's like a vaguey, bitty, tiny bitty like he. <laughs> okay, your related statistic is as follows 36% of obsessive fans would be willing to swap a family member for their hero. <laughs> Is that true or false? Swap a member of my family for an obsessive fan, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> I quite have like you got any obsessive fans? fans? I bet you have a few. Uh, no, well, I've had one uh, who, who, was, who wrote to me every week for 18 months Man and begged me to, to marry her um, and said she was being um, sent off to Bangladesh to be married off by her dad and I was her only chance. And she said, I'll meet you outside Luton Station at 3 o'clock on Friday. And I never turned up, felt a bit guilty. Oh, and the letter cruel. stopped. The letters stopped, and I thought, oh, poor girl, she's been sent off. And after my first day on Channel 4 News, I got a letter from her. This was a year later, saying, I wasn't really sent off to be married, I was just saying that to make you jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and you married right. her? I married her, no. <laughs> um, 
trouble with Luton Station, there's two exits, isn't there? It's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your hero? My hero's Madonna. If you had to, David, who would you swap for Madonna? My dad. <laughs> Is it alright if banana? I had this now? <laughs> Where did you get that from? Was I that... got it from the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. I didn't have time to properly eat. I'm having a banana. Get on with the show. <laughs> I'm going to finish it. You might as well get on with the show. <laughs> So, 36% of obsessive fans would be willing to swap a family member for their hero. Do you think it's true or false? We think it's true. Well, I can tell you that the answer is false. Oh. In fact, 72% of obsessive fans <laughs> would be willing to swap a family member for their hero. <laughs> Fair enough. If I could broker a deal to swap my auntie Gladys for David Beckham, I would. I'm not a massive fan of Beckham's or anything. I'd just like to see our midfield improved. <laughs> At the end of that round, it's two points to Sean's team and five points for Dave's team. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion right. polls and it's up to them to buzz in points. and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Most frequent nightmare. We need points, Vic. Tell them a nightmare. Nightmare. It's got to be the one where Neptune's been uh, pursuing you on his BMX. <laughs> Ten points for that one, Jim. <laughs> Running out of crisps before you run out of dip. <laughs> Dave, you have a nightmare? I have a nightmare. It's a nightmare where they're after me because they think I've murdered somebody and then they arrest me and then they're going to execute me, but I escape. And it's a night... You're running all night and it's, ter it's really, really terrifying. And all I know is I've got to find this bloke who's got one arm, right? <laughs> Why, that's a fugitive, sorry. Oh, that's... <laughs> well, I, have, I have had a genuine nightmare once, uh, it was quite recently, and it was with Sven Joran Eriksson, it's the night before the World Cup final, and he calls me in, he calls me into his office and he says, I'm picking you for the England team. Yeah, and I'm going, no, no, I'm shit, don't pick me, I'm useless. I said, I'm not even in the team. He says, you are now. I've had a word with FIFA, he said, I've told all the players just to keep passing to you. No, no, I'm, I'm useless. And he's going, no, trust me. And I go out of the room. All the players are going, wanker, piss off. <laughs> I'll pass to you. And, I've had to, and then I look in the mirror and I'm Peter Crouch. <laughs> well, people tend to wake up when they have this nightmare. Falling. Correct. Yes, Britain's most frequent nightmare is falling, specifically falling in love with Heather Mills McCartney. <laughs> Britain's least favourite household chore. Is it helping your mum put her cards up in the phone box? <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's bringing out the dead. <laughs> <laughs> your least favourite household chore is... Bringing out the dead, or, you know, when they go... Bring out your day! <laughs> Bring out your day! <laughs> You're like the most fun uncle ever. I'm gonna face this way for a bit. I love looking at colours going by my eyes. <laughs> There's brownish red and green and yellow. <laughs> Surrounded by some blue squares and a purple <laughs> central area. <laughs> Yeah, you can't fool me. <laughs> Britain's least favourite household chore. Lou, have you done any housework recently? Hoovering. That's a correct answer. Here, well. <laughs> wow. Yes, Britain's least favourite household chore is vacuuming. The reason I don't like vacuuming is that if anything does go wrong, the people in casualty can be very sneery. <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Vic and Krishnan have three points, Dave, David and Louis are the winners with six points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience and all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night.
and DJ Phil Jupiter. Aussie rules, Jermaine Greer. And their captain, Sean Locke. And facing them tonight, funny girl, Fiona Allen. Angel of the North, Jason Manford. And their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, here's your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, the average person thinks that 49 is the age when we stop being young? Leah from Big Brother has a lot to pack into the next six months. <laughs> Unattractive people earn 13% less than beautiful people, and that's based on a survey of supermodels and dinner ladies. <laughs> 95% of creatures on Earth are smaller than a chicken's egg. So when I think about it, I've actually got quite a big cock. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave's team, what have they been talking about? Rather predictably, I'm going to go for the World <laughs> Cup again. Um, we're in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Beat Ecuador 1-0. I had a bet, won a few quid. I bet it was going to be shit. <laughs> it was. Uh, Beckham scored the only goal, 1-1-0. So well done and all that. Uh, then we're sick. <laughs> Threw up. And I'm wondering whether it was just like he's run out of celebrations. Footballers invent celebrations all the time. <laughs> so he'd done the baby thing. I've done that one. I've done the kissing the shirt and all that. I've done all that. I know what. Oh, fuck it. Oh, <laughs> oh, if they'd have panned away to the corner flag, Wayne Rooney's having a dump. That's worse. <laughs> My favourite aspect of the World Cup has been the recurrent appearance of uh, Frank Lampard's disappointed face. Because <laughs> he keeps putting the ball wide and then he goes... <laughs> <laughs> Jason, any thoughts on the World Cup? I just think they've got all a bit soft, to be honest, all these football. There's so many fouls and free kicks and... All the time, just all diving, all hurt my ankle. There was a bloke the other day for Ghana who was out because of a, a dead leg. Now, <laughs> that's not an injury, is it, a dead leg? That's, that's a minor annoyance. When I was ten, I had three dead legs in one day. I still had to do PE and walk home. <laughs> Watson came up trumps again, though. I know I do it every week, but another... Ecuador brought a substitute on. He's got his list of facts, and he? he goes, oh, you've got, oh, he's bringing on Rodriguez. Oh, uh, interestingly enough, this is the smallest man in the world. There's <laughs> <laughs> been a bit of trouble as well, wasn't there? Some England fans kicked off. There was a, finally there was some trouble. Was everyone saying that England fans were behaving very well? And there was a bit of trouble. I, you know, I saw it coming because uh, before the World Cup, I saw near me uh, there was a driving range adapted for chairs. They were practicing <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just warming up for the World Cup. <laughs> Up in Sweden, there'd be no end of a vast variety of furniture to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are we throwing? Hoogar. All right, OK. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's an integrated shelving system. <laughs> but I was surprised about the wags, actually, and all the footage on them. And I think, is it that England are playing so shit that they have to do, keep doing cutaways of posh in the crowd? <laughs> She's got a mate, hasn't she? Because they've all fallen out. Cheryl Tweedy. And apparently they're in their own little gang, just two of them, Billy No Mates. <laughs> because they reckon that all the other girlfriends and wives don't understand the pressures they're under. And I was just thinking, well, what pressures? What, she was in a shit band, she is in a shit band, and the core audience are age six. What's pressured? <laughs> <laughs> they have jumped up at the goal, didn't they? Went, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happening? No idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, you know, it's posh when the little boys, they go, yeah, don't get that ice cream near me. Hey! <laughs> Jermaine, any thoughts on the football? You've been following it? I should confess that I've been supporting Australia. Robbed. Robbed. You were robbed. <laughs> well, it's only taken five generations and finally the Australians know how it feels to get robbed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, let's have a look and see if the World Cup is one of the top five talking points. I imagine it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, in with a bullet at number one. Yes, England are still in the World Cup. There's been a lot of competition between the wags or wives and girlfriends in a series of fantasies I've been having. <laughs> right, Sean, Jermaine and Phil, what have the nation been talking about this week? My favourite story of the week is the man who just chose to uh, sort out a problem with a digger. It's always the first way, isn't it? Yeah. He owed them some money. He used to have a car they had a caravan site and didn't pay their rent. And they sent him a letter, they said, well, you know, you owe us £1,000, actually, in something. 
And he went, I'll show you a thousand pounds. And he came back with a digger. <laughs> and smashed their house up and all their cars. Do you want to have a look and see what the damage was? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you see, to us, that is a photograph of terrible, terrible devastation. But to him, as a man that drives heavy plant, that's a bit like a CV or a calling card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, he's very calm. Everyone said he was driving, he's very calm. Well, I like the idea that when the police got him out, he was going, It's all right, I've got the hang of it now. <laughs> <laughs> didn't do it first, but it's easy. That's left. But didn't, didn't, didn't he rent it as well? Didn't he rent yeah. the. Uh, yeah. the th he, so he, hired, he spent 450 quid hiring it. And they should have known when they're looking at the form, they're going, Hang on, he's ticked the box for revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the bloke said to him, I'll pay me when you come back. You've seen that on the news, he's not all for fucks. Probably <laughs> <laughs> nobody was suspicious when they saw a builder at seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> the clues were there. <laughs> right, let's have a look and see whether the JCB man is one of the top five most talked about things. Yes. Yeah. Yes, this is the story of a man who owed a landlady a thousand pounds and destroyed her house with a JCB rather than pay the debt. He was taken to the police station for questioning. The main question being, are you mental? <laughs> Dave Steve, what else have the nation been talking about? Prince Charles's uh, tax bill. The son, God bless him, said Prince Charles earned two hundred and seventy thousand pounds a week. That's twice as much as David Beckham. <laughs> now, well, those two people are not comparable, are they? You know, my mum's a nurse, she earns 15 grand a year. Twice as much as your average clown. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit puzzled that Camilla only cost the taxpayer 2,000 quid. I wouldn't pay more for it. <laughs> it's a lot of hay, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> If we do win the World Cup and she goes to meet all the footballers and she's shaking, you know, shaking Wayne Rooney's hand and there's just a picture of them in the paper saying, Donkey and Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> OK, this was not one of the big stories of the week, oh. but it was in the news. Sean Germain and Phil, what else have the nation been talking about? I think they've been talking about the, the guy who gave away, he gave away $30 billion to Bill Gates, another, another very rich man. He gave it to the Bill Gates Foundation. Yes. Is the man's name Warren Buffett? Warren Buffet. That <laughs> is uh, where he made his money. He invented the buffet. In the <laughs> and he gets a percentage on every buffet that's ever held. <laughs> well, some would say it was, bought, it was invented by Laszlo Smorgasbord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he never patented it. <laughs> I like the idea of, of, of what sort of thank you he expected. Because you had someone that much money, you expect pretty big thank you, don't you? <laughs> you expect someone to go, oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> and I like that. Bill Gates went, oh, cheers, I'll just leave it. How long did it take him to put it in the head of one of them orphans at a service station? <laughs> <laughs> he used two pound coins. <laughs> not a real orphan. Obviously. No, not a real orphan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, who are they going to tell? <laughs> Well, that's your answer. Let's have a look and see whether it's up there. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, the world's second richest man, Warren Buffett, has given $31 billion to charity. Bill Gates said he would use the money wisely before setting out on his mission to the centre of the earth to discover a lost nation of cats. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean's team, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it the chocolate? Cadbury's have uh, called back a load of chocolate bars because they said they were, had salmonella in them. 250 million? Yeah, something like that, doesn't matter really. A huge number. Once you've gone over 10, I just lose. Do I get too excited? <laughs> <laughs> How much chocolate? They're also saying something which is pretty balmy. They're saying, well, there's not a lot of salmonella in them, there's just no, a little just enough. bit. <laughs> it's not going to spoil your meal. That's a dream diet, isn't it, for Posh Spice, that? You eat that chocolate, wait for 20 minutes for it to kick in, throw your guts up, wait another 20 minutes, and then all through the night, every 20 minutes, you throw up morning, one stone lighter. What a diet. <laughs> Apparently, the weekend, it really affected sales of uh, chocolate. Nobody put with buying a box of chocolates as presents, as presents for ladies or anything like that, cos it... All because the lady loves a month off work. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it's there. Let's see. <laughs> yes, Cadbury's have recalled more than one million chocolate bars because of a feared salmonella contamination. The cause of the salmonella outbreak was a leaking pipe, which is, ironically, also one of the symptoms. <laughs> OK, one more thing to get. Fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about? Wimbledon. Disappointment for British fans. Tim Edmund's out. I think, actually, Tim Edmund going out of Wimbledon is the true meaning of sport relief. 
He's going to be a coach now, isn't he? Coach driver. I he's going to be said. a coach. <laughs> You're not going to send your kids to that man as a coach, are you? I'll I go out there and underachieve. <laughs> they're renaming. Uh, they're saying that we're going to stop calling it Henman Hill, and we're going to change it to Murray Mound. That's what they said in the paper. I thought if they just changed it to Shit Heap, that could be all of them. <laughs> I thought we started the, the uh, idea that, that women should be prepared the same as men. Emily Pankhurst. No, I... <laughs> <laughs> it was Venus Williams. Was it Venus Williams? Because Andy Murray's jumped, uh, he's, he's come the other way and said they shouldn't because they don't play five sets. No, only do they get paid less. They don't get a trophy. They just get a plate. <laughs> but it does fit in a dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the real telly thing was, uh, did you see David, David Cameron on Jonathan Ross? And he's such a sort of publicity junkie now. And uh, they had Martina Navratil over on. And Jonathan Ross cut to the green room where David Cameron said, what did you think about it? He goes, yes, I think we should definitely look into it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll sort that out. Any problems, I'll sort them out. Like he's fucking Batman. <laughs> well, should we have a look and see whether Wimbledon is one yeah. of the most talked about things this week? <laughs> yes, of course it is. Yes, Wimbledon started this week. Of course, it is nearly 30 years since a British lesbian won at Wimbledon. <laughs> right, well, at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Phil and Jermaine have three points, Dave, Fiona and Jason have two points. <laughs> the next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Here's your first question. One in ten families have fallen out over what? The DNA results. <laughs> <laughs> is it one in ten families have fallen out over the front doorstep? <laughs> <laughs> How many times have I told you about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <thank> you. <clears throat> is it the paedophile in the loft? <laughs> <laughs> we need the rent. <laughs> he comes down at night. He's all right. <laughs> is it that, sir? No, it isn't that. Is it that, Mr Carr? <laughs> I think it's the will. Correct. <laughs> yes, one in ten families has fallen out over a will. Sean, Phil and Jermaine, here's your next one. Seven percent of museum visitors have what? Seven percent of museum visitors have lost their virginity in the rib cage of a triceratops. <laughs> And it's seven percent of museum visitors have touched an exhibit. You're devilishly close with that. Seven percent. They don't oh. like it when you touch stuff in museums, do they? Hate it when you go and touch everything. Except that I was once in a museum in Florence, which is the archaeological museum. It's got this amazing male torso, great big muscly thing, and I thought that the guard wasn't there when I was there, and I hopped up on the plinth and had a rub up against it in my silk dress. <laughs> And then I realised that the guard was hiding behind another sculpture because lots of girls were doing that and he was getting off on it, yeah. hiding in the I know corner. why he was hiding. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably... <laughs> <laughs> what I like to do is like to heckle the uh, guided tours. <laughs> He's lying! Pharaohs, they're from Ireland! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, have a proper guess then. 7% of museum visitors have what? I've wondered what it was like in the olden days. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> Slightly more than touching something. Smashed it. I'll give you that, yeah. Good one. <laughs> yes, 7% of museum visitors have knocked something over. Right. Fair enough. Out of the way, Grandma. I've got some art to see. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's four points for Sean's team and five points for Dave's team. <laughs> the next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement and all they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Dave, Fiona and Jason are to go first. Oh. To illustrate their statistic, let's have a look at a clip of an animal psychic channelling the spirit of a dolphin.
dear friends, it is our great delight and pleasure to be able to share this time and this space with you. You, dear friends, within human form, we within dolphin form. Okay, here is your related <laughs> statistic. 52% of Brits would like to be reincarnated as a dolphin rather than any other animal. True or false? I don't know why anybody would want to come back as an animal. I just, you know, we're, we're human, uh, you know, we're the best animal in the world. As a human, I only want to come back as a human, because I'm number one, or a unicorn. I'm not sure you get that. <laughs> People love horses, don't they? They love horses. Imagine how much they'd love a flying horse. Imagine that. <laughs> and if they didn't love you, fly off. <laughs> it's a very good point, Jason. What, what would you guys want to come back as? I could probably come back as a daddy long legs, live for six hours, and some fucker pulls your wings off. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be my luck. Or I'd come back as a dolphin in a, in, in a fish pool in Blackpool. With somebody going, right, you, jump, or you won't get a fucking pilchard. <laughs> Dolphins have got the edge for me, I think. They are very sexually active, dolphins. They have group sex, they do all that. And the, and the actual, the, the penis is prehensile. They can pick stuff up and carry it. That's brilliant, that. That's <laughs> like a bit of flower arranging. Look at that. <laughs> Jermaine, what would you come back as? Uh, I will come back as a host of recycled nutrients, fungus and bacteria, and that suits me fine. <laughs> you know, it's a comedy show, <laughs> Jermaine. <laughs> 52% of Brits would like to be reincarnated as a dolphin rather than any other animal. True or false? Well, we're having false. a round now. False. false. So you're going for false? 2 1. False. Okay. Well, I can tell you that the answer is false. Ah! <laughs> yes, it's actually 13% that would like to come back as a dolphin. Of course, lots of people don't believe in reincarnation, but I think you may as well. You only live once. <laughs> right, okay. Sean, Phil, and Jermaine, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. $720. $720. All our bids are locked in. Good luck to you all. Our prize, $799. Merry <laughs> Ring. Jermaine when she found out she was coming on this show. <laughs> that was the Australian Price is Right. Here is your related statistic. 67% of game show contestants describe appearing on television as the most exciting thing that has ever happened to them. True or false? She looked horrified. She's like she'd been given, uh, you know, tickets for a dinner with Mick Hucknall or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's called hysterics, isn't it? it yeah. They should have given slugged her. Bam! Yeah. What, what, what kind of a feminist are you? <laughs> I would slug you if you had hysterics. Will you? Do I have to have hysterics? <laughs> <laughs> How about if I'm just cheeky? <laughs> Female eunuch, this. <laughs> oh, I don't want to be here. <laughs> about game shows, they always say to contestants, don't they? Don't they? they always say some, uh, fun, you know, there's a funny thing happened to you once, didn't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With biscuits or something. <laughs> yeah. And there you go, oh, yes, yeah, I bought, uh, bought some uh, rich tea and uh, I got them home and it turned out, I forgot you've got it wrong, actually, but we, we like digestives. <laughs> <laughs> those are the usual stories they tell. So you can see that, that actually the anecdotes they have in their life are so pitiful that television probably would blow their minds. <laughs> Jermaine, you were on one, though, weren't you? You yeah. were on Big Brother. You, was it the most exciting thing that's ever happened to you? No. What was? Almost anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I loathed it. And they make up rules that you consider yourself bound by, and then they change them. And they make it as hard as they can. This was Big Brother, wasn't it? Not your days in Guantanamo. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, Sean? Uh, do I think it's uh, absolutely spot on, Jimmy. That <laughs> statistic isn't a statistic, it's a fact. <laughs> well, I'm I can staring tell you... down the barrel of the truth there. <laughs> and I'm saying yes. <laughs> I can tell you that the answer is false. <laughs> Thank you.
In fact, only 16% of game show contestants oh. describe appearing on television as oh. the worst thing oh. that has ever happened to them. I... Both Why? Six... <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's four points for Sean's team and six points for Dave's team. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and surveys. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. The world's worst taste. Crow omelette. <laughs> <laughs> Get it, crow. All of that. Eggs. <laughs> is it the medicine that your vet prescribed for your horse because he's at stud and he can't get an erection? <laughs> When uh, you butter in toast and you get a bit of margarine on your hand and you go, I'll just eat that. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> ah, horrible. When you're in a plane and you crash and uh, you're a rugby team in the Andes and uh, you've got to eat each other, like, when you're eating, do you go, mm -hmm. <laughs> Dave tastes great! <laughs> That's good, Dave! <laughs> Well, it'd be Jose, wouldn't it, because they're Argentinian? Well, no, there's one called Dave. Is there? Yeah. An Argentinian called Dave? Yep. Yeah, you know the one, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it was Dave Lopez. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's a vegetable. Oh, a banana. Brussels sprout. <laughs> <laughs> Correct answer, Jermaine. Oh. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Worst thing about gyms? <laughs> and a gym is... <laughs> about gyms. <laughs> Everything's so bloody heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you think, in this day and age, you have to make them so bloody heavy. Let's think about gyms, personal trainers. You don't like personal trainers? No, I don't. One of them said to me, you've got really skinny wrists. If you don't put muscle on there, you might fall over when you're old and break them. <laughs> so he is an exercise. I Sorry. think you're... <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure he was a gym instructor? <laughs> Is this at school? Do you want to report it to someone? <laughs> the worst thing about gyms? People laughing at your arms. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm going to give you that. Uh -huh. enough, right? <laughs> yes, the worst thing about gyms is feeling inadequate. My gym have a special offer on at the moment. It's £50 a month, or 40 if you promise to never, ever go. <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Phil and Jermaine have six points. Dave, Fiona and Jason are the winners with seven points. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. <laughs>about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, there are enough cows in the world to make 7,000 Big Macs for every American? We're gonna need more cows. <laughs> Glaciers cover 11% of the Earth's surface. Sorry, 10%. Sorry, 9%. Goodbye, Stanglia. <laughs> and eating carrots every day dramatically reduces your chances of having a stroke, unless you're a rabbit. <laughs> Let's get started.
What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean, Emo, Alex, what have the nation been talking about this week? Is it the World Cup about the fact that England aren't in the World Cup anymore? They're lost. Yeah, you were there, Sean. We saw you on TV. I know. <laughs> were you? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Sean would be closer. Yeah, there. I took one of the penalties, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we lost. Well, yes. I scored. You know. <laughs> really got sent off and he said he didn't tread on someone's bollocks which he, he, <laughs> which he did it's pathetic really he said, I didn't I didn't do it deliberately he's talking about it like there's a bit of <coughs> grainy CCTV footage <laughs> there's 24 high-definition cameras <laughs> pointing at him <laughs> showing him going <laughs> <laughs> I mean but it's not his fault the main culprit is Sven who was a complete charlatan incompetent fool manager didn't really give a shit what about the, about England you know just like the money in fact I don't think he should ever be able to set foot on the shores of this country again he should be kicked up the arse <laughs> all the way to Dover just kick him up the arse all the way to Dover and then there's no ferries kick him all the way to Heathrow <laughs> I bring back hanging that's what I say bring back hanging. John Watson said it's, uh, we're approaching injury time we've got ten men I wonder what's going through Sven's mind Fuck knows. None of us know that, do we? <laughs> it showed a picture of him and he, he turned to uh, McLaren and then he looked down the bench and if you could put a voice over on the pitch, it would be like, who is that young boy on the bench? <laughs> this is baby Theo. You brought him. Did I really? Back to my word search. <laughs> <laughs> now, Emo, you're a huge football fan, I sense. You ever play baseball? Once I... once... oh, this is cute. <laughs> once I beat up the school bully with a baseball bat. Both his arms were completely broken, which is what gave me the courage. <laughs> yes, that's the story. England the story. aren't in the World Cup anymore. Well, let's see if it's there. <laughs> yes, sad news, England are out of the World Cup, but good news, half-price flags! <laughs> On their return to England, the team were driven through London on an open-top bus under a series of low bridges. <laughs> Dave Fisher and Justin, what have the nation been talking about? We've had this heat wave, we've had an official heat wave, or as one uh, daily paper said, killer heat. <laughs> killer heat. Well, luckily enough, they, they print these uh, tips and advice inside the papers. Thank God. Because we'd never think of stuff like that, would we? Drink water. Stop those, you know, drink water. Drink water. Drink, that's why I'm thirsty. It's something to do with the heat. <laughs> These weather warnings, they're stupid, aren't they? They come on and they say, today, weather warning. It's hot. Look outside. But then, to be fair, they say it's for the vulnerable people. It's for babies and it's for old people. So I'd like to, if I can, do a weather warning for my nana. Take your fucking coat off. <laughs> 40 degrees, love. Why is hot weather such an excuse for such execrable clothes? Well, not everyone looks crap in a bikini, Tricia. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? <laughs> so that's when you... Cos he was being a moose. He was being a moose? No, yeah. moose is like this. <laughs> <laughs> Emo, you're, you're from California. It's always hot there. Yeah, I go to the beach. You know, I love the sound of the crashing surfers against the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's very calming and spiritual. It is, yeah. but nothing's like... I was, I, I was off the coast of Florida on my uncle's boat, and I said to my sister, you got to go in the ocean. It's wonderful. She said, I told you, I'm having my period. <laughs> you know, she takes all the fun out of shark fishing. <laughs> Right, well, that's your answer. Is it one of the top five? <laughs> yes, it is. Ah! Yes, this week Britain was as hot as the Caribbean, yeah, and just as chilled out and relaxing. <laughs> Pensioners have been advised to stay indoors between the hours of one and three, so if you want to go to the post office, that is the best time. <laughs> Short Emo and Alex, what else have the world been talking about this week? Is it the Geordie woman who uh, recovered from a stroke only to get a Jamaican accent? It is a brilliant story. Yeah. I don't think it's a major problem for her. You know, she goes on her life. Every now and again, she goes, bung, bung, diddly, diddly, woo. <laughs> Apart from that, it hasn't been a major problem. There might be a, a woman in Jamaica waking up today going, fucking hell, why I? <laughs> <laughs> it could be a lot worse. She could have an Australian accent. <gasps> you? That would be terrible. 
Oh, it's just over that rising inflection all the time. Again, I'm going down the shops. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Sydney about a year ago and I heard someone actually sneeze with a rising inflection. Oh, God. <laughs> this guy went, it's you? <laughs> I love Australia. Oh. I was there about a couple of years ago. I, I was there, I was watching my career go down the drain in the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things we have on our show a lot of the times, so I, I go up to somebody in the audience who's blonde haired, blue eyed, and then they start talking like that in, in it, man, you know, wicked. And, I, and I, I said to this guy once, I said, why are you talking like that? I'm black and I'm not bloody talking like that. What the hell are you talking like that for? He was giving his view and said, you know, bring it on. In it. Is this? Oh, were you saying in it or? No, they say in it. They say in it. In it. You could not cut it in the ghetto, Jimmy. I'm I couldn't cut it in the you ghetto. You could not <laughs> cut it in the ghetto. Get out of my face, bitch. <laughs> OK, well, I can tell you that the Geordie woman with a Jamaican accent isn't in the top five. OK, Dave's team, what else have the nation been talking about this week? It might be this North Korean bloke who's in charge of North Korea. Kim Jong-il. And they've launched, they launched all these missiles, test missiles. Six were successful, but one wasn't. <laughs> and it's like, was it bomb fan? Was it like that last rocket that is just going to go off and it falls over like that? And everybody's going, shit, get out the way! <laughs> <laughs> He's brilliant, the, the leader. He's got the best propaganda in the world. He's got his press releases, just the best. It says that in his first ever game of golf, he got ten holes in one. Ah. Yeah, he's probably crazy golf, isn't it? He's fucking <laughs> 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 yeah. mental. Well, they, they launched the missiles to get America's attention. And I, I just think that's, that, that would be brilliant. If, as a child, you wanted attention, just launch some missiles. I wish I'd had a bedroom full of missiles. <laughs> just go, Mum, 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 no? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah? Now, that's right. <laughs> <Ultimate dinner. laughs> OK, that's your answer. Is it up there? Yes, yes it is. <laughs> Fourth most talked about thing this week. What else have the British nation been talking about this week? I think they've probably been talking about... Uh, John Prescott's got in, uh, in trouble again. Apparently, he's been visiting a ranch in America by, owned by a billionaire who's interested in turning the... Is it the Millennium Dome? It's a casino and it says it's compromised. And he, had, he, didn't, he didn't put it in a register. He didn't say, I went on holiday at this bloke's house. But there's, there's other suggestions of impropriety, although we can't comment until the inquiry has fully cleared him. <laughs> he said he wanted to go to a ran ranch. Did you say ranch or ranch? ranch? We say ranch. He doesn't say it like the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to go to a ranch because he's always... He, he likes cowboy films. Now, I imagine the poor horse saw him coming and went... <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Do you think he has to go now? Well, it's so, he eats so much meat, at some point in the day, it's got to happen. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he hasn't gone for about ten years. He's got that complexion of a man who hasn't had a good crap for years. <laughs> <laughs> Just meat everywhere. His blood's like pate. <laughs> <laughs> he squeezes it round his body like toothpaste. <laughs> Shall we have a look and see if Prescott on the casino is one of the top five talking points this week? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, John Prescott has been criticised for his relations with an American casino tycoon. It shouldn't be too hard to sell the idea of gambling to a man who leaves the door open while he shags his secretary on the table of the cabinet office. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, one more thing to get. Big Brother. Big I brother. mean, not that... Do you watch it? I've just seen bits. There's a woman who looks really old, but she's got massive tits. She's yeah. been, she was on our show first, about 18 months you ago. You must be so proud. I am. <laughs> this was on your show? Yeah. Because I saw Leah's first performance. <laughs> I don't think they could put that out in data. <laughs> <laughs> she is weird-looking, though, isn't she, Leah? She looks like a wax model halfway through a stage of melting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you fancy her? Yeah, I love it. I love that look. Do you like women with... The Zeppelin sort of stuff going on. Do you like all that? I, no, I like a woman who's full of helium, though. Um, <laughs> so, yes, in many ways, I do like a Zeppelin-based woman. So, you like women woman. naturally? No, I just like them to hover slightly off the ground. <laughs> I think she looks like the result of a sort of a Muppet bus crash. <laughs> I there was a bus load of Muppets and they crashed. <laughs> and they got out of the wreckage and they got this thing out and then these pulled all the fur off and there she'd be. Have you been watching the new housemates go in? I, I was going to watch it, but... I had all this sweet corn I had to glue back onto a cob. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that takes. Let's have a look and see if Big Brother's there. 
Yes, indeed it is. <laughs> Leah is so worried about the abuse she'll get when she leaves the house, she's insisting on going everywhere with two massive bouncers. <laughs> So at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean's team have two points and Dave's team have three points. <laughs> the next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. OK, Sean's team. 30% of millionaires are worried about what? Robin Hood and his merry men. <laughs> Helping their new wives with their homework. <laughs> Is it the admiring glances of Heather McCartney? <laughs> you're you're kind of close with that, in a funny sort of way. It's security related. Ooh. Their partner is a security guard. <laughs> Tell me the answer. 30% of millionaires are worried about being stalked. What's that got to do with Heather McCartney? Stalked. She's a fucking stalker. Well, she's only got one leg, but that couldn't <laughs> call her stalking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 30% of millionaires are worried about being stalked. I haven't got a stalker, but I have got a lady who sends me pants in the post. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> 19% of Brits have been angry with someone who what? Who has buck teeth and a Portuguese accent. Who's <laughs> <laughs> on deal or no deal. I'm taking it too seriously. <laughs> I'm getting a hot feeling from the box. <laughs> you're 48, you're on the change, it's a flush. <laughs> <laughs> Anger's no good. Anger is no good. You'll notice, Trisha, anger's no good. It's non-productive. You're best off using that energy, twatting them. <laughs> Oh, what really annoys me is when people discover vegetables that look like someone famous. They send a picture into the paper and they say, you know, this, this, looks, look, this looks a bit like uh, Natasha Kaplinsky, doesn't it, this aubergine? <laughs> I just want to know what goes point. through their head when they find the vegetable. They just go, oh, my God! <laughs> I'm going to have to give you the answer to this. Nineteen percent of Brits have been angry with someone who upset them in a dream. <laughs> Confucius said, how do you know you're a man dreaming you're a butterfly and not a butterfly dreaming you're a man? How do I know I'm not a butterfly? You daft twat. I drove here. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's three points for Sean, Emo and Alex and four points for Dave, Trisha and Justin. <laughs> the next round is called Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement and all they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Sean, Emo and Alex, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. <laughs> Right, that's the wallpaper on, or part of the room done. Now, Joe, can I just... I'd love to show you something here, because lots of people don't realise what else you can do with wallpaper. This dress, this attractive dress what Joe is wearing, that is wallpaper. You can do lots of other things with it too. I do know some people who have uh, wallpapered the television set. Um, this is quite attractive, but uh, the thing to remember there is that um, you take the plug out before you do anything like this. <laughs> Well, that was a DIY show from the 1960s. Your related statistic. Every week, 4,000 Britons are hospitalised through DIY accidents. Is that true or false? I've never met anyone who's been involved in a DIY accident or even heard a story about someone who's been involved in a DIY accident. Yeah, but you move in the right circles to hear the <laughs> DIY stories. <laughs> I've, I've built stuff. Yeah? What have you built? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's the woman who marries you. Why? Because you don't... What do you do, then? I'm an what? attractive prospect, Tricia. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good around the house, Emo? No. My light bulb burns out. I sell the house and move. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Dave does DIY. You look kind of a no, DIY. No, I don't, and I think oh. that's probably... It's, you know, people do get hospitalised, cos men are generally shit at DIY. The ones who are good at DIY do it for a living, basically. <laughs> why are men on this planet? If you All cannot right, put Trisha, out the rubbish okay. into DIY... OK. Why are you here? Bridges, roads, <laughs> hospitals... <laughs> everything you can think of that's <laughs> ever been invented... <laughs> Western civilization, yes. in short. But, Sean, if we don't give you a little bit of how's your father, never mind about building... How's your father? <laughs> How is it way back there in the 50s? <laughs> I tried to be polite on the television. All right, Have you seen we... your show? <laughs> <laughs> never mind building civilizations. You can't last two days without a bit of Listen, sex. you shelf whore. <laughs> 
You're putting out things. Is your house just covered in shells? Yeah. <laughs> husband's going, it's brilliant. Every time I put one out, no. she puts up. He can't. <laughs> he, can't. He, he can do a bit of deal. Can he? Yeah. I bet his shed's fantastic. <laughs> his shed is great. He's got an amazing shed in the garden. <laughs> yeah. With a combination lock on there, a drawbridge, everything. <laughs> <laughs> in the shed, he's got a gun turret. <laughs> I'm in the shed! <laughs> yeah, just stuff! <laughs> OK, so every week, 4,000 Brits are hospitalised through DIY accidents. Is that true or false? I think it's an absolute scandal, that statement. It's foul calumny. <laughs> it's absolute nonsense. Poppycock. Absolute balderdash. What are you saying? Just give me an answer. No. You're saying no. You're saying it's false. Yeah, I'm saying it's false. I can tell you that the answer is, in fact, true. Yeah. Oh. 4,000 Brits are hospitalised each week through DIY accidents. I once had a serious DIY accident. The phone rang while I was using a nail gun. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Dave, Tricia and Justin, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. <laughs> what the hell? I'll take care of this. Look, buddy, I don't know who you are. But I'm gonna kick your ass! What are you doing with my wife? What? I'm not your wife, mister! Shut up, Anna! Well, that's it, man! <laughs> <laughs> Best episode of Lovejoy ever. <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 64% of men believe they have a higher pain <laughs> threshold than women. Is that true or false? You don't get colds, do you? You get the flu. Yeah, well, that's not pain, is it? Pain's like getting your dick caught in your flies. <laughs> <laughs> that's real pain. No, real pain is giving birth. It's like, as Diana well, Ross once told me, it's like shit in a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> I read in Cosmopolitan, I've seen some doctor's surgery, it said the, the thing, the most painful thing that a woman can have done is have the nipples clamped. And I thought, well, no, I mean, having them torn away has got to be worse. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, actually, having said all that, women do have a higher pain threshold, cos they go through all sorts of yeah, stuff well, just, to, just to feel and look good. It is all painful stuff you put yourself through just to attract, well, just to look good and feel good, and for us... It you were going to say attract men, well, weren't you? Well, in you a way, yeah, in a way. But, I mean, there's a bloke in Lee this week got arrested for shagging a frozen turkey, so, you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> So we're wasting our time, is well, what you're you know. saying? Trisha, you're in a really bad mood tonight, aren't you? Well, just question everything. Because I'm the only girl here. No, I'm not. Alex is the other girl. <laughs> Do you have a pop at our little Alex? No, Alex is more of a girl than I am. He's, he's all sweet. Why would you say I was a girl? But you're sort of all, you know, oh, I don't... I can't... <laughs> is that your impression of me? You're sort of... Are you sitting there doing an impression of me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sitting there doing a... No, you're all sort of delicate. I can be fairly rugged. <laughs> Go on, then. Go ahead. Oh, Go, Go on. Ahead. Let's yeah? have some ruggedness. Yeah, yeah. let's oh, see yeah. rugged. So, anyway, I was watching the football. Right, right. Yeah? yeah? I don't know I can pull it off. <laughs> really? Yeah, just push me. Just, just a push. Hang on. Uh, uh, yeah! 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 Oh, my hero. Shut up, Trisha! Yeah! Yeah! I've said that so many times to the TV, it felt totally different in person. <laughs> <laughs> Sixty-four percent of men believe they have a higher pain threshold than women. Is that true or false? What do you think? I think it must be true. Yeah, you do. do you think you? it's true? Oh, well, we're three I trues here. Three trues. True. Three true. trues. I can tell you the answer is false. Only twenty-seven percent of men believe they have a higher pain threshold than women. <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's three points for Sean's team and four points for Dave's team. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and it's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Most annoying thing about restaurants. I went to a restaurant and the waitress was on crutches. <laughs> and she brought the bread rolls in her mouth. Just going to go and get the soup. <laughs> I was in a restaurant and I, I dropped a fork on the floor and they gave me a new fork. So I, I dropped the napkin, 
just to test it out. And they give me a new napkin. I thought, so I, I pushed my ex-wife out of her chair. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's service related. Is it losing the ability to say the word bill when you enter? Because at the end of the meal, nobody can say, excuse me, can I have the... You have to, excuse me, can I have the... <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're in Spain. No, Spanish for the bill is la cuenta. Yeah? Not as I did when I went over, stood Miss Fraser and asked for la queso, which is cheese. <laughs> and he's like, queso, everybody? I go, yeah, pay for everybody. Queso, queso <laughs> round. <laughs> queso, queso. <laughs> Dump, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you. The most annoying thing about restaurants is having to wait ages to get your food. That's why I always phone ahead with my order. Yes, I'll have the filio fish, please. <laughs> OK. Worst place to cry. Is it from your ears? <laughs> I imagine a bad place to cry would be a photo me booth. <laughs> you get your passport photos done. And every time you went to a country, you had to go... <laughs> 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 okay, worst place to cry. Antarctica. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, job interview. Correct answer, Justin oh! Moore. <laughs> yeah, the worst place to cry is at a job interview. That's according okay. to the survey. But in my experience, it is definitely during sex, especially if the sex is during a job interview. <laughs> Right, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Emo and Alex have three points, Dave, Trisha and Justin are our winners, they have six points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us, good night. of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, last year British women spent £280 million removing unwanted body hair? Surely it'd be cheaper and easier just to move to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> women blink almost twice as much as men. Brilliant! Think of the stuff we can get away with. <laughs> and 54% of taxi drivers think we shouldn't join the Euro. We didn't conduct a survey, they just told us that. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave's team, what have the nation been talking about? It's the World Cup, we think. Yeah, yes. I think the final will probably largely be remembered for the antics of the uh, French captain, Zinedine mm -hmm. Zidane, who uh, was going to quit at the end of the game anyway, but decided to take early retirement. <laughs> yeah. He nutted this guy in the chest. And the clip they always show is when he walks off, desolate, taking some bandage off, he walks past the World Cup, doesn't he? Which is like, they're on a plinth. Right. And I thought it would be really, really funny if he did. He walked off like that and went, I'm having that and all. Because <laughs> <laughs> who's going to get it back off him? You go and get it. I'm not getting it off him. <laughs> and they reckon that he said that his... Uh, that the guy at Matarazzi said that his... accused his mother, said that his mother was a terrorist whore. Oh. Oh, so what? Any woman over 50 goes, thank you for thinking that. If he had said your mother's an old ugly pig in a big burka, you'd go, how fucking dare you? But your mother's an old whore, well, thanks. <laughs> I never a Sorry, you think be being called a whore is a compliment? If you don't have a tampon in your purse, you're glad someone thinks of you sexually. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> 
What is a terrorist whore? How does that a work? A terrorist whore is a woman who's sexy but heavy around the middle because she's wearing a bomb. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the important point to make about the World Cup. The reason, one of the reasons that the Italians won there was that they were a very fresh team. They had lots of energy compared to other teams. And that's because Italian football, is the, well, we all know it's fixed. So, technically, they haven't played a competitive match all season, those players. <laughs> <laughs> the whole season they've been playing games where they just kick off, knock it about for a bit. Time for the penalty? Yeah, go on, over you go. <laughs> Are you a football fan? Do you understand soccer? I don't understand. I'm not... I'm Jewish. We don't play sports, we sell you the equipment. I mean, it's <laughs> just... The saddest thing I saw the whole World Cup was uh, after England went out, I went into a, a supermarket, and on special offer, they had half-price England World Cup celebration cakes. Who, in their right mind, if England won the World Cup, would go, <laughs> hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Should we have a look and see whether the World Cup and Zinedine Zidane is one of the most talked about things this week? Yes, of course it is, the number one talking point. Yes, Zinedine Zidane headbutted an Italian player who accused his mother of being a terrorist whore. Zidane was brought up single-handedly by his mother, who had to work two jobs. She was a terrorist and a whore. <laughs> Obviously, we don't mean that. Sean, Eamon and Vic, what else have the nation been talking about this week? David Cameron's got another attention-grabbing yeah. headline scheme idea where we should uh, apparently understand teenage hood-wearing characters. He wants to cuddle them in the park, doesn't he? I think he thinks things through. Because teenagers, the last thing they want is cuddles, isn't it? <laughs> Wait, what's, what's he got planned for goths? <laughs> they don't want to be cuddled. For goths? When I see a goth, Cold. I don't see a goth. I don't see an individual goth. I see two disappointed parents. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking, they're thinking he used to be such a lovely boy, now he looks like a slutty girl. <laughs> Joan, are people wearing hoodies a problem in the States? I, I don't know. At my age, when I see someone coming at me with a hood, I run because I figure it's the Grim Reaper. So <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> did he say he, he formed his opinions after watching that film, Kid Hood? Yeah, he did, yeah. So is, it, is Criminal Justice Act going to be based on, what, Police Academy 6? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Holly, any thoughts on hoodies? Do you like them? I don't think I want to hug one. They might nick my wallet while I'm giving them a cuddle. I'll be honest, I think if they get a hug from you, they will have other things on their mind. <laughs> <laughs> Even more easy than you. I don't think they'll be thinking about that. I think the blood might be somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> he just comes out with stupid statements all the time. Nobody would be surprised if he said something like, I've got an idea, elastic houses. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's small if there's only two of you, but then if you've got some people around, you just stretch it out. <laughs> there we go, elastic houses. There we go. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Moon harnesses. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why? It just could work. Throw a harness over the moon, two handles, pull it near. <laughs> it comes nearer and nearer and nearer. We get more gravity and begin to float. <laughs> It makes sense. You're a one-man think tank. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's have a look and see whether Cameron's campaign for hoodies is one of the top five most talked about things. <laughs> the Sun has launched a campaign to hug a hoodie, or, in other words, restrain them until the police arrive. <laughs> okay, uh, Dave, Joan, and Holly, what else have the nation been talking about? Artificial sperm. Artificial sperm. Men won't be needed anymore. Yes, they will, until a petri dish can buy you a diamond bracelet. <laughs> they will still be needed. But you romantic sperm. you. <laughs> no, but it upset me terribly because I belong to Overeaters Anonymous, and sperm is 450 calories a swallow. So if they're going to find this new sperm, make it no cow sperm. Light. Sperm light. Sperm light. <laughs> sperm light. <laughs> You know, you, you, you're, you're dieting all day, and then you go, mm, mm. <laughs> 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 You should think very carefully before they, before they make men redundant, because there are consequences. Who's going to bring the bins out? It's very true. The summer's going to be ruined. Who's going to do the barbecue? I think some little things are missed, like, who's going to put all the ships in the bottles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In six months, they'll all be living in caves. They'll be tidy, though. Yeah. <laughs> OK, let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yes, it is. 
Yes, this week, fertility scientists have produced mice using artificial sperm. There were worries in the tabloid press that the artificial creation of sperm will make men redundant. Fortunately, the sperm are kept in jam jars, so you'll need a man to get the lid off. <laughs> <laughs> OK, over to you, Sean. I think that uh, cash for peerages, that's hmm. bound to be there. That Lord Levy. He's actually... He's a, he's a Lord and he's been accused of selling cash for peerages and raising money for the Labour Party and he's been arrested and uh, Tony Blair may be questioned by police, maybe taken down a police station. Do you know anything about this at all, Joan? <laughs> Very little. I just know that Tony Blair was upset and he uh, head-butted Lord Levy. That's all I heard. <laughs> <you know. laughs> but I believe in that. I think if you can get to be... Look at Dame Edna. I mean, it suddenly brings to, to light a lot of people. You say, how? Dame Edna. Dame Edna. <laughs> Dame Edna is one of the examples you're bringing in here. Lord Snooty. Yes. Count <laughs> yeah. yeah. Duckula. How did he get his title? <laughs> There's your answer. There's something gone on there. Joan, seriously, would you be interested in being a Lord of the, the Realm? In a second, because I could slap servants so easily. I look at, like, oh, Naomi Campbell, she is my idol now. <laughs> she just goes around slapping... You know, to slap someone that's on your level, they'll hit you back, you know. But Naomi Campbell just says, you stupid bitch, whap, whap, whap. <laughs> now bring my tea. And they do. And I just think that's fabulous. <laughs> Should we have a look and see why that Lord Levy is up there? Yeah, I think we've tackled the subject in depth, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, one more to get. What else is the nation be talking about? Is it that well, they're going to build loads of nuclear power stations to um, cater for our energy demands in the future? But people say they're not safe. Well, I, I interviewed the, the industry secretary during the week, Alistair Darling, and, and the whole question of safety, there's a lot of concern about that, and he said it's not a problem, but he would give it three thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they should consult the people of Sellafield. Well, I went beachcombing near Sellafield. Yeah. And there's a crab with paws. <laughs> <laughs> and he had furry paws, <laughs> and he was licking his lips. <laughs> Where is this beach? It's near Morecambe. It's the only place you can have a paddle and get your feet x-rayed at the same time. <laughs> I just can't imagine anyone who would want to live next to a nuclear power station. Where are they going to put them? There's just going to be such an uproar about it. On the moon. Once they use the moon. solution to everything. <laughs> of course it is. It's a big redundant ball of... Shite. <laughs> but there is there's no solution to the, so, so far to the energy crisis. One of the solutions has been put forward. David Cameron's put a windmill on his house, hasn't he? Yeah. That's what he does. It doesn't power any electricity. It powers his crackpot ideas machine. <laughs> 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 He's got in his kitchen. It's just wearing away. Like, -a 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 -a. Hug a hoodie. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Money trees. Wow. <laughs> The thing is, as well, it's like they go, oh, yeah, we can't just burn fossil fuels because, you know, our children and our children's children. Is it just me that thinks, fuck them? <laughs> <laughs> Not bothered. <laughs> right, let's have a look and see whether nuclear power is one of the top five most talked about things this week. Yes, yes it is. Yes, the government have given a go-ahead for a new wave of nuclear power stations to be built in the UK. They should also build wind farms next to them. That way, when it all goes wrong, the fallout will be blown towards France. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, I can tell you, Sean's team have three points, Dave's team have two points. <laughs> the next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world, and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Here is your first one. 50% of Brits think what is a good way to protect your home? Pebble dash it. <laughs> Everyone thinks you're skint. <laughs> you just have a few porcelain animals in there, a clock with Elvis on it or something like that. Or just have shit in your house. I've got a clock with Elvis on it. What's wrong with that? <laughs> It's usually a mirror as well, and I don't I like, like it when they... you got the mirror. <laughs> you obviously like Elvis. Well, you look a bit like uh -huh, him. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, it makes sense, cos you are, you're him, and you're like a double. <laughs> <laughs> Joan, any thoughts on how to protect your home? Just look weird. <laughs> OK, <laughs> Joan. <laughs> <laughs> they won't even go across the street to avoid your house. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, little boy. <laughs> Cookie! <laughs> <laughs> How would you protect your house, Vic? Well, I suppose it's a portcullis. <laughs> 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 
it involves getting together with a group of people. Neighbourhood watch. Correct answer. Well done, Eamon Holmes. Yes, 50% of Brits think joining Neighbourhood Watch is a good way to protect your home. There's a thin line between Neighbourhood Watch and being a peeping Tom. I've reported several things to the police, like the shocking lack of foreplay at number 47. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, next question. 13% of what say their job puts people off dating them? Is it paper boys? <laughs> <laughs> paper boys? I don't think it'd stop Joan. <laughs> Vic, any thoughts? What, what job would not attract you to someone? I expect it's lepers. <laughs> <laughs> a hangman. A hangman would be horrible. Somebody has to do it's, it. I'll, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> <laughs> is it an evil dentist? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> the points, Vic. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you what this is. 13% of teachers say their job puts people off dating them. I suppose it's hard to find the time to meet people when you don't finish work till 3.30 oh. in the afternoon. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's five points for Sean's team and two points to Dave's team. <laughs> the next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Dave, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. There are many modern cults, but only transcendental meditation will teach you to fly. It's literally doing this and getting up and doing it. An athlete would obviously be able to get further. The more, the lighter you are to the relationship of the power in your legs, the further you will get. Yogic flying, then. Here is your related statistic. 36% of Brits think that New Age therapies are utter nonsense. Do you think that's true or false? I was very sceptical, and then I wasn't feeling well, and they said, try uh, one of those organic coffee enemas. And it worked like a million bucks. They threw me out of Starbucks. I can never go back. <laughs> <laughs> but I, went, I went to Hong Kong and, uh, when I was really ill, and I went to a little traditional herbalist uh, Chinese shop. And I went in and trying to communicate, I did that stupid thing that we do, and I went, me, saw, ah, saw, shiver, shiver. I don't know why, shiver. <laughs> you have anything for me? He went, ah, night nurse. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, I recently got attuned in Reiki. Oh, yeah. that's channeling. It's kind of like a healing energy that you are the channel for. And it's really weird because I think it really works. Sorry, do you want to buy some magic beans? <laughs> <laughs> you can do Reiki as well, can't you? I used to be a hippie, I've sort of... I've moved on. <laughs> What's that? What's that? But Jimmy does Reiki? Yeah. You make her. <laughs> Quite right. What did she look like that was doing the Reiki? What did she look like? Yeah, it was like this gorgeous girl doing <laughs> Reiki over you. Or was that... <laughs> <laughs> It's a, a big difference with a man. If we were both Reiki instructors, who would make you guys feel better? Come on, oh, shut no. your eyes. Come on, Holly. Shut your eyes. You won't know who does which first. Now, one of us is going on one side, one of us is going to get on the other side. Right, you're going to what? Heal me? Side felt better. I think the, the, the left hand side felt like it would be slightly more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and the right hand side felt like if you're on a budget in a hurry, why not? <laughs> which side was which? I was the budget in a hurry. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it had gone further, but you were probably thinking of the calories, weren't you? <laughs> Thirty-six percent of Brits think new age therapies are utter nonsense. True or false? Thirty-six percent. I'd say that's true. I can tell you the answer is true. Yes, yes thirty-six percent of Brits think new age therapies are utter nonsense. It's sad that they're so cynical, but it's probably just because their chakras are closed. <laughs> Sean, Vic, and Eamon, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. 
You may have met a few people who like doing this sort of thing. <laughs> and you've seen badly, but pretty hard. You have certainly seen thousands like this. They're not a nuisance. They're a real danger. Stop it! Come here. What do you think you're up to? You've probably infected thousands of people already. What do you think this is for? Close your eyes. Now, handkerchief, sneeze. Handkerchief, sneeze. See what I mean? That's the idea. Well, that was a public information film about sneezing etiquette. Here is your related statistic. 71% of people say that British manners are worse than they've ever been. True or false? Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what really upsets me is minicab drivers. You find out from minicabs, come to your house, and they hoot the horn outside yeah. your house. They don't come and knock, yeah. they hoot your horn. Yeah. And suddenly I just feel like I'm his girlfriend or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm actually sitting there in his car like... Yeah. And I'm thinking, don't who come and get me. <laughs> People who knock on the door once. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think, oh, oh that's nice. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Who does that? Many cab drivers. Do they? If they're not just outside honking the horn, they'll come in and go. <laughs> and you, what is that? There's a pan falling off the off the <laughs> sound or something. Joan, do you think we've got better manners than the Americans? Oh, I think so. Once in the last 21 years, a man opened a car door for me. Once. And we were on the motorway at the time. <laughs> 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 Had it with you, bitch. 71% <laughs> of people say that British manners are worse than they've ever been. Do you think that's true or false? Is it true? I can tell you that the answer is true. You. Yes, 71% of Brits think that manners have never been worse. The other day, I stood up for a pregnant woman on the bus. Well, I wasn't going to fight her sitting down. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's six points for Sean's team and three points for Dave's team. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Most depressing thing about getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's um, that you start to lose y your memory and Alzheimer's. Have I told you this already? <laughs> 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 I was at a family do um, and a while ago and I was in the bathroom and I was in the bathroom, shut the bathroom door and I went, what the f why am I, what am I doing in here? <laughs> I don't think I want the toilet. Do I want the toilet? No, I don't want the toilet. <laughs> maybe I'm washing my hands. Maybe that's maybe I've something in my teeth. No idea. And what they say is go back to the place you set off from. So back in the lounge. There you go, straight away. Uncle's having an heart attack. I've gone for his tablets. <laughs> it's also very easy getting down, but it's very hard getting up. Right. Which is why Clinton never slept with a girl over 30, because she <laughs> couldn't get out in time. <laughs> She'd be like, down there, here comes Hillary. I'm, I'm getting out. <laughs> The most depressing thing about getting older. Tatting at things. Just in, yeah. I tatted at a squirrel the other day. <laughs> what had the squirrel done? He tried to make a leap from, like... It was really silly. He was never going to do it. <laughs> it two trees and the branches <laughs> were, were so far apart. And he went up there and I thought, he's not going to try and do that, is he? <laughs> and he tried it and went... <laughs> <laughs> No-one's got the right answer yet. Is it yet. dying? Is it dying? Yeah. Look at your teammates and reconsider that answer. <laughs> Sex. All right. <laughs> is it illness? That's the great answer. Is it? <laughs> Most annoying thing about supermarkets. Is it the veg on entry? Never understood that. Why do they put the vegetables, all the vegetables and the fruit, first to go in? You haven't bought your meat or your fish yet, so you don't know what you're going to have with it, do you? <laughs> You kind of have to guess what meat they might have <laughs> by the appropriate vegetables to suit that meal that you don't even know you're going to have yet. you just got to <laughs> just dream, hope, for God's sake, they've got chops. 
because I've bought potatoes and I've bought some broccoli, and that goes with chops. If you've got no chops, I've got to go all the way back there. <laughs> word for word. Yeah. <laughs> Eamon, do you ever go to supermarkets anymore? Of course I do. You open them. <laughs> it's the, it's the, yeah, every it's... morning at six. <laughs> Cues. That is the correct answer, Sean. I'll tell you who I blame for the queues at supermarkets. Girls allowed. Yeah, there's a Morrison somewhere, five checkout girls short. <laughs> well, that sale tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Vic and Eamon have eight points, Dave, Joan and Holly have four points, so Sean Seam are the winners. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. We'll see you next month for our Big Brother special. Until then, good night. on the 8 out of 10 cats Big Brother special. Joining the show tonight, Big Brother's Big Mouth, Grace, Northern Delight, Jason Manford, and their Big Brother, Dave Spikey. And facing them tonight, Blonde Bombshell, Leah, Superfan, Don Jolly, and their Big Brother, Sean Locke. The extra special guests, Jade, Nadia, Mikey, Jean, Eugene, Shabazz, and here's your horse, Jimmy Carr. Hello and welcome to the 8 out of 10 Cats Big Brother special, a show about opinion polls, surveys, statistics and, of course, Big Brother. Did you know, for example, 50,000 people applied to be on Big Brother this year. Only 22 got in, but there's no wastage. The rest are ground down and served as sausages. <laughs> a high percentage of applicants are from Glasgow. They're not interested in the prize money. They just want to live in a house for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and throughout the world, there have been 114 Big Brother winners. 67 male, 46 female and Nadia. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories and events from this year's Big Brother they found the most memorable. It's our panellist's job to guess the top three talking points from Big Brother 7. Dave, Jason and Grace, what have people been talking about in Big Brother this year? Nikki's tantrums. I switched on the first time, she's in the diary room, I thought I'm watching Kids Say the Funniest Things. Where's Barrymore? <laughs> you want to have a little look at some of her finest oh, moments? That was brilliant, yeah. yeah. Let's have a look at some hissy fits. I'm not fucking dabbing there! <laughs> <laughs> Who is she? Super Nanny just go, <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> Did you never think I'll give her a slap? <laughs> 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 yeah, just a little one, like you kick the cat, like nonchalantly. <laughs> <laughs> She's a granny in a young body, but she doesn't mean no arm. <laughs> thanks for that, Jane. <laughs> also, thanks for not eating her. <laughs> they all did look a bit crazy when they walked in. It was like it looked like that uh, that bar out of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing missing was the funny music. Do do do. That's not Star Wars. Thanks, no. Shabazz. <laughs> <laughs> Appearing on the show. I have got to tell you, I actually. Shabazz, can you let Jimmy get on with his fucking <laughs> show, please? <laughs> I 
think I'm going to make Jade a prefect. <laughs> She's in charge of the special bus over there. <laughs> Seriously, I really do. I never get headaches. I've got a really bad headache. <laughs> <laughs> you Eugene doesn't get headaches. Why is that? I never get headaches. For some reason, I never get them. I sometimes get like a pain in my head, which oh, clears no. up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Sellafield works out in that. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Nikki is up there. <laughs> Yes, indeed, Nikki's tantrums were the most memorable thing about Big Brother this year. I don't want to be unkind to Nikki, I like her, but she has got a forehead like a Klingon taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, Sean Steen, what else have people been talking about? Grace chicken water on Susie. Was it people just presuming <clears throat> that Gracie was a little bit of a bitch in the house? <laughs> oh, no. Not here, obviously, you're lovely. But, uh, that's because yeah, she's sat here. Thank you. <laughs> 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 nice try. <laughs> Let's have a look at some of Grace's finest moments and judge for ourselves whether she is, in fact, a yes. massive bitch. <laughs> <laughs> She's a fucking stupid bitch, that fucking one there. It's fine, actually. I feel like I'm living with a golden retriever. She's a fucking boring... What fucking why is she here? She's old had her life. Her great big silicone chunky thunder thighs. Sorry. <laughs> oh, my oh. God! Okay. <laughs> How dare you! Why are you asking me, huh? Certainly no Lady Grace. Yeah, yeah. no, you yeah. is. Hey! 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 Let's be nice, she's our guest, but seriously. <laughs> you actually water in someone's face, you better know yourself. <laughs> okay. Pull my hands up, I do, bitch. But you know, I say what most 21 year old girls say sometimes. I think you're a really, really nice guy. I don't think there's anything the matter with you. I don't think you're that bitchy. Leah, she's a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey, do you think she's a bitch? No, she's not a bitch. She's a good girl. That Aww. is the correct answer. <laughs> she's my bitch. <laughs> she's <laughs> my bitch. <laughs> uh, I read that, uh, obviously, you're into Mikey, but you wouldn't take him home. Is that right? No, I never said that. If you read it, it's not true. Have you been to her place, yet? Not yet, no. All right. <laughs> sure, it'll come. Would you still throw that water if you had your time again? It wasn't premeditated. I just... I did it, so I can't say it, like... I'm not a barrister, but didn't you say to Alicia, I'm going to throw water in her face? <laughs> Two seconds before I was going to do it. I That's premeditation. Pre oh. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Let's have a look and see whether Grace's bitchiness is up there. <laughs> yes, Grace's behaviour was the third most talked about thing this year. On leaving the house, Grace got a call from Nuts magazine. <laughs> Shabazz got a call from Your Nuts magazine. <laughs> and Nadia got a call from No Nuts magazine. <laughs> Dave, what else have people been talking about? Is it Pete and Nikki's love? They're in love, aren't they? Should we check out this romance between Nikki and Pete? Mm. How would you define your relationship with Nikki? Oh, wow! Meow! Shh! Be quiet! <laughs> oh, I love her, I love her. Wow, I love her! I love Nikki! Ah! Oh, shit, I've got a date. I'm really smashed. <laughs> well, what, what do you make of it, Liz? Because you liked Pete, didn't you? She likes him. What? No, he's me late. I looked oh, at him. you liked him. No, I didn't. Because <laughs> <laughs> is in the audience. <laughs> you did like him a bit, though. You spent two weeks putting his head between your boobs. No, I did not. <laughs> we have the footage. <laughs> I have to say, I would like to be there when he meets Nikki's parents. Because that's going to be an interesting. You know, normally it's quite a nervous, quiet moment. I, don't, I think people. I think give Nikki has a handler hours. rather than parents. <laughs> <laughs> it's like falconry. She just lands on a glove behind <laughs> her. Just swings a bit of meat on. <laughs> Do you think it's going to last, Grace? Um, I don't know. Just uh, let's put those two in a room and let's just see what happens with that one. I well, haven't we, really we, got. We a... have done that for the last <laughs> 13 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can tell you that Pete and Nikki's love affair was not in our top three. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Nikki is madly in love with Pete and desperate for him to say those three little words. Meow, <whistles> wankers. <laughs> Sean Steen. <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> That's one. I'm sorry. Jane, were you not getting enough attention? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
back you of know my what it is? She's not, she's not in the front row. Me. Oh, sorry, Jane, Jane, it whacked the back of your head, did it? <laughs> what could it possibly have damaged there? <laughs> What else have people been talking about in Big Brother this year? Shabazz. I think we haven't talked about him for a bit and seeing him here. And... Let's have a look at some of Shabazz's hilarious antics. I love my mouth. Look at that. I mean, you can't buy lips like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've had these all my life. <laughs> Lovely, full... I mean, that, that is a Marilyn Monroe mouth. I love it. Oh, you're done with me. It's true, though, Shabazz has a Marilyn Monroe mouth. Just about three years after she died, sadly. <laughs> great name, Shabazz. Sounds like a magic spell, doesn't it? <laughs> Shabazz, poof! <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, surprisingly, Shabazz wasn't one of the top three talking points this year. Shabazz is now starring in a film. Well, it's not a film, it's CCTV footage from <laughs> Glasgow's Little. <laughs> When a recent boyfriend said, show me your nuts, Shabazz barked like a dog and did a poo in the bin. <laughs> OK, we're looking for one more thing. Fingers on buzzers. What else have people been talking about? Well, then, then robots came in. You know, and then robots <laughs> came in and they smashed all the walls. And now they had the laser eyes. And they made the jacuzzi boil up. Oh, and those giant <laughs> smashed the place to pieces. I'll check for you, Sean. Um, no. no. Oh. <laughs> Oh, not robots, oh, was lot going in again last week? No, People going in and they shouldn't be in when they've been out already yeah, when, when they're coming back again. It was possibly <laughs> the most complicated Big Brother there's ever been. I couldn't follow Even it. the people that said it was dumbing down TV couldn't follow it this yeah. year. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. You may now leave the dining room and move into the house next door. You have been chosen to return to the Big Brother house for the final week. <laughs> Look at her, look at her. Look at her. <laughs> oh, my bloody film. <laughs> she wouldn't make that noise if you stood on her face for an hour, would she? <laughs> yes, the evicted housemates returning to the Big Brother house there. Do you wish you'd gone back into the main house, Chris? No, I had my 21 minutes, didn't I, for my birthday. I, I got put back in there. Didn't you have a go at Ashley when you were Because it was my 21st and I wasn't going to waste my... 21 one. of these, come on! <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if evicted housemates returning to the house is up there. <laughs> yes, it is. People were talking about the evicted housemates returning to Big Brother. Mikey, Grace, Nikki and Leah, they're like the Fantastic Four in that there's four of them and... that's it. <laughs> At the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean's team have two points, Dave's team have one point. Oh. The next round is called the poll with a hole. Each statistic I give the teams is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to the panellists to fill in the gaps. 76% of Big Brother applicants want what? Is it the bed furthest away from Shabazz? <laughs> a brain. 76% of Big Brother applicants want a brain. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can tell you that that's the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. <laughs> It is a lower percentage than that. It's yeah. 25%. It's actually 33, Jimmy. Is it? Yes. What about Dorothy? there's a lion, a tin man. Well, what about Dorothy? Dorothy, she doesn't want anything. Yeah, she wants to go home. Yeah. I don't that's want to fight with you about the Wizard of Oz, no, that's... but I fucking will, she Sean, wants... and I'll win. <laughs> <laughs> I'll present her, yeah. What was that again? TV presenter. That's the correct answer. 19% yes. oh. oh. of women think that Grace is what? What do you think you are? What do you think 19% well, of women think you are? It's a low percentage, so it won't be bitch. That would be 90%. A range of shelving from Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a moose? It's not a moose. It's a shoe-in for the derby. <laughs> Is destined for the UN peacekeeping force. <laughs> In Lebanon. Just behind the Hezbollah going, and he said he got a fat ass. <laughs> What do you think, Mikey? What do you think 19% of, uh, of women think that Grace is? It's a low percentage, so something like a nice girl. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can I just ask, what's, what's your longest previous relationship? <laughs> you called you a bitch and said a low percentage, nice girl. <laughs> <laughs> you little charmer, you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you, Grace. 19% of women think that Grace is a good role model. 
<laughs> and if the role in question is the lead character in Jackie Collins' new novel, Sloney Bitch, I agree. 15% <laughs> of Big Brother viewers say that Leah reminds them of what? Bet Lynch. Yeah. No, the Bet Lynch came nowhere. <clears throat> Oh, God, tricky, isn't it, uh, sitting next to you and that? <laughs> <laughs> it's not something dead insulting, it's something, it's something really nice, actually. Oh, I know, boiler knees lagging. <laughs> <laughs> In a nice way. Is it that woman out of Charlie Greggs? <laughs> What's that? Greggs pasty shop in Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's someone very close to them. Mother. Even closer than their mother. Porn mag. Themselves. That's the correct answer. Oh. Themselves. Oh. Oh. That's a nice thing, isn't it? That's good. So at the end of that round, it's three points for Sean, Leah, and Dom, and four points for Dave, Grace, and Jason. <laughs> Our next round is Face Off. We've got six well known Big Brother contestants here in the studio Nadia, Jade, Shabazz, Eugene, Jane, and Mikey. OK. We asked the public which of these housemates would make the best James Bond. Nadia, master of disguise. <laughs> you know, I have to say, my dream come true would be to be a, a buddy in the James Bond movie, so I can take it. I would love to be. Octopussy. <laughs> Octococky. <laughs> what, about, what about Jade in Doctor No Idea? Yeah. <laughs> Eugene's your gadget, man, isn't he? Yeah. Now, Eugene's yeah. Q, he's not Bond. Oh, yeah, yeah, he'd be like, <laughs> see this? It looks like a machine gun, but actually, it's a radio. <laughs> <laughs> this is an atomic watch, but when you turn it off, it tells the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your favourite Bond gadget, Eugene? I seem to remember there was the watch, as you said, the watch, which had all the gadgets <laughs> in it, and it had the bomb in it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to go for, Dave? I saw Jane. Well, there's only one who looks a bit like a James Bond, isn't there? Mikey looks like James Bond, doesn't he? Yeah. You You're going him. with Mikey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who would you go with? Uh, we'd go for Eugene, I think, Jimmy. I think he would make a less than adequate Bond, <laughs> which is the best that we can hope for. <laughs> would you kill for your country? Yeah. I would. The only problem is I'd probably be late. <laughs> why, why would you be late? <laughs> My timekeeping's appalling. You've got an atomic watch, man! <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you that you're right. The housemate people thought would make the best bond is Eugene. Oh, hey. Woo! <laughs> we asked the public, which of these housemates would you most like to go on holiday with? Who do you think, out of that motley crew, got the most votes? Hey, surely there should be a like, prefix to that, like, if you had to. <laughs> um, I'd like to see how Shabazz reacts to turbulence in flight. <laughs> <laughs> Jade, where's your favourite holiday destination? Dubai. Where? Dubai. Where's that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice though, is it? Yeah. I just go to new places. I'm, at the end of the day, I don't want to be a geography teacher, so I don't have to know. Quite right. <laughs> so, it's such a great shame you don't want to be a geography teacher, though, because <laughs> yeah. children are missing out on yeah. what would be a hilarious education. <laughs> Eugene, have you ever been to Vegas? Vegas? Las Vegas. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> have you seen the film Rain Man? Yes. Okay. I think we could make a lot of money. <laughs> OK, which housemate would you most likely go on holiday with? Jade and, and Jane as well. Okay, so you, Jade and Jane, yeah. on holiday together? Oh, yeah. That is a Channel 5 programme and you know it. <laughs> what would we call it, though? Uh, Armageddon? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to force you to guess now. Jade. You're going to go for Jade, are you? Yeah. Dave's team? Well, if it was Safari, Shabazz, <laughs> that'd be a laugh. <laughs> Look at the lion! Look at the lion! <laughs> I'm going to hide its food! Yeah, you do that. <laughs> He is his food. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to go on holiday with Nadia? Yeah, I could borrow her shoes. Ah! Oh. shoes. <laughs> You'd like to go on holiday with Nadia? No, Simply I said... Because she's sitting I'm, next to no, Mikey. <laughs> I've been on holiday with Mikey, so I went Have on the weekend, you? so, yeah. Who for? Hello or OK? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, who for? No one, for myself. And What's who? the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> you had a photographer with you? No. What's the point of that? <laughs> go on, what's your final guess? Shabazz. You're going to go for Shabazz. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that Shabazz, 8% of the public wanted to go on holiday with Shabazz. Shabazz. <laughs> or, more accurately, filled out the form incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> the top answer was Jade, so you get the points. 35% of the population want to go on holiday with Jade. Jade recently said, I'm sick of the paparazzi, so she's having a deep pan, ham and pineapple instead. <laughs>
I'd, I'd love to go on holiday with Jade because she's got her own perfume, haven't you? You've got your own perfume? Yeah. Because you could bring lots of that perfume and I'm sure it would keep the mozzies away. <laughs> oh, he found sold out every single shop he was in, thanks very much. Sold out or shoplifted? <laughs> Your target market is Shabazz. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Oh. Who <laughs> outselling J Lo, I believe, and Paris Hilton? And Beckham and Beyonce and Britney. Anyone else? <laughs> All those other great perfumiers. <laughs> <laughs> Chuckle Brothers, they're right. <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette. Jeanette. Oh, oh, oh. Jeanette. To you, to me, to you, to me. <laughs> I would strongly recommend it, especially because you can't legally buy mace in this country. What's mace? It's by Lonthric. I think you'd enjoy it. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's five points for Sean's team and four points to Dave's team. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls based on Big Brother, and it's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Okay, the first one. Most annoying habit a housemate could have. I think the general standards of manners are terrible. I mean, I've, a lot of them, I've seen them eating with their elbows on the table. Somebody was uh, using a dessert spoon for soup. No. <laughs> <laughs> I believe Mikey wore a cummerbund at breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Is it I all think... the, um, the burping and farting and stuff like Jane? I, go at Jane. <laughs> I can tell you that far farting and burping is number three on the list. Who don't do that, though? Not being funny accidentally. Who doesn't do that? Yeah. <laughs> Is it insisting that everybody calls you by a stupid nickname? Like Spiral or Bubble or... <laughs> Ashleen. It's not Ashleen. <laughs> it's Eileen. That's what it is. <laughs> Mother couldn't spell for shit. I'll no, give you a clue. It's hygiene related. Oh, body order then. B.O. B.O. I'll give you that, yeah. It's not washing. Thank you. Yes, the most annoying habit a housemate could have oh, is not washing. Not having... Others on the list are eating all the food, farting and burping, always shouting and waking people up, or, as it's known collectively, being Jane. <laughs> <laughs> most emotional housemate ever. Nicky. Why did you say that? <laughs> You're absolutely right. Oh, oh. Of course you've got it. Oh, you can oh, it anyway. <laughs> Yes, the most emotional housemate ever is That's Nikki. Right. This is when her MP3 player didn't work. Oh, I... <laughs> I love this song. This is Big Brother. Would Nikki come to the bar? Oh, I think it's cool. Most common audition piece at Big Brother auditions. I didn't realise they had auditions. I thought like a dog catcher went out. And <laughs> <laughs> so who was barking, barking on the seat? Oh, no, 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 get in, man. You're in, Big Brother. Big neck. <laughs> Is it something from Hamlet? <laughs> <laughs> what the blowjob scene? <laughs> Is it someone just going to camera? Oh, mad me, I fight with people all the time and I have sex all the time and I'm not bothered at all, I'll just fight about anything and then when they get in there, just drink tea and have weird tits. <laughs> or is they it... always, always say, I'm like Mama, you either love me or hate me. What did you say? You just hate me. <laughs> <laughs> is it juggle with one potato? <laughs> 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 Do you know what? I'm going to tell you. Yeah, yeah. The most common audition piece at Big Brother auditions is telling a joke. For example, oh. what's black and white and red all over? Sam. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sound tells me that it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean's team have six points, Dave's team have six points. Oh. It's a dead heat. Oh. Everyone's a winner. Oh. Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. We'll be back in the autumn. See you then. Good night. <laughs>
Princess, Nikki Graham. And their captain, John Locke. And facing them tonight, the Boy Wonder, it's Boy George. The Mac is back, Lee Mack. And their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Pye. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, scientists say the elephant is the only mammal that can't jump? What, Stephen Hawking isn't a mammal? <laughs> Only a quarter of Brits consider themselves to be lucky, and they're the lucky ones. <laughs> a cockroach can live for a whole week without a head. Beat that, Heather Mills. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation <coughs> and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean, Nicky, Rich, what have the nation been talking about this week? Jimmy, <laughs> turtles can't jump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just wanted to go back to a point you made. Uh, uh, turtles don't jump. They do if you throw them on a trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> I think people have probably been talking about Madonna adopting a baby in Africa. Uh, she's adopted a baby, it's caused a lot of fuss. Well, he has kind of won the orphanage lottery, hasn't he? <laughs> Imagine if they had a regular lottery in the or orphanage, they had scratch cards, they went, oh, you're going to be saved by Madonna. <laughs> he should have been disqualified yeah. early because he wasn't an orphan. It was like an African orphan idol. <laughs> she noted into the last 12, she went over for the final, which was this last week. <laughs> It was some sort of contest, like a Bonnie Baby contest, went to the local Woolworths in Malawi, had the pictures taken all that. <laughs> but he should have been disqualified because he's not an orphan. The kid's it not It does an orphan. seem weird that he's got a dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he said in the press that the, the saddest thing about it is the fact that he's going to be in the papers every day. So that Madonna and Guy won't get the luxury that other adoptive parents have, which is to tell him exactly what happened in their own time. But I can't help thinking from a very early age he's going to realise, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> get to like 10 or 11 and go, uh, listen, something's not right here. <laughs> Mum, Dad, two questions. One, are you my real parents? And two, how come there's no mirrors in this house? <laughs> I thought it was quite funny. She bought him a £5,000 rocking horse. I'd really like to see that comic relief appeal with it. Just £5,000 and get a rocking horse for a child in Africa. <laughs> the other thing she did was she decorated his room in a jungle style. <laughs> it's true, that's a questionable taste, I think. Why does she just adopt like uh, 60,000 orphan kids and then she's total sellout wherever she goes? <laughs> that is thinking, Rich. They don't know that American Pie is a fucking cover. <laughs> You're still angry about American Pie? <laughs> I was angry about it the first time I heard it. <laughs> I need her to trot it out again 20 years later. <laughs> All 73 verses. But I'll tell you something else. Snakes can't jump. <laughs> Madonna can't sing. Madonna can't sing. <laughs> Nikki, what do you think of Madonna? She's a bit high maintenance. I like her, but to be honest, a whole week's news on her adopting the child. Oh. Who cares? <laughs> God, you're a big brother. <laughs> So were you looking for more news about what was going on in Kazakhstan this week? I'm not getting the bottom of this, just Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. <laughs> but you've managed to get more attention than Madonna in a very short space of time, so you're more fabulous. Oh, thanks, boy George. I thought, you know, her performance at Live 8 was when she was swearing. I thought, well, that's not a very good, you know, example to set to your kids, because she actually showed it at Live 8, she went on the stage and said, are you fucking ready? I think, that's what she's going to be like on the school run. <laughs> <laughs> are you fucking ready, lords? <laughs> No, she's, she's, <laughs> she's, she's an English lady now. She's an English lady. Yeah. She's fooling no one. To the fellow, Jimmy, don't you claim to be Irish? <laughs> I don't claim, I try and hide it, mate. How dare you? Huh? I'm Irish. I'm about as Irish as you. I'm more Irish than you'll ever be. What? What? Well, go on then. <laughs> <laughs> I will get a gun down a buck, but I share the hell. I try to fuck a little shit about the love. Pogue he... Mahone. Yeah. <laughs> it's my house is love. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, let's have a look and see if Madonna's adoption is one of the most talked about things this week. 
Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, Madonna's caused controversy by adopting a baby from Africa. The baby's father described the adoption as a blessing from God, although the exact translation of the Malawi is the fucking jackpot get in. <laughs> Dave, Paul, George, Lee, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Could it possibly be uh, the allegations that Heather Mills McCartney has made in the divorce papers saying that Sir Paul was cruel to her? Every night she has to go to bed to go to the toilet and she has to crawl because he won't allow her a bedpan. <laughs> he said he didn't want a bedpan in the bedroom because it was like, it was like a, an old people's home. <laughs> it is an old people's home. <laughs> 64. Just don't explain it to her, Sean, if she doesn't get it. <laughs> Heather's only got one leg. I don't know why I'm Shit. shouting it. <laughs> Sorry, Nikki, you, you know who Heather Mills is, yeah? I don't know. I know she's married to Paul McCartney. I wasn't aware she only had one leg. Where have you been? <laughs> she's been in a house. Someone told me. We should do something to get the public sympathy back in her favour. Maybe a parrot. <laughs> well, I think people would warm to her if she had a parrot. <laughs> Proper job. Go to Vegas, work at Treasure Island. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Heather Mills allegations are one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, newspapers have reported Heather Mills allegations that Paul McCartney hit her. Heather is going through a very rough time at the moment, and if she were here, I would tell her, time heals all wounds. <laughs> well, not that, you'd have to be a starfish. <laughs> uh, in other divorce news this week, Stephen Hawking is leaving his wife. Hawking's marriage lasted 11 years before the wheels came off. Jimmy, can I stop you a second? Nicky, he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. Thanks. Sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> Do you know who Stephen Hawking is? <laughs> <laughs> he's sort of the cleverest man in the world, but he's, he's kind of confined to a wheelchair. <laughs> Most people that come on the show have a really good time. It's really, it's a fun thing. It's great, but you're learning so much. It's an That's extra element. like being a school for me. <laughs> right, Sean, Nicky and Rich, what else have people been talking about this week? Oh! Post offices closing down. <laughs> Small post offices. Do you know what a post office is? My mum's a postie, I'll have you know. <laughs> One of those little yellow square pieces of paper. <laughs> I think the postmasters deliver a petition with four million names on it yeah. to 10 Downing Street. I like the fact that they deliver it, hand delivered it because they don't trust the postal service. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What I think they should do is what they do with libraries. They have mobile, like they have mobile post offices. And they can be like ice cream vans. And they drive around and they play some music to attract old people. <laughs> like, we'll meet again, like... <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> ding, ding, <laughs> ding. Ding, ding. <laughs> yes, like, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, just about a minute behind. And <laughs> I, I just really hope that when these postal workers, when they went to Downing Street, there was a thousand of them, I really hope there was just one person serving at Downing Street and they had to make a big long queue. <laughs> and it said, like, protester number three, please! <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether post offices are up there. Uh, They've seen what else have the nation be talking about? I love this um, great story that apparently David Blunkett once told um, a police <laughs> governor to machine gun the prisoners. <laughs> I think that's great. He, he thinks our warders have machine guns. He's, he's, he's blind. Better tell Nicky. Uh, <laughs> Blow the gap. Yeah. <laughs> Nicky. He's what? blind and he's got a dog. And the dog oh, you're him. winding me up. <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> talk about tonight is afflicted in some yes. <laughs> Well, as it happens, yeah. It's different people, though. It's not the one person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me more. Tell me more about Blunkets. Get, so, yeah, there was, I don't know. There was this riot, and he phoned the governor, and they said they got their home secretary on the phone for you, and he said, a riot, and he went, oh, machine gun them. And, and he obviously went, are you pissed? <laughs> no, machine gun them. He could have just pretended to do it, because Blunkett wouldn't have known, would he? He could have gone, <laughs> <laughs> There you go, all dead, all of them. It's like a holiday camp prison. <laughs> no, it ain't. It is. <laughs> when you were in Big Brother and they didn't have bottled water, you went mental. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even have a jacuzzi, many of these places. I didn't go in the jacuzzi because it was filth ridden. Well, fair enough then, maybe <laughs> you'd be fine in prison. This <laughs> <laughs> is the same week that we find out that prisoners are being paid to play board games. I mean, I was in prison once and I uh, played Scrabble, I nearly got bummed. Um, <laughs> but I only had one M. Only 
let's have a look and see if Blunkett's up there. <laughs> yes, it's been revealed that David Blunkett ordered prison chiefs to machine gun rioters in 2002. Luckily, he was shouting into a stapler. <laughs> One more to get fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it anything to do with this teacher who uh, refused to remove her veil and was suspended? So why, why do you need to sit? Leave her alone. Why, why do you have to just... That's enough, isn't it? But the thing was, she, she doesn't wear it when the kid's in the room. She only wears it when a male comes into the room. So she goes, she'll have it off, and like that bloke will come in, she goes, whoop. <laughs> and then he'll go out, she goes, whoop. <laughs> in and out. She should just get, like, a Venetian blind. <laughs> 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 Problem solved. It'd be quite handy them veils if you were talking to somebody who you didn't like, who you thought were an idiot. But you can put on like that and your eyes would be going like that and, you, and your face would be going like, <laughs> Is that what Jack Straw's really worried about? <laughs> yeah. That everyone that comes to visit him is going, uh ah. <laughs> You're an idiot, Jack Straw. Uh Nicky, <laughs> Jack Straw is a, a headless politician. Yeah. Oh, goodness sake. Got no Made head. <laughs> Made of straw. <laughs> the next one's going to be an exhumed corpse. <laughs> she done a funny. <laughs> Mind you, you can't walk round Mecca in a tutu, can you? That sounds like an old Cockney song. You can't walk round Mecca in a tutu. <laughs> you can't wear a skirt to walk around Mecca, but you could dress up as a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> or, um... Well, that's the, that's the group that we really haven't heard much from in this whole yeah. debate. Yeah. The ninjas haven't said anything. Yeah. Right, let's have a look and see whether veils are up there. <laughs> yes, this week, the Muslim teacher suspended for wearing a veil received a lot of support. She was delighted, or surprised, or touched. It's hard to tell. <laughs> At the end of that round, Sean's team have two points. Dave's team are in the lead with three points. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. 5% of Brits would like to see David and Victoria Beckham what? What about penniless? <laughs> <laughs> is it part of the peacekeeping force in Basra? <laughs> Ask forgiveness from Christ. <laughs> <laughs> No, live a week in a third world country. Well, you, do you know what? I'm, I'm tempted to give you that. That's dangerously close to the correct answer. It's well, to do I with never. that. It's to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, no one was expecting you to be <laughs> right. <laughs> UN ambassadors. That's the correct there answer. Yes, 5% of Brits would like to see David and Victoria Beckham become UN ambassadors. Personally, I don't think Victoria should be sent to visit starving people. They've got enough problems without feeling fat. <laughs> OK, 68% of chess players think chess would be more popular if what? If the game wasn't so bloody damn boring. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll bet when they were asked that question, it took them 45 fucking minutes to figure up an answer. <laughs> I've always liked the big chess that you get. I think if they were really big, they were really massive, and you had to use a crane to play. Yeah. The world champion was a crane driver from Catford called Big Rod. <laughs> Maybe if it was a cross-country event. How do you mean, Rich? You know, move a piece, run ten miles. <laughs> move another piece, run another ten miles. <laughs> oh, check me. Yeah, it's a great idea. I'm with Rich on that. <laughs> well, you had some shouts. You know, when you moved, you had some calls. Like, you know, in football, people shout and scream. When you moved, you went, Yeah, I'm gonna get you, boy! <laughs> I've only had two chess games in my life. I bet I you know. didn't win then. I lost. Did you lose both of them? Yes. Really? <laughs> Did you have trouble getting the pieces over the net? Very hilarious. I almost fell off my chair laughing. <laughs> oh, Mickey Graham, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be you right about now, Sean. <laughs> That's my career over. <laughs> if it was easier. That's the right answer, Sean. If it was easier. Yeah, that's what... Yes. 68% of chess players think chess would be more popular if it was easier. I think chess is easy. There's only two things you have to remember. Don't use the St Petersburg gambit against the Brandenburg opening and the horsey go jumpy jump. <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's three points for Sean, Nicky and Rich and four points for Dave, Lee and George. 
Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement and all they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Sean, Nicky and Rich, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. And let's make act number six, dancer Todd Rickson. You've done it, have you? Yeah. Oh, I think he's done a hamstring there, you're right. <laughs> enough, mate. The bit after he snaps his hamstring is how I dance normally. <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 16% of talent show applicants say they would be prepared to lose a finger for a shot at fame. Is that true or false? Is that an actual question that you would ask a talent show applicant? I think it's halfway it. through the rack. Who just go, I'll just chop your finger off. Do something. <laughs> I'd do it. What I'd do is I'd chop it off and stick like that and put the finger out my ear like that. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> or, or you could wrap it around your neck and use it to point at things. <laughs> <laughs> it's just around the corner, just over there. On the outside of the X Factor auditions, though, going down the back, <laughs> blow with a big bag, going, fingers, the fingers, <laughs> fingers, come on, you, just bend in that. Fingers. Do <laughs> you know it's illegal to chop your finger off? Because it means you're not fit for military service. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> How did you come across that nugget of information? People tell me things and they stay in. Did you hear that, Nikki? Yeah. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> of course you weren't. Do you think it's an escalating scale of what, you, what limbs you have to lose to gain a certain degree of fame? Like Heather McCartney. She lost the whole leg. Did but she made a fortune. <laughs> What's his name? Lost his eyesight. Blunkett. <laughs> These are all things Nikki learned in part one. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? 16% of talent show applicants say they would be prepared to lose a finger for a shot at fame. True or false? False. OK, I can tell you that the answer is in fact true. Oh. Shit. All right, calm well down. Done. <laughs> it's not a lot of people, though, is it? No, well, I mean, it's quite mental, isn't it? 16% would go, yeah, I'll have a finger off just to sing for Simon Cow. Of course, once they've done it, they'll have to tend to fuck off like this. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, George and Lee, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Ring My Bell is the show in which you, the viewer, get to do the talking. Qualified receptionists are right here to take your call and put you through to either Arthur Scargill, Boy George, Barbara Windsor, or Tony James, the founder of Zig Zig Sputnik. Let's go for a quick booth hop just to show you how this extravaganza works. Half a buttock and one right boob. Hey, did you, did, 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 did you show that right boob? I didn't see yes, that Yes, right. just, just, you got to, you got to look very quickly. You oh, bleed God, you miss it. Was, 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 was that in the one with, with the um, toothpaste? What? No, that was camping. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. Anyway, you take care. Oh, you bet I will oh, I do. Oh, love. God bless you, Love darling. to see your tits. Bye, love. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> love to see your tits. Bye. <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Is that true or false? Bollocks. <laughs> well, they can't find my details. I give me customer reference. I give them my dates, my postcode, my blood group. They can't find fuck all. Oh, the people that do the cold calling, you know, that ring you, I think that helps the love life, cos I always say, go and get fucked. <laughs> but some people do sound more sexy on the phone. Yeah, often people phone me up and they say, can we interest you in double glazing? Like, no, but you can certainly take me out to dinner. <laughs> Have you ever had phone sex? Fantastic. Yeah. I like the fact you know when the call's over. <laughs> and your mum walks in the room. Yeah. <laughs> she can't walk in the room, she's on the phone. <laughs> you know, in America, all the sex lines start with 900. And uh, the, the area code for Western Tennessee is 901. So you must get a lot of people in Western Tennessee just getting a misstyled call. What am I wearing? Overalls. <laughs> <laughs> My daddy's right here. Earl, it's for you. <laughs> All right. 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Is that true or false? No, I think yes. We think yes. We, we think, think it's yeah, probably right. true. Okay. I can tell you that the answer is true. 
Yes. Yes, 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Call centres are weird things. Yeah, I need to go from Coventry to Ipswich on Saturday. I better call someone in Bangladesh. They'll know. <laughs> <laughs> So at the end of that round, it's three points for Sean's team and five points for Dave's team. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to be giving the teams a series of opinion polls and surveys. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Top thing that annoys women. Is it when you get really drunk and piss in the wardrobe in the middle of the night? <laughs> when you wipe your knob on the curtains. Nikki, what, what annoys you? To be honest, I'm not a good person to ask, cos everything... <laughs> 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 what annoys my wife, and women, I think, in general, is... They, they say, what pair of shoes out of the 27 pairs you've got goes with this skirt? As if you're a fucking expert on shoes. <laughs> yeah, the problem is, Dave, is your wife's shoes all stink of piss. <laughs> <laughs> It annoys women. It's when you put a new toilet roll on a toilet roll holder and you make the paper come off near the wall oh. instead of like away from yeah. the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. It's really apparent. What do you do that for? He's got, he's got brushed knuckles on the wall now. <laughs> you were very close, Sean. Take the last piece and you don't think, ah, oh, shit, no. You stick that last piece back on, don't you? That one. <laughs> put that one back on, then it doesn't look as though I've used the whole loo roller. That's great. She's got to change it. That's the correct answer. Yes, the top thing that annoys women is finishing the last loo roll. Here's one for you. Top reason to celebrate. You found some booze. <laughs> yeah. Hey! Didn't know I had this. <laughs> Rich, what do you celebrate? Not being Canadian. <laughs> oh, I know! Jesus Christ, don't do that! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, quite a life out of me. It's a funeral. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> no, I tell you Unbelievable. Why. Do you only go to funerals of people you don't like? <laughs> I've been to one. <laughs> I've never been invited back. <laughs> well, <it's laughs> invited. <laughs> they have two funerals. <laughs> oh, I've been to one funeral. I didn't get invited back. <laughs> <laughs> So same job again next year, then. <laughs> <laughs> An engagement. That's a correct answer. Right. Yes, the top reason to celebrate is an engagement. Second on the list is discovering that the kid's not yours and you don't have to marry the slag. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Nikki, and Rich have five points, but the winners are Dave, George and Lee with six points. to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. in the north, Jason Manford, and their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, here's your host, Jimmy Carr. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys, and statistics. Did you know, for example, a giraffe can clean its own ears with its 21-inch long tongue, although Mrs. Giraffe has got other plans for this evening. 3% <laughs> of Brits never leave a tip. And they're known as the weirdos that live at the tip. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was less like a laugh, that was more like a rumour going around the room. <laughs> Have you heard about the people at the tip? <laughs> 
and you've got a 1 in 20,000 chance of being murdered in the UK. We don't know what the figure is for Iraq. We sent a guy over there to do the survey, and he hasn't come back. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panel's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave, Pierce, Jason, what have the nation been talking about this week? Is it more revelations in the McCartney divorce proceedings? All <laughs> that business rumbles oh, on, doesn't I'll it? i tell you what, I wouldn't want to be the fellow that introduced them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I introduced Heather Mills to Paul McCartney. Why? Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what he's asking. She's, don't you think she's awful, Heather Mills? Now, I actually oh, yeah. quite stick up for her, but it's awful, isn't it? Yeah. But he's Paul McCartney. You know, he wrote yesterday. She's Heather Mills. And today, a... and he'll probably write tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he's a relentless worker. <laughs> I think, though, well, I think the obvious thing, though, is, is that mostly when you meet a very beautiful woman, you assume there's a catch. There must be a catch. It can't be this good. And he thought the catch was the leg. Oh, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but she's incredibly unpopular for someone with one leg. She's virtually, it's like Blunkett, isn't it? He's blind. You think people like him. Everyone thinks he's a prick. <laughs> You, you don't like her, do you? I used to stand up for her. People used to say, why? And now you think, why? Well, because she know? couldn't stand up but, herself, right? But, but, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but when you think about it, she hasn't really done anything. What she's people greedy. forget, she's, we're all greedy. She's greedy. She had yeah. to hump that old man. He smells like dust. Aww. <laughs> right? This would never have happened to the Stones. None of the Stones would have ever married a one-legged nutter. <laughs> <laughs> The one thing he said was, yeah. she threw a bottle of ketchup That's at him. Right. And he's still not got it out of his hair, has he? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that, I like the way even celebrities can't have an argument without doing some product placement. You know, it's like, oh, he threw some <laughs> Heinz ketchup at me, <laughs> and then he put some Marmite bottles in a sock and hit me over the head, <laughs> tried to choke me with Jaffa cakes and sprayed Jiff in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I someone said the other day, who gets the leg? Because... No, more importantly, who gets a disabled parking voucher? Well... <laughs> That's worth ten million. <laughs> We're all polling here. Who's with Heather? <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. Uh, well, let's have a look and see whether Paul McCartney is up there. Yes, the McCartney divorce is getting increasingly bitter. Heather Mills has denied she's a fantasist in a statement released by her lawyer, Rumpole of the Bailey. <laughs> Right, Sean, Kirsty, and Scott, what else have the nation been talking about this week? I think they've been talking about John Reid's come out tough again. He's tough on, now he's tough on immigration. He's going to restrict the amount of Romanians and Bulgarians that can come here to work. Basically, loads of people, loads of Polish people came over here two or three years ago and are doing, you know, doing all the jobs like cleaning and yeah, building. They're giving, they're giving British labourers a bad name, aren't they? Because they're efficient, on time, <laughs> cheap. <laughs> Polite. It's a disgrace. They, they should all be sent home. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> they can have a thousand pound fine, aren't they, for any Bulgarians caught working? Well, all they have to do is put on a posh accent, don't they? They learn to speak very posh English. You say, Are you Bulgarian? Of course I'm not. Don't be so ridiculous, man. <laughs> How do you think I got this job? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you. I, I only employ Eastern Europeans if I can possibly do so because they just do the job and work hard. Do you run a brothel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look and see if this is one of the most talked about things of the week? <laughs> hey! And yes, indeed it is. Right, Dave's team, what else have the nation been talking about this week? I think it's probably the news that the Allied forces are considering a timetable for withdrawal of troops from Iraq. Because we've sorted it, isn't it? It's all right, no? <laughs> we went in as liberators, they, they assured us. Liberate the Iraqi people, kill hundreds of thousands of them, Cause complete mayhem in their country. It's almost as if this war has done you some sort of personal ill. I got fired over it, all right? I'm pretty bitter about it. Uh, I think we should leave because the whole story's gotten so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to just get in there and whoosh and raise the roof and bring in some hip hop and leave. But that's, 
so messy, you know. All the language they use, that like, we're leaving Iraq, like it's some sort of relationship. Oh, it, it's, it's not you, it's me, you know. I, mean, I, I love you, but I'm just not in love with you, you know. I, I just think it'd be a great way of, uh, you know, of, of leaving your girlfriend. I mean, obviously, you'd have to hide that 12 to 18 month timetable. <laughs> uh, you'd have to be like, oh, it's routine. Uh, but I think that'd be great. Obviously, she'd see it and go, oh, what's this in May? You're going to start acting like a dickhead, so I leave you. All right. Uh, <laughs> and then the question, of course, is uh, just when you invade her sister. I mean, Iran. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we saw in George W. Bush's eyes when he sort of spoke over the last couple of days. I don't think he knows what's going on. I don't think he's happening. got the attention span for a war no. this long. No, I think you're up. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have a look and see if Iraq is one of the most talked about things this week. Yes, it is. Yes, this is the story that British and American forces are under increasing pressure to leave Iraq. Blair denied he was clutching at straws as he launched Operation Straw Clutch. <laughs> Sean's team, uh, what else have people been talking about this week in the news? Is it the news the NHS are going to refuse to treat smokers unless they give up smoking? Which is uh, uh, obviously a thin end of the wedge situation. You know, if you've got gunshot wounds, they'll ask you to leave the Mafia. Like, if you're a Top Gear presenter and you can't control a jet car, <laughs> they'll say, no more petrol for you, <laughs> you idiot. Am I the only one who wishes it was Jeremy Clarkson? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Just because he hit you once, don't cry. <laughs> he hit me three times and it didn't hurt, all right? Did he hit you three times? Because it was a... What, what was that at? That's the scar there. Is that the, the, you've um, got a scar? It, yeah, and um, we kept running stories on the mirror about him cavorting with women who weren't Mrs Clarkson. And eventually he cornered me at the British Press Awards and smacked me three times in the head. Oh. And uh, after the third one, I went, is that...? That got a smattering of applause. Well done. Well done, Jeremy. Well, ironically, really, because I, I didn't hit him back because I thought I'd be sacked. And then three weeks later, I was sacked anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, I like the, this idea that they're going to refuse smokers' uh, operations. And a few weeks back, it was uh, fat people, anybody who's obese or fat. No, don't take it personally, mate. All right, no, that's all right. <laughs> There's a reason you get punched. Jotting <laughs> <laughs> that down, my friend. So, Piers, do you think the NHS should treat people that smoke? Uh, no. People that smoke should just be shot. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, why not? Uh, oh, well, 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 hang on. That, that's, a, that's a vote for a police state. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it, it would make smoking a lot more exciting. Exactly. <laughs> I tell you, sales of mints would go through the fucking roof. <laughs> I can tell you the NHS not treating smokers is not one of the top five stories okay. this week, but what? it was in the papers. OK, fingers on buzzers. Uh, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it uh, Wayne Rooney and his new uh, £100,000 mega deal with Manchester United? I love the way that every time Wayne Rooney gets a new deal, we see a picture within 24 hours of Colleen yeah. grinning her head off with 27 <laughs> bags of shopping. <laughs> I've got to say, she's earned it. Yeah. <laughs> But the, the problem with these deals is they, that, that they're not launches all these people going, oh, they get paid too much. Uh, but, and then the footballers counter up by saying, yeah, but the fans, they're always shouting nasty things at me. And you're like, for 100 grand a week, I'd stay in the middle of the pitch at Wembley for two weeks and let you shout nasty things at me. <laughs> but you're not bad. Yeah, I don't know. One, no. two, three. <laughs> Hello, can I get an account balance, please? Your mum's a knobhead, yeah, but you should see her house. <laughs> <laughs> she bought him a £30,000 watch for his birthday and a Louis Vuitton man bag and a gold set from Argos. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You can take the girl out of Liverpool, but you can't get the catalogue off her, can you? <laughs> she also got him a picture of Robbie Williams' arse. <laughs> He's, a, he's, doing a, he's doing a Mooney, yeah. and there's a danger that he'll mistake it for a mirror, yeah. isn't there? <laughs> I thought it was a portrait, because the eye kept following him around the room. Wow. <laughs> she got all these brilliant people, Mike Tyson, to sign things, you two, and Blue. <laughs> They're not even together, are they? A Blue not together? <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. Oh, what a way to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Wayne Rooney's up there. Yes, it is. Yes. Wayne Rooney turned 21 this week. He received an Aston Martin, priceless sporting memorabilia and a £30,000 watch. I tell you what, though, he would have been happier with a tyre and a rope. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one more thing to guess. Fingers on buzzers. What else? Sean. Is it the uh, Richmond Council's decision to charge four-by-fours 
lots of money to park. Tell me more about this. What do you think of it? I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't live in London. Yeah. <laughs> and I like it. You like it? Yes. Well, that's fine, then. <laughs> they're the most privileged people in society, usually people who have four-by-fours, and then suddenly they're a victim. It's like, why are they picking on me? <laughs> Just because I've got a four-by-four. Four. I think it should be more. It should be a thousand pounds. <gasps> Fuck them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. You, but the, you get let off the fine and all that, but they're encouraging these electric cars. Tell me again, how do you make electricity? It's not exactly a clean fuel, is it? The way they make electricity, those big power stations, there's thousands of blokes with full heads of hair and balloons going like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just thousands of them. Dwarves. It's funny about dwarves. Thousands of dwarves. <laughs> balloons. <laughs> I think they should call it, um, you know, they've got names for these taxis that they, that they put in. They should just call it the wanker tax. Oh. And, uh, That's a bit hard. I know. They, they should right, put fat boy, easy. <laughs> That's two, two nil, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm defending the pregnant lady. I started it. <laughs> no, I, like, I like the fat guy. Go on. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a pub car park. <laughs> Leave it, it's not worth it. Dude. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the new 4x4 tax is one of the most talked about things. Mm. Yes, it is. OK, well, I can tell you, at the end of that round, Sean's team have two points, Dave's team have three points. Ooh. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. Here's your first question. 17% of church leaders think if Jesus came back to Earth now, he would what? Be very old. <laughs> he definitely points out that the Da Vinci Code is a load of bollocks. <laughs> I didn't marry Mary Magdalene. Moved to France. I hate France. <laughs> I think he'd be a bit too soapboxy. A little know it all y. Don't you think? No. Oh. <laughs> Clear what you're on about, Scott. <laughs> Do you think if he came back, he would be sectioned on the first day? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Jesus Christ. Right, come with us. <laughs> uh, have a nice cup of tea and a sit down. <laughs> Who's right. to say I haven't come back? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, that is an exclusive. Of course, claiming to be Jesus is quite insulting to the Christians, but it doesn't really matter. They don't take it that seriously. <laughs> they're, they're probably out there now thinking, if I get hold of that Sean Locke, I'm going to bloody well forgive him. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a clue on this one. It's, uh, it's, it's about his choice of vehicle. Uh, He'd have his own jet. He'd have hover boots. Mm. <laughs> Classic hippie-ish. Is it a VW, VW van? Yeah. Exactly the right oh! answer. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is 17% of church leaders think if Jesus came back to Earth now, he would drive a camper van. I suppose it's better that Jesus Christ has a camper van rather than a Yamaha. You don't want him doing a skid and killing a kid and busting his balls on a dustbin lid. 20% <laughs> of Brits have sent a text message what? Is it 20% of Brits have sent a text message when really a bunch of flowers and a deepest sympathy card would have been more appropriate? <laughs> 20% of Brits have sent a text message playing the game Fuck You Roulette, uh, which is where you type fuck you into your text message and then just go through your contacts like that. Is <laughs> <laughs> it putting a kiss at the end of the message, then deleting it, then putting it back on again afterwards? <laughs> do you ever do that? No, I should. Yeah, I will. No, I won't. <laughs> I, I like it when you do, Dave. <laughs> it's to do with uh, what you're wearing. Naked. Yeah. What do you mean, Correct. Scott? <laughs> <I'm thinking. laughs> Yes, correct. 20% of Brits have sent a text message whilst naked. I'm in the boot of a car, just gone over a bridge, I think I'm passing a quarry, <laughs> sounds like an abattoir, send help, smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, it is three points for Sean, Kirsty, and Scott, four points for Dave, Piers, and Jason. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Mm -hmm. Dave, Piers and Jason, you ought to go first. Let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic.
Ah! Ah! I thought she was going to do the old flicking towel on his arse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that... Piers, was that you and Clark? Just like the British press <laughs> <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 23% of fights in bars are caused by pub quizzes. Do you think that's true <laughs> or false? It's yeah. at least 23%. I mean, yeah, they're ideal, aren't they? Confrontation pub quizzes are brilliant. Everybody goes in off happy and jolly, don't they? They think up really funny quiz team names up, don't they? Like, um, quiz team Aguilera. That's my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> the worst one for my local pub quiz team is that the, the, uh, the, the quiz host, he looks like a massive fat Elvis. And so our quiz team name is always, I look like a big fat Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> so when he runs through the points... <laughs> to, to be honest, mate, <laughs> uh, can, <laughs> can you sing hand up or not? <laughs> it's hard being funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, cos, like, you know when you get an answer right and it's really, really difficult, like, the other night, I got this one, and it said, "What in the human body, what's got a molecular weight of 164,458? And I knew it was hemoglobin. For somebody, anyway, I knew it was hemoglobin. And I put them... Because <laughs> I used to work in hospital. And that's great. We one point, Nobody else could possibly have got that one right. And then the quiz master starts giving fucking clues out. Think of uh, maybe a homo goblin. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll never go with Scott in the middle of this. <laughs> Pub asked you the atomic weight of hemoglobin. Are you, never, you, are you go doing pub quizzes at NASA? <laughs> go, Dave, true or false? What do you think? Uh, we're going to say true. true. Well, I can tell you that the answer is in fact false. Oh. Only three percent of fights in bars are caused by pub quizzes. Okay. Sean, Scott, and Kirsty, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Hi, I'm Jody Stowlove. I created chair dancing, the exercise program that can be enjoyed by almost anybody. For example, a family can exercise together. <laughs> Chair dancing is also a good program for people who exercise at work. Well, that got us going. Now stretch your arms side and up, straighten your body, and bring your arms down. Is that March music I hear? Let's march to the music. And how about playing the trombone? <laughs> Grab your orchestra batons because we're going to conduct the orchestra. You know the words. Sing along. Hail, hail the gang's all here. What the heck do we care now? And let's all say... I'd like to go into the Dragon's Den with that idea. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about her chair exercise routine is it would be much more effective if you stood up. <laughs> <laughs> you can go... <laughs> You'd have to be sitting down to do that. It seems like an ironic thing, because that is the sound I would make if I saw a fat woman waddling along. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kirsty, you had an exercise video out, didn't you? Oh, God. Yes, I did. What were you wearing in the exercise video? Were you wearing a unitard? Well, no, I wasn't. I was wearing I shorts. I like unitards. And short... Oh, sorry, no. Because well, I think unitards sound like people that are a bit special but have a horn. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like them. Yeah. Right, here is your related statistic. On average, Brits spend 41 years of their lives sitting down. Is that true or false? <laughs> it's not all in one sitting. That would be. <laughs> well, I imagine it's more. But you do everything. You go to school, you're sitting down. You watch telly, you're sitting down. You drive a tank, it's not everybody, but you're sitting down. <laughs> These artists, they probably do hardly any sitting down. They're always swinging through the air or fighting off a clown. Get off your dirty little <laughs> pervert. Get off, stop nibbling at my fishnets. <laughs> <laughs> Very tiny clown. No, it's on the trapeze. Of course she's doing that, it's on the trapeze. That's when she's swinging past. Woo! <laughs> and these are all facts. <laughs> I mean, how much time do you spend, like, peeling the sticky tape off your shoe? A long... Yeah. Eight years, maybe. <laughs> you add it all up. How much time do you spend with your hands on your hips? A lot of... A lot of time. <laughs> when you're a kid, you spend your whole time sitting down, don't you? A kid oh, runs around all day long, I thought. Yeah, but just to the swings. And watch all right. <laughs> on average, Brits spend 41 years of their lives sitting down. Is that true or false? <laughs> Absolute Tommy rot! <laughs> I've never heard such a load of old balderdash in all my days. Uh, I think it's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that the answer is true. Yay. Yes, well done. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's four points for Sean's team and four points for Dave's team. Oh. It's all to play for. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. The biggest worry for farmers. 
Is it uh, suicide badges? <laughs> so suicide badges? Yeah, suicide badges. That sounds like a bad band. <laughs> <laughs> Is it falling asleep every time you've got to check how many sheep you've got? Yeah, it's quite stressful because they really know what happens when you leave a gate open. <laughs> it's carnage within seconds. It's like ground zero. Is it, um, is it like being asleep at night and a, the scarecrow tapping on your window? Like, <laughs> Me and you outside. <laughs> Just gonna put my killing head on. <laughs> <laughs> is it money? I'm gonna give you that, Scott. Right. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Yes, the biggest worry for farmers is low commodity prices, or money in other words. The other big problem is that society can't accept that the love between a man and a horse is just as valid as the love between a man and a sheep. <laughs> OK, celebrity most in need of a makeover. Cherie Blair. Oh, yeah. Oh, bless She's her. turning into a weeble as well, have you noticed, from the back? She looks oh. like a weeble. <laughs> she has got a beanbag down the back of her pants. <laughs> Probably the most honourable thing I would do is I bought some pictures of Cherie Blair topless off the market and didn't publish them. There are just some things oh, you can't. Well, you just kept them for yourself. You <laughs> dirty stuff. <laughs> How about Heather Mills? She's adopted Posh's pout, I think. Mm. That, that skull. That, that, that can you do the pout? Little skull. <laughs> Celebrity most in need of a makeover. Well, they did one on Anne Widdicombe, didn't they? That was that was fantastic, obviously, but it's pointless, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> it's like sprinkling glitter on dog shit. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> She's a bizarre looking woman, isn't she? Yeah. She looks like a choir boy with a bend. <laughs> <laughs> hairdo, and then something's going off. Oh. Hair. <laughs> Pete Doherty. That's the right answer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes, the celebrity most in need of a makeover is Pete Doherty. People say Pete Doherty hasn't contributed anything to society. On the contrary, he's made me introduce a condom into my fantasy of shagging oh. Kate Moss. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Scott and Kirsty have five points, Dave, Pierce and Jason have five points. It's a dead heat. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Star Reese Thomas, the X Man Louis Walsh, and their captain John Locke. And facing them tonight, a treat from the street, Sally Lindsay, American Beauty Reginald D. Hunter, and their captain Dave Spikey. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. And welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, the average British male has sex 2,580 times during their life? Statistically, that means I'm going to live until I'm 197. 69% <laughs> of Americans believe they will go somewhere after death. Well, certainly, we're going to lift them off the toilet. <laughs> And an octopus has three hearts, so when octopus couples are having difficulties, they get together for a heart to heart to heart to heart to heart to heart. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation, and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panel's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave, Sally, Reg, what have the nation been talking about this week? Saddam Hussein got found guilty this week. They said, you must stand up for the verdict, and he wouldn't stand up. And so they got these two court officers to help him up, and he was picking one up, and he turned to him, and he said, get off me, don't make me bend, you ugly man. <laughs> and I thought, nah, he's showing his true colours now. <laughs> I liked him up to that, but that's just, <laughs> that's just bloody rude. That. He said he didn't want to be hung, he wanted to be shot like a soldier, didn't he? I think it's time we compromised. Do both. <laughs> Do both. 
Just knee him up by his feet, get him swinging like that. Three shots a pound, come on. <laughs> Maybe that's why he looks so disappointed, because he wanted to be shot. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh, that'll be hard. It's a bit like at Christmas if, uh, if you want a bike and you get a jigsaw. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. You know they're going to kill him for bad things he did to lots of people. I had an idea that they should kill him the way... You know when they pulled down his statue and they dragged it slightly with cars and, uh, and tanks and You know what? You've seen the news. <laughs> I think they should do the same with him and kill him in that way. You'll get lots of children, you know, to recreate that dragging down of the statue. Put it, and then put a bit of rope round him with tiny little cars, little pe What are you looking like that for? <laughs> <laughs> this is like watching the news, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And then you just drag him out of the room and he'll kind of fall in half at one point and then they can, everyone can just jump on his head. But the thing I thought about him was that... Hold on a sec, you can't just move straight off. Yeah. <laughs> you're saying, what you're saying is they should push him over. They should slowly... I sent you to death by pushing over. Yeah. <laughs> in America, they don't have executions. This is totally Christian-driven, too, because in America, they don't have executions on Sundays or Mondays. Because on Sundays, God don't want to see no new people on his day off. <laughs> and then you don't want to have your people executing nobody on Monday because you just back to work. You, take <laughs> <laughs> you should be ready to murder somebody by Wednesday, really. You must have done some good for someone. Is it Mr. Hussein? He must have done some good for someone. Yeah, there must be some good things in Iraq. He was very good to his mum. Yeah. <laughs> Did he kill her? Huh? Did he kill her? Yeah. I, Did yeah, he kill why not? Family? He's not going to sue us. <laughs> yeah. Saddam Hussein killed his mum. <laughs> Come get me. <laughs> Good. Well, shall we have a look and see if Saddam is one of the most talked about things this week? <laughs> of course he is. The most talked about thing this week. <laughs> Saddam has been sentenced to death by hanging. He thought he found a loophole. No, Saddam, that's a noose. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Louis and Reese, what have the nation been talking about this week? Four-year-old girl's depressed, she's a bit down. And uh, she took her to the doctor and they said, he said, yes, yeah, she's depressed. Instead of, what he should have done, actually, when he went to her, he should have listened to all her symptoms, he should have gone, hold on a sec. Boom! <laughs> and I think been fine. <laughs> Apparently, the reason this girl is depressed is because she didn't get into the right primary school. Mm. Mm. That was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the reason she didn't get in is because her parents didn't put the application in time. So the reason she's depressed is, she, is that her parents are a couple of pricks. <laughs> yes, that's what you can so. She tried to slit her wrist with stickle bricks. <laughs> well, that's a nice image, yeah. She put her head in the oven, but it's one of those little plastic ones, it's fine. <laughs> I, when I was four, I used to get Randy, I used to rub myself against the chair leg. <laughs> Honestly, and my mum was going, stop that, it's naughty. And my dad said, don't tell him to, don't stop, he's Welsh. He said, don't tell him to stop, because he might go funny in the head. And I think I did it till I was about 14. <laughs> I would get on the chair leg and rub like that. Get <laughs> 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 on the chair leg and... Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> How they spotted it? I mean, I don't know how they actually identified her depression. I She's not listening to, you know, Leonard Cohen in a room. <laughs> <laughs> to sort of sit up there smoking. I mean, there's... I think she, she, she's up in her room listening to the Tweenies' very difficult second album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether this four-year-old depressed girl is one of the most talked about things of the week. Oh, it is. Oh, That's all good. This is the story of the four-year-old girl who's depressed about not getting into the right primary school. It's not uncommon for small children to get depressed. I know a baby who cries all day and can't get out of bed. <laughs> Doctors knew something was seriously wrong when she stopped laughing at the Chuckle Brothers. To me, to you, to me, to you. What's the point? Keep it. <laughs> Dave Steen, uh, what else have the nation been talking about this Reg. week? Of, uh, I guess, the American midterm election. Um, People's excited too that uh, Rumsfeld resigned and just so what? <laughs> Bush is not real. But the people who, who who back Bush, those are the dangerous people. You don't never see them. You know, getting upset with Bush is like some kid coming up to me with a puppet and going, you know, out of my way, darky, and I going, you damn puppet! I hate you. Ned <laughs> <laughs> Landon made me smile. Said Democrats spell disaster for Bush. <laughs> He can't spell for shit, can he? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the reason, the reason they lost was because of the war in Iraq. It's cost them a billion a week. Yeah, a billion pounds a week. Yeah, who's bloody paying for it, eh? It's us. <laughs> 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 Isn't it? 
Have you thought about writing for the Daily Mail? <laughs> You don't seem to understand much, but you seem sort of upset about it. And that's... <laughs> those are, I think, the key things. Yeah, my mum buys the Daily Mail, right? Only because the ink doesn't come off on your hands. You know what's keeping it there? What? Hate. Yeah. <laughs> so I can see with the BMP pamphlet going, no, I don't agree with it, but, you know, it's lovely paper. <laughs> <laughs> Louis, what, what do you make of the midterm elections, I imagine? Jimmy, I just... I've never been a fan of Bush. Hey, You've never been a fan of Bush? <laughs> God bless you for your honesty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Schwarzenegger got back in again as well, yeah. didn't oh, he? Um, Which is always yeah. astonishing. Did you hear what he said when he got back in? I love sequels. <laughs> oh, if he loves sequels, why doesn't he go and make Kindergarten Cop 2? <laughs> <laughs> I always felt that that never resolved and properly, that film, at the end. What a great film. <laughs> I used to like, you know, Schwarzenegger movies back in the 80s. And something bothered me about those movies were like, he would be in, playing these American roles and no one would notice he sounded different. And as racist as America is, he would have been like, pff, pff, Billy, let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. You think his partner would go, where the fuck are you from? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, let's have a look and see if the midterm elections are one of the most talked about things this week. Oh, back in the lane. Back in the lane. Yeah. President Bush was remarkably upbeat about the Democrat victory until he found out he wasn't a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Rumsfeld has been forced to resign. He's been replaced by someone more popular, compassionate and caring. It's a scarecrow of Darth Vader that belches poisonous <laughs> gas. <laughs> Sean, Louis, Reese, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it Genesis coming back? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, the nation's thrilled. <laughs> I know that you've been talking. You're a massive Genesis fan, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone who laughs, frankly, hasn't listened to enough right. of their music. <laughs> Anyone who still know. has the ability to laugh <laughs> hasn't listened to enough of their music. They're not really coming back, Jimmy, though, because Peter Gabriel's not in the band. He was the talented one. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it's not one of the most talked about things of the week. Maybe it will be now. Now everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should start talking about it from this point onwards. Yeah, OK. There's people with a sandwich in their mouth go, what? <laughs> Get that? <laughs> it's true, Genesis are reforming. Famously, Phil Collins once performed on top of the pops with a tin of paint because his wife had run off with a decorator. The decorator didn't mind because he was fucking Phil Collins' wife and had plenty of paint. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Hmm? Brittany's divorce. She divorced her husband. By text. By text. <laughs> That's come as a shock, though, this Brittany thing, isn't it? That it's not lasted. When you saw the wedding, all beautiful and all that, matching track suits. <laughs> Trailer party, he's got pimp on the back of his. Mm. You know, beautiful. what went wrong? <laughs> Do you think it's a good thing, bad thing? If they don't want to be married, then yeah. That's the point he of divorce. Was, he was... <laughs> Can't fault you on that. <laughs> They were both unhappy. It's it the first good point you've made. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you think she was mad to marry him in the first place? I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Britney Spears is one of the most talked about things this week. Yes, of course it was. Yes, Britney Spears has split up with Kevin Federline. I feel sorry for Kevin Federline. He genuinely thought that they'd be together for the rest of his album's promotional period. <laughs> OK, one more to get. Fingers on buzzers. What else have people been talking about this week? Is it this uh, Tory councillor <gasps> with the racist poem that she's forwarded, emailed onto everywhere? She's not really... She's an evil, stupid cow. She's illiterate as well. She sent this poem round to hundreds of people, and it's just outrageous. I think it's white folks overreacting, cos there's two types of racism. Real racism, where people get hurt and can't get housing. Or there's that fake racism that white people get upset about, where well, somebody's feelings might get hurt. People are so <laughs> sensitive now, and so upset, especially middle-class white people, they're afraid of being accused of being racist. Sometimes for fun, I'll call a white guy racist who I know isn't racist and just watch him lose his mind. <laughs> I'm not racist, no, no, I'm buying you a drink. I'm going to show you I'm not racist. And, and want to fuck my sister? See, I'm, I'm not racist. But the fact you never called oh. my sister as well. <laughs> She used that old cliche that said, oh, I, I didn't mean it offensively because I have friends that are Asian. Yeah. Not anymore, you fucking don't, though. <laughs> Cameron can try and pretend that he's got all these forward-thinking, 
modern visually metrosexual people in his party. But basically, if they had their way, they'd build a time machine and it'd all go back to 1901. <laughs> <laughs> Conservative means keep things the same, not let's try a samosa, it might be nice. <laughs> a lot of people are prejudiced and racist and they don't mean no harm by it. Just every time I go to Ireland, some white guy at a party says to me, you know Irish people are considered the Negroes of Europe. You know, as if I'm supposed to go, no wonder I'm so comfortable here. <laughs> I remember I told my dad that. I was like, Dad, you know Irish people are considered the Negroes of Europe. And he said, God damn it, white folks don't let black folks have nothing. I love how he's racist. You know, Wordsworth, I wandered lonely as a cloud. I bet he meant a white one. <laughs> he couldn't say I wandered as a black cloud, because uh, as a, oh yeah. Yeah, he could. <laughs> Reese, grown ups talking. Yeah. <laughs> All too clever for me. I don't watch the news. <laughs> I thought this was a program actually about cats. <laughs> well, let's see if the Conservative Party's race controversy is one of the most talked about things this week. Yes, the Tories have been dogged by controversy over racism this week. Eleanor Bland, the councillor who sent an offensive email, denied she was racist, saying, I have Asian friends, which gave the Tories another reason to sack her. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's two points for Sean's team and three points to Dave's team. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. Here's your first one. 26% of Brits say a TV show has motivated them to what? Is it, um, shit in a Tupperware box and have a good route through it? <laughs> <laughs> I hate that programme. Gillian McKeith, isn't it, that yeah. does the, uh, how clean is your poo? You know that table that she shows everyone, that table of food? She Doctor goes, Who? Yeah. Oh, look at this. Look at this table of food. It's exactly the same table that Kerry McFadden shows in the Iceland ads. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of stuff's on telly these days. I would make me want to invade Poland because it always seems to be Nazi shows on television, isn't it? <laughs> History Channel, just Nazis marching. <laughs> You've got two sound effects Nazis marching or. 26% <laughs> uh... of Brits say TV has motivated them to solve crimes in the Yorkshire Dales. <laughs> Is it motivated them to buy a product that isn't available in the shops? And when they get it through the post, they know why. It's fucking shit. <laughs> I once, to my shame, I bought a machine that would rock, rock, rock my way to a flatter stomach. <laughs> Jimmy, I think it's to be successful. Well, your show motivates people to queue up in a car park for four hours. And be famous, yeah, for a short and be while. be famous, yeah. yeah. For a short while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you said it. <laughs> yeah. What is the X Factor? You're looking for the X Factor, it's like it's it? a special potion. <laughs> it's a syndrome that means you can't get embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> is it redecorate your house? That is the correct answer. <laughs> Next question. 58% of swimmers think what helps them go faster? Engines. <laughs> I think sharks. <laughs> yeah. Depends where you're swimming, doesn't it? I mean, you don't get sharks in the... Only basking sharks around the coast of the British Isles. And, I, and they're Woo! harmless. Get you and your shark knowledge. Yeah, ask me anything about sharks and I know it. What's the life expectancy of a great white? Oh, it depends where it lives. <laughs> <laughs> In Hackney, it's only got about six months. <laughs> lottery. Once they're out of the water, they're knackered. <laughs> Waxing. Waxing, shaving your hair off. Correct answer. Oh, brilliant. 58% of swimmers think shaving helps them go faster. Gillette claimed to be the best a man can get, but surely that's a blowjob from twins. <laughs> <laughs> Why that happened to Bross? <laughs> and how are the McDonald brothers? <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, Sean, Louis and Reese have four points. Dave, Sally and Rich have four points. Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement and all they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Dave, Sally and Reg, you're to go first. Let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Hi, how are you? I'm Denise from San Diego, California, and I'm going to show you how to shoot the AK-47 automatic rifle, the standard issue to the Soviet bloc armies, I might add. There's something about having a gun in your hands and being able to control it. I don't know what it is, but all the girls talked about it. Did you know 
noticed they were all wearing what they'd shot. <laughs> Some of those Al Qaeda training videos. <laughs> Here's your related statistic 14% of American husbands have bought their wives a gun as a Christmas present. True or false? Go ahead and go with that's uh, probably being true, man. You want a woman who can just reach down under the pillow and just go doosh, doosh, doosh. <laughs> doosh, do, do, do. Doof, doof. Yeah. <laughs> we are barking at each other now. <laughs> I think if they did buy someone a gun, it wouldn't be the main present. <laughs> they go, oh, and I've got you a gun as well. Yeah, because you'd be gutted at Christmas morning and it's a gun. You'd be like, ah, is that it? Well, you'd also you'd never buy the right gun, would you? would never be happy. <laughs> like, how many hints do I have to drop? I didn't want the AK-47, I wanted the M16. <laughs> yeah, you grew up in the States. Did you have a gun at any stage? I never owned a gun, but parents had guns and all. Uh, and, you know, just, w they would argue a lot, but they never, like, reached for their guns or nothing. <laughs> because, you know, they civilized and shit. 14% of American husbands have bought their wives a gun as a Christmas present, true or false? Um, do you think it's higher? I do think it's higher, but uh, the option is offered as true or false, not possibly more. Well, if so, it's not, <laughs> well, if you think it's more, then it's false. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. You're a real trickster, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> True. False. <laughs> I can tell you the answer is false. <laughs> Only 5% of American husbands have bought their wives Pretty a gun at Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Sean, Louis and Reese, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. <laughs> Once every two weeks at Wrexham in North Wales, Barry Manilow fans get together for a Barry night. Boyfriends and husbands are excluded, so the Manny lovers can devote all their time and attention to an uninterrupted weekend of Manny lust. I think I'm more of a fan in the way that I have used Barry's influence to help me in my professional life. Much of the philosophy in his songs, his lyrics, uh, I have, well, quite come to live by. These started off the company that I run today and am very successful in. And the eyeliner is very interesting because I think I may be one of the first people who have ever painted onto felt. <laughs> what I want to know, how do they get in your bedroom? <laughs> Here's your related statistic. 43% of Brits say the 80s was the best decade ever. Is that true or false? Which 80s? The 1680s or the 1580s? I think they're talking about the 1980s. I think yeah. the voice of wisdom has spoken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the music was better in the 80s, Jimmy. The music was better. Well, whose fault's better. that? <laughs> <laughs> it was the Falklands, Tiananmen Square, on the downside, but then again, Soda Stream. <laughs> they didn't have that a terrible show, I Love the 80s. That didn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> the weather was better then. <laughs> We had proper winters. It hasn't snowed since then on Christmas Day. As in Manchester. That's it. Yeah. Doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Pot noodles weren't as advanced. It was only chow mein and chicken and mushroom then, wasn't it? Yeah. Now we've got everything. Oh, yes, cuisine has moved on. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so 43% of Brits say the 80s was the best decade ever. True or false? Wasn't that British TV show Minder on in the 80s? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah, the 80s was the best. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, they should bring Minder back. It'd be quite good to bring it back. But actually, with George Cole and Dennis Waterman. So Dennis Waterman is basically wiping his ass and giving him bed baths. Now. <laughs> <laughs> he literally is Minder. <laughs> <laughs> He's winching him out of the bath, <laughs> drying him down, <laughs> feeding him, letting him go like that in the bowl. There you go. OK, so what are you going for? True or false? I think true. Yeah. 43% of Brits say the 80s was the best decade ever. I can tell you the answer is so true. Funny how it seems, always in time, but never in line for our dreams. Head over heels, when to two toe. This is the sound of my soul. This is the sound. Can I go to boot camp, please? No, you're brutal. <laughs> So at the end of that round, I can tell you it's five points to Sean's team and five points for Dave's team. Oh, oh yes, it's all to play for. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and it's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Biggest restaurant faux pas. I'll tell you what they don't <laughs> like in places like the Ivy, when they come and you've got that big silver dome on your food, when they take it off, if you go, da da <laughs> <laughs> But the Ivy is not that posh. Where's posh then? We have much posher restaurants in Dublin. Name one. Abracababra. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> 
<laughs> so coming uh, back from the loo with your skirt in your knickers. Oh, I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Is it doing a runner from a restaurant late at night? Yeah. <laughs> you get into the taxi rank going. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your jacket? Oh. <laughs> one of those big foam hands, just so you get more service. <laughs> I've mean, yeah. no idea. You know when they say here, try a bit of the wine, and you just stay there, and they have to wait till you've tried it, just stay there for hours. And don't drink it. See, when he says drink it. You're brilliant. <laughs> You're making me think I might have children. What? Yeah, really? they're just an adorable little creature that gets things wrong, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's lovely. Like murder. <laughs> <laughs> Is he clicking your fingers? Correct answer. Well done, Louis Walsh. Yes, the biggest restaurant faux pas is clicking your fingers for the waiter. Number two on the list was quibbling over the bill. Oh, no, he's quibbled all over the bill. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next question. Best way to become famous? <laughs> is, it, is it sleeping with Simon Cole? Is that how you did it? No, that's something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think he has his pajamas up to about there? <laughs> <laughs> Run faster than anybody else in the world. I'm going to give you that. It's actually to be a professional sportsman. Oh. Yes, the best way to become famous is to become a professional sportsman. Just ask the UK's number three cyclist, Derek Chalmers. <laughs> I like that. Because <laughs> he's not famous. <laughs> Most... Oh. Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which it's means off. the final scores are Dave, Sally and Reg have six points, Sean, Louis and Reese have six points. It's a dead heat. Everyone's a winner. Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. A show about opinion polls, surveys, and statistics. Did you know, for example, there are around 44 million bubbles in a bottle of champagne? And that statistic is brought to you by a scientist who was stood up on a date. <laughs> in 2005, it was made illegal to keep goldfish in goldfish bowls in Italy. So, that's goldfish sorted. Now, organised crime. <laughs> And the average woman will tell 28,000 lies in her lifetime. I don't know what my girlfriend would make of that. She's out with an old school friend tonight. <laughs> Apparently, she might have to stay over. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean, Ulrika, Michael, what have people been talking about this week? A story I like, I, li I like the story about the, uh, the Luton manager who's complained about a female referee, not a referee, a lineswoman. He said if we're letting women into football, well then it's just all gone to pot. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, it's fantastic, great. he said, it may sound sexist, but I am sexist. <laughs> fantastic. It is like saying, yeah, I did burglar your house, but I am a burglar. <laughs> and he did, he did apologise. He did, well, he sort of apologised for causing offence, but said his words were ill-timed. They're very understanding women. They're probably too understanding. Like, if, if they, they won't give a penalty if, you know, the other team are 4-0 down, they're under a lot of pressure. I can understand why he did it. <laughs> they don't even tell you what it's for. They just book you 
and then you go, what's that for? And they go, well, if you don't know. <laughs> Wouldn't be good referees. Dinner ladies. <laughs> you wouldn't argue with a dinner lady, would you? You wouldn't argue with a woman in a tabard and a tash. Would you? <laughs> you thought the ref wasn't facing you. You thought you were going to kick someone and they'd apply makeup. Bang to rights in the middle, right? Bang to rights. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> I saw it. You've dated a couple of footballers. Were they sexist? Or were they all right? Oh, they were lovely. <laughs> <laughs> a couple. I can't, have you? I don't know. I'm you just... said that couple like there was loads. A couple? Hundreds. <laughs> God, do you find any of those guys you dated to be sexist? Of course. <laughs> you don't have video refs, do you? Like, they're doing rugby uh, league. No, we, you I don't. don't. Have football. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a video ref and they go, let's go to the big screen, and a female ref went, oh, put X Factor in. <laughs> 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 I just want to see if he's gone out. <laughs> the lady in question, uh, Amy Rayner, has been qualified for 14 years. So she's actually more qualified than he is? Yeah, he's been a manager, I think, for four years. Oh, good. <laughs> Would you fancy refereeing? Uh, no. You said that like you could actually arrange it. <laughs> you fancy yeah, refereeing? You? <laughs> yes, I do, yeah. actually. Well, don't worry, I'll sort out. <laughs> We're doing Man United Liverpool on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Never know your luck. <laughs> Shouting at the ref is an integral part of modern football, and I think it would make life very difficult for footballers just screaming. A woman going, my! <laughs> he pushed me! <laughs> I didn't, he did! It'd, be, it'd just be like shouting at your mum. It wouldn't be as effective. They'd, they'd stop doing it. It's probably a very good thing. They should have female refs. I'd have female scientists. I would. I'd have them driving trains. <laughs> I'd let them drive cars. I would. <laughs> I'd let them work as policemen, police women, anything, you know. I just think it's time to open up the whole thing to them, let them do what they want. <laughs> yeah, let them ride bikes. Sort of. <laughs> it can't be that dangerous. They'll get the hang of it. No, let them do what they want. Well, is it a top five talking point? Yes, it is. There are 10,000 affiliated women's football teams and 133,000 registered female players. Goodness me, that's an awful lot of lesbians. <laughs> Dave, Johnny and Christian, and what else have the nation been talking about this week? I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. I started. <laughs> and um, gripping stuff. Do you know who they all are, though? I mean, I, I, I watched oh, it last really I'm yeah. still quite puzzled about who they are, yeah. having watched it. It should be called I'm a Celebrity. No, honestly, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am, yeah, I've got an agent, isn't it? Well, Jan Leeming's on. Do you, do you know that? No, the thing I like about Jan Leeming is that she's obviously full of shit a lot of the time. She, you know, she lied about her task and made it out to be a lot worse than it really was. But everybody believes her, because she's a newsreader. Yeah, and exactly. that is the great newsreader's luxury. You can talk total shit, and everyone goes, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if that's true. <laughs> I was actually asked to go on. Were you? I get asked every year, and I'm that far away from Panto. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> go on, what, would you ever think about it? I've thought about it, but in really vicious dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn up the first night, eat every bit of rice in the camp. Stand there looking menacing and then set your own camp up ten yards away going, One of you will die today! He's a very strange looking man. I saw a bit of it, that David Guest. He looks like a sort of Muppet with alopecia. Just, <laughs> with the fur's just fallen off slowly. It's just this weird blob thing. It does look as it. if Paul Simon has melted. Yeah. <laughs> he cries through his ears, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know what, one day, all, all the paper mashy things you made at school and discarded will rise up with him and start an army. <laughs> Do you want to have a look at him? He looks like his plastic surgery's been done specifically so he can appear in Aladdin, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's gone to the plastic surgeon and said, I want to work in Panto. <laughs> I like him, just. I think you he's, like him? He's great. I think he's great entertainment. Don't you agree with that? Well, wow, that's like, I mean, there's lots of great documentaries about Hitler. Well, I, this man's nothing like Hitler. He's done nothing wrong. He's, I, I vote for him. I want him on the Bush Tucker trial. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally I'm obsessed with seeing him repeatedly on television. I like David Guest. Is he very gay? Is who very gay? Is he very gay? Well, Michael. No, no don't do that. <laughs> well, in fairness, in fairness, you are wearing a pink shirt and saying, I love David Guest. <laughs> I'm mentioning my sexuality to Jimmy. Like Jimmy knows of my sexuality. Jimmy knows. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely gay. <laughs> To, to get on this show, you have to have a medical with Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> my wife is obviously squirming uh, watching this. Thinking, He's... oh, my God, I've married a gay. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if it's there. <laughs> yes, the latest...
series of I'm a Celebrity started this week. Fashion designer Scott Henshaw said he tried to turn the other men in the camp gay. What, Jason Donovan, David Guest and Tommy Anstis? Good luck with that. <laughs> I saw you went straight. You cut to me after the gay joke. <laughs> You said gay. I thought, why am I on the screen? <laughs> hey, and I'm it's going, because <laughs> the reason we cut to you was because some people yes. watching in Newcastle won't know what a gay man looks like. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a visual cue for them. The <laughs> also, you haven't seen a bit of text that's going to come up in the edit. I was just, yeah. just gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be loads of, sort of flowers and butterflies around here. <laughs> Sean, Ulrika, and Michael, what else have people been talking about this week? Bond. Uh, James Bond. He's 007. <laughs> and I like, uh... David Guest. <laughs> I just like the, the use of the 007, because I have a lot of trouble with O and zero. You've missed the point. It's not zero. That's why it's O. That's why it's not just seven. It's O, O, seven. So when you see me go, uh-oh, oh, seven. Uh -oh. Is it <laughs> Are you a Daniel Craig convert? Yes, definitely. Yeah. It's pathetic, isn't it's it? The, the way they all slagged him off beforehand and I then turned know, around. Great. He's a real hunk. He emerges from the water. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't keep up this facade any longer. <laughs> he was in the National Youth Theatre around the same time as me, I think, and he... he, he <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, I thought we booked Christian Guru Murphy. <laughs> I know I was in the National Youth Theatre very briefly, but not as long as he was. As a newsreader. He used to get a lot of <laughs> big parts. <laughs> Most of the Bonds couldn't act, could they? I mean, but he actually can. He's stolen a lot of your moves. <laughs> There's a thing where he punches someone in the neck and it's pure Christian Guru. If things had been different, <laughs> it's classic. I've seen the film, I was there on the night. Oh, was it? How did you enjoy the premiere? Lovely, yeah. They're not that impressed, are they? You've got four million. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go to the premiere as well. But who couldn't go? <laughs> <laughs> No, I did go and I found myself turning to my brother who I brought along and going, oh, for fuck, what are we waiting for? And he went, the Queen? <laughs> did she come round with the ice creams? <laughs> she, I don't think she enjoyed it. Does she sit with everyone front, middle or back? I mean, where does she choose to front, sit? Front, middle she or back? No, she's, yeah. <laughs> what the Queen does, what the Queen does, she sits on a massive throne in front of the screen so nobody can see it. <laughs> she gets, oh, she's got a big How crown and she keeps moving it around. <laughs> sure, she was pain in the arse. <laughs> nobody saw a thing. <laughs> OK, let's see if it's one of the top five stories. Yes, it is. The most talked about thing this week. Yes, the latest Bond movie was released this week. Casino Royale is the first Bond movie that doesn't rely on gadgets. Q must be spinning in his grave, powered by the Grave Spinatron 3000. <laughs> uh, Dave Steen, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Apparently, the taxpayers had to compensate a load of ex-heroin addicts in prison oh. um, because they were forced to come off heroin when they were sent to jail. Too soon. Too soon. And it was too painful. I think it's bizarre that, you know, you can have drugs in prison, because it's not really prison if you're off your face, is it? <laughs> the judge said to me, you've got six months, but you won't feel a thing. I go, oh, fine, that's great. <laughs> it costs £150 a day, though, for methadone, to get yeah. someone off heroin. Yeah. Which I can't help feeling, give them heroin, then. <laughs> Where are they getting it from? Harrods? <laughs> right. Have we not learned from society, within lessons, to build prisons like Charlie... Wonka's chocolate factory. <laughs> like Charlie Wonka's well, chocolate factory. If they had a ribbon of chocolate, they wouldn't take cocaine, would they? <laughs> been, I like the way you follow that. around and eating. <laughs> What's the finance costs? I just want to see the figures. <laughs> Jesus, why am I not on a government panel? <laughs> Is this a cry for help? I've thought it through. <laughs> Let's see if prisoner compensation is one of the most talked about things this week. Yes, prisoners have got compensation because they were denied treatment for drug addiction. And also in the news this week, a prison chaplain admitted to smoking crack cocaine. He apparently had so much of the drug, he believed that a man put to death over 2,000 years ago was his best friend. <laughs> right, one more to get. Fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about this week? Desert Orchid died. People got upset about that, didn't they? The nation's favourite horse. How nice can a horse be, really? Right. It's like, how evil can a horse be? <laughs> it's a pretty sort of thin area, that scope of behaviour that they live in, isn't it? It's trotting round a field or stopping. <laughs> and it's sad, 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 sad. Because everyone was very upset that he, you know, he died, but in fairness, at any point in his career, if he'd so much as sprained an ankle, they would have shot him in the head. 
There were some amazing quotes though, wasn't it? So he was loved because he was so versatile. It's a bloody horse. He couldn't make a brew or do a bit of pottery, surely to God. <laughs> Occasionally when he crossed the finishing line, he used to lift his hoof up and go... Yeah. <laughs> he was a bit of a character. Is that hoofs? You know, any opportunity to put a funny hat on, he took it. <laughs> he often was seen standing behind John McCrick with his hoof going like that. <laughs> I don't understand why dwarves don't ride horses. You'd think they would, wouldn't you? You know, they're always looking for short blokes to ride. Well, there's just... there's loads of dwarves out there. Why don't they ride horses? Short legs. <laughs> those, are, those are your arms. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they just lift the stirrups up. Not that high. <laughs> glue them. Just, just glue them. <laughs> glue them. Short legs and short arms. They just have to hold on, don't they? They don't really do much. I, I can actually tell you the reason why they don't use dwarves. It's because the flat season is in the middle of panto. <laughs> Or maybe they've got a deal with the jockeys, like, you do horses, we'll do panto, yeah. we won't... You know, like an agreement, they had was... a meeting in a car park. That's a gang fight I would yeah. love to see. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if the death of Desert Orchid is up there. Yes, it is. <laughs> Desert Orchid sadly passed away this week. In a moving tribute, fellow racehorse Biffins Bridge said... <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, it's three points to Sean's team and two points to Dave's team. <laughs> the next round is called the poll with a hole. Here's your first question. 12% of lottery winners have what? I know what I'd do if I won the lottery. Right, first thing I'd do is liquidise an elephant. <laughs> That's good. Just get a big liquidizer, put it in. Vroom! <laughs> you'd hear the tusks. And then, <laughs> and then I'd open a uh, hairdresser's, you know, just so it keeps ticking over. But also, the added thing is, if people come in, you completely mess their hair up, and you go, don't have to pay, I'm not really a hairdresser. Just... <laughs> <laughs> it's like the lottery, actually. <laughs> All right, Kim, calm down. <laughs> I heard that you've got as much chance of winning the lottery this week, because so many people bought tickets, as guessing somebody's phone number. How awful would that be if you actually guessed somebody's number, and then you've won nothing? <laughs> it's related to travel. I've gone abroad. Exactly the opposite of that. I've disappeared completely. <laughs> <laughs> Just completely vaporised as soon as they won. They were so ecstatic, all their cells inverted and they became <laughs> antimatter. Is it it's not close. going away? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that. The answer is, in fact, they still haven't been abroad. 12% of lottery winners have never been abroad. Of course, a lot of people only win a tenner. Where's that going to get you? Prague? Yeah. 34% <laughs> of people in Blackpool would like what? Would like a supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> There's only so many recipes that take in rock and sugar dummies. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of them are developing Vatican's veins that actually says Blackpool down the front. <laughs> <laughs> Is it 34 per cent of people in Blackpool would like a tram up the front? <laughs> <laughs> my granny, when I used to go in as a kid, my granny first went there, she said, if I stand on that rail there, will I get electrocuted? He said, only if you cock your leg over that wire up there. <laughs> <laughs> 34% of people in Blackpool would like Tony Blair to admit that that clown in the glass case is actually his brother. <laughs> and it's a bit like the man in the iron mask and he should be set free and allowed to run for office. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to question time, Mr Blur's lost brother. <laughs> What's your approach to taxis? <laughs> <laughs> they, would they think they'd like a piazza? I don't know, just give it a bit of class. <laughs> Casino? That's exactly the right answer. Oh, God, God, thank God for me. Yes, 34% of people in Blackpool would like a super casino. I tell you what, if you want to gamble in Blackpool, why don't you just get a hot dog from one of the vans? <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, I can tell you Sean, Ulrika and Michael have six points, and Dave, Johnny and Krishnan have two points. Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Sean, Ulrika and Michael, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. This shipment is supposed to be for 12 cards. Can you get the rest for me? Oh, OK, I'll be right back. Donna. Oh! <laughs> Got to 
be the best beginning of casualty that's ever been made. <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 9% of workers say they would be prepared to break a bone to win a compensation claim. Do you think that's true or false? I've actually done something to deliberately hurt myself at work. I worked in the kitchens of a psychiatric hospital and it was such a depressing job that I thought, if I left it, I wouldn't have got dull. So I deliberately, I was mopping up and I threw myself at this sort of metal butcher's table and just sort of smacked my head on it. I actually did knock myself out. And I didn't get a penny because I had the regulation non-slip boots on. So they said, well, there's no way you could have slipped. You must have, it must be your fault. And they sacked me because they said, you're an idiot, throwing yourself. I turned myself off a horse once. You threw yourself off a horse? Yeah. <laughs> well, onto a footballer. <laughs> I would think that in most jobs, though, it's quite hard to break, break something. Mm. You can't break yeah. your leg photocopying, can you? <laughs> Unless you have, like, repetitive, a repetitive incident, like you keep dropping a stapler on your foot, like, <laughs> about 100 times a day, like, just, doof, ow, doof, oh, keep knocking that. And then they just say, well, just move the stapler. 9% of workers say they would be prepared to break a bone to win compensation. True or false? I'd say it's false. I can tell you the answer is false. Well done. Yes, only 2% of workers say they would be prepared to break a bone to get compensation. My grand broke both her hips at work. She made a fortune suing that porn company. <laughs> Dave, Johnny and Christian, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Do you hear something? Yeah, wait, there's one over there. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Go ahead. Good shot. You're going to put some meat in the freezer this year, I think. Beautiful. You've heard of tuna melts or patty melts. Why not squirrel melts? Well, this is Justin Squirrel. He's kind of cute. I'm going to put his little tender button here. And some celery. I like to use the leaves. You want to poach this for about an hour on a low simmer. And I've got some already done here. This makes a nice weekend snack, maybe while watching a football game, or you can take it to a tailgate party. I'm going to add a, just a slice of cheese. Now you want to pop these into an oven that I've preheated to 350 degrees for about 8 to 10 minutes. Perfecto! Squirrel melts. You must try them. I just have to say no animals were hurt in the making of that film, unless you count squirrels. <laughs> Here's your related statistic. 25% of Brits say they would definitely try squirrel meat if Jamie Oliver demonstrated a recipe on TV. <laughs> True or false? Only if it was appropriately labelled may contain nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's the recipe that's the issue, really. It's not like you go, oh, well, I haven't tried it with coriander. <laughs> I always thought squirrels are a bit like Tyrannosaurus rex, aren't they? Because they, they've got those... <laughs> See them, they're quite terrifying squirrels, they come towards you. There was a campaign in Britain about ten years ago to encourage people to eat squirrel meat. I did a piece about it on the news. It was total rubbish, squirrel but because meat. I did it on the news, everyone believed it. And, um... <laughs> do you ever do that? Is there ever a slow news day and you just go... Make it up. Doesn't matter. <laughs> squirrel meat. No, yeah. do. Is that a story? Yeah, why not? 25% of Brits say they would definitely try squirrel meat if Jamie Oliver demonstrated a recipe on TV, true or false. I mean, that's basically, would you do anything Jamie Oliver told you to do? Mm. Most people seem to, don't they? Well, it's an inspiration. He's brilliant at humiliating fat kids. Some of fat kids go on to be fat adults. How, how we <laughs> you ever see people busking with squirrels, do you? Like they do with cobras in India. <laughs> you could do some good busking with a squirrel, couldn't you? If you, you know, if you had like an elaborate system of ladders and pulleys and swings, and you just got him climbing around, and he they had to put some music, and then you could make a fortune. You wouldn't need to kill him. You could actually have them working for you. You'd probably become a millionaire. <laughs> like more travelling, hundreds of blokes. Franchise it. A bit like cats. <laughs> and squirrels. 25% uh, of Brits say they would definitely try squirrel meat if Jamie Oliver demonstrated a recipe on TV. True or false, Dave? It's 25%. You think it's true? Do I ever ask you to trust me? <laughs> true. 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 Well, I can tell you the answer is true. Yes, 25% of Brits say they would try squirrel meat if Jamie Oliver demonstrated a recipe on TV. I'll tell you what, I'd try Jamie Oliver meat if a squirrel told me to. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's seven points for Sean's team and three points for Dave's team. Oh. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your first one. Most common cause of stress for priests. Is it the devil? <laughs> <laughs> is it someone's cut the... Uh brake lining on their, on their motorbike and they're going down a hill and they can't 
Ah, I can't breathe. <laughs> and they're heading towards like a brick wall. That's quite stressful. <laughs> Is it concealment of homosexuality of which I know nothing? <laughs> Frustration. That's the correct answer. Oh, well, yes. Yes, the most common cause of stress for priests is celibacy. That and the fact they miss Hollyoaks every Sunday. <laughs> Celebrity who most often features in Brits and Nightmares. <laughs> Jimmy Savile. <laughs> I had a terrible dream once where I saw Doc Cotton in a cat suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is it, is it the bloke from the Worthington original, lads? You mean Werner's original? <laughs> Werner's, yeah. Werner's <laughs> 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 original. You're like my nan. <laughs> Worthington's <laughs> originals. Give them to kids, they love them. <laughs> <laughs> my grandkids were so pissed. <laughs> is it getting in a taxi and Richard Ammons driving? <laughs> I imagine after this week it'll be David Guest, won't it? David Guest and Michael Jackson have been after you for body parts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dreading it, and I've got to ask, is it me? <laughs> no, it's not you. You're in people's dreams. <laughs> yeah? Uh, she used to be a page three girl. That'd be uh, Jordan. That's a correct answer. <laughs> yes, the celebrity who most often features in Brit's nightmares is Jordan. She started her modelling career by sending pictures of herself to a London agency. It wasn't much, but it was a tit in the door. <laughs> Right, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Dave, Johnny and Christian have four points, but Sean, Ulrika and Michael are the winners. They have eight points. <laughs> well, thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, a quarter of people don't know what kidneys do? They make steak pies delicious. <laughs> One in three pet owners has made an unplanned visit to the vet in the past two years. I don't know, it's just a whim, put him down. <laughs> and one in ten housewives plan ahead when it comes to evening meals. They plan to eat oysters under the stars with a Brazilian tango instructor. And then they sigh, take another swig of gin and put the fish fingers on. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave, Fiona, Griff, what have the nation been talking about this week? Well, like it or loathe it, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, rumbles on, with uh, David Guest as the unlikely star. And he is a bit odd, but he, he, he's good value, I think. Do you know? Yeah. And Lisa Minnelli said this week, they asked her opinion on his, uh, his venture into the jungle, and she said, I hope he gets fucked by a kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is that a great statement, but it would make a great Bush Tucker trial. It would, wouldn't it? <laughs> You're getting fucked by a kangaroo, you've got to get the stars out of its pocket. <laughs> like that. that is a great what trial. Thing I never understand about this is, what's a kangaroo doing in the jungle? Exactly. exactly. I've never understood. I thought a kangaroo lived in the desert. And they every do time indeed. They, when they're in the bush, they're always eating kangaroo testicles mm. and things like this. Mm. Some poor kangaroo's gone on a holiday, <laughs> and it's happened to just wander into this thing. What about Jan Leeman, who's, who's there saying, I'm not a girl's girl? Well, clearly by her five failed marriages, she's not a boy's girl either, is she? <laughs> when you first heard that, you went, five, five divorces, that's a lot. Yeah. And then you see her for about half an hour and go, no, no, fair enough, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've all made mistakes, get out of that. <laughs> Yeah, take the house. Fuck off. 
Any, any thoughts on I'm a Celebrity over here? Have you been watching it, Sean? You love that kind of thing, don't you? I watch it from behind the sofa, groaning. <laughs> I thought it reached its lowest ebb when they tried to get that earwig out of Jason Donovan's bum. <laughs> Dr. Bob got involved, and I, I, I'm fascinated by Dr. Bob because a few series ago he was called Dr. Bob, and then last series he was called Medic Bob. Uh. And the last thing you want when someone's got things up your bum is to go, uh, Are you Dr. Bob? Well, Medic Bob, actually. <laughs> actually, it's just Bob. <laughs> I don't even work on the show. <laughs> go on, Bill. There's no need to do that. Uh, there you go. I don't think that adds a lot. So. Uh, <laughs> why don't you do this? <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one in thinking that I don't find it terribly edifying to be in the jungle eating wild animals and insects? Hey, you don't mind it when the woodpeckers are doing it? Yeah. They love a bit of grub, the woodpecker. <laughs> They're at it like woodpeckers. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to do that after every bit? Just go. Let them have their little childish aside. It's all right. We'll carry on. But it is right. What, <laughs> what show do you think you're on? So you're not supposed naughty. to eat insects now, you? No, it's are you not a vegetarian? So much... I'm not a vegetarian, let's not go there, but by... <laughs> That's not a country, vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly honest, the eating of them I don't find quite so objectionable as the, you know, isn't it scary to have about 20 rats thrown over you and that sort of thing. I don't think those rats enjoy it very much. I imagine if you're a rat, there's not many opportunities on modern television. <laughs> There's all yeah. sorts of them. There's been some fantastic documentaries about rats. I myself have featured rats on television in wildlife documentaries many, many times. Yes, I even came out in favour of rats because people always go on about ratty in Wind in the Willows, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, who was in fact a water vole. <gasps> yeah. And yet, and yet, if you look at a rat without knowing that it's a rat and it is swimming in the water, you say, isn't that lovely? Not in the bath, though. Whether it's a... <laughs> it's in my bath. Is that a water vole or a rat? Yeah. Either way, I'm going to fucking kill it. <laughs> OK, let's have a look. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here was the number two talking point this week. Seeing Scott Henshaw refuse to eat an anus was like watching Red Rum pull up at Beecher's Brook. <laughs> I think the cruelest thing about I'm a Celebrity is that they put a bunch of D-list celebs in the jungle during panto season. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Bill and Lee, what have the nation been talking about this week? The, the soaring, spiralling, ever-increasing, rising, rocketing cost of the Olympics. Do you know how much it's going to cost? Uh, opposition critics are claiming that it's going to uh, cost London £8 billion when the original estimate was £2.4 billion. I know some Latvian <laughs> blokes in Charlotte who do it for half the price. <laughs> And no VAT. <laughs> it just proves every builder is the same, no matter what level. They could build a country mm. and the lying fuckers. They are. <laughs> oh, we could do that for 10 million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, you've got the job. They're liars, it's they just, all do it. I think they're just optimistic. They're naturally <laughs> optimistic people builders. They look at it, they go, yeah. we could do this in a week. Yeah. This is easy. <laughs> what do you need, a running track and a pool? Not a bother. <laughs> where exactly, where is the Olympic village going to be? Exactly. In uh, Stratford. Is it Stratford? Mm. Sort of out Edmonton way, that sort of way, isn't it? No, no? Stratford way. Stratford way, all right. <laughs> but it's sort of in the east Edmonton's end. Edmonton's more out Edmonton way. And yes. if you want to get there, you go up sort of towards Edmonton. Do you? But if you want to get to Stratford, you sort of head towards Stratford <laughs> and eventually you're sort of in Stratford. Just so you know, this is the official directions for the marathon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK, well, let's have a look and see if the Olympics is one of the top five most talked about things this week. <laughs> Yes, indeed it is. The Olympics is going to cost us £8 billion. That is disgusting. For that sort of money, we could have another three weeks in Iraq. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about this week? Uh, well, we think it was the former KGB agent spy who was uh, poisoned in London. The Kremlin said it had nothing to do with them, so that's them ruled out, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, that is conclusive. I wonder who did it. As the full investigation, we phoned the Kremlin, we said, were you involved? They said, no. <laughs> no, we definitely weren't, so... Oh, why? <laughs> I've got to say, I think, I think there's also a sort of slightly racist thing here, you know, that we assume that this sort of thing could only possibly happen with Russians. But it can happen in other countries. It can happen in this country, I absolutely... Well, it did happen in this country. Well, I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, let's see if it's one of the top five talking points this week. Yeah. 
Yes, this is the sad story that a former Russian spy was poisoned and died in London this week. The former KGB spy said, I ate in a restaurant last night in London and something disagreed with me. The Russian government. <laughs> what else have the nation been talking about? Tom Cruise, getting married? You're broken hearted. Too short. I was talking to Griff. <laughs> <laughs> they got married in Rome, which is a bit odd because they're a Scientology faith. Yeah. Get married in Rome, in Italy. Why is that odd? Well, it's, it's like Catholics getting married at a Star Trek convention. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Interestingly, the, the um, critics of the, of the marriage have said that Scientology is a made up religion. Well, <laughs> unlike every other religion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Christianity. Far from that, far from that, isn't it? It's like, uh, no, no, he could walk on water and he could, yeah, he could raise the dead and just eat that, that's his body, and that's, his body. <laughs> that's perfectly normal, obviously. There's a line so, yeah, in it. It is normal compared to the Scientologists who believe that we're all exiled aliens called Thetans. <laughs> I'm a Scientologist. Are Don't you a like Scientologist? Me. Yeah, I am. I'm not surprised. I'm a fuck. Look at your face. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill, you're a Scientologist. No, Lee, Lee, they really all believed you. <laughs> Bring it on, Griff. <laughs> Lee, you're one of the few people Scientology turned down. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody thetons, though. They come over here, don't they? Inhabiting our bodies, shagging our women. <laughs> <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Tom and Katie's wedding is up there. <laughs> yes, Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes tied the knot this week in Italy. It was a traditional Jedi wedding. Sorry, Scientology, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> At the end of the wedding, the minister said, you may now stand on a telephone directory and kiss the bride. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. What is the last story in the top five? OK, uh, we, we think it possibly could be the government has had this wheeze to have super nannies for teaching parenting skills to kids with asbos and stuff like that. Um, and they seem to be, like, uh, influenced by TV programmes, the government at the moment. Yeah, they do love it, don't they? Jamie's school dinners. I know right. Super Nanny. Yeah, how does Tony Blair get so much time to watch so much early evening TV? Mm. I don't know how he does it. The thing is, a lot of our wartime leaders mm. have been bothered about winning the war. He's taking a very sort of laissez-faire attitude. <laughs> also, <laughs> watching a lot more telly again. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> Never win this. <laughs> I think you should watch the news. <laughs> Probably doesn't like it. It comes out of it quite badly, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Also, how can he get his, his math so wrong? There must be how many thousands and thousands and thousands of kids have got asbos, and he, he's only sending 70. Yeah, but they're which... super nannies. Mm. <laughs> OK. These, these ladies can fly. <laughs> <laughs> the best way to deal with this is get all those kids with behavioural problems, put them on a plane and fly them to a country where you're allowed to give them a good clout. <laughs> Saudi Arabia, somewhere like that. That's more than a good clout, Sean. <laughs> 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 right, let's have a look and see if it's up there. Oh, hey. Hey. Yes, Tony Blair has announced plans to hire super nannies to help parents. The government's new transport policy has been revealed. Blair plans to pimp our rides. <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's one point to Sean's team and four points to Dave's team. Oh, thank you. The next round is called the poll with a hole. Sean's team to go first. While on a job, one in four builders, what? Well, I'd just like to say, at 4-1 down, we've never come back from a score like that, so we actually just concede. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, that's, that's the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> well, we've never had this had before. It'd just be the test card for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> you do look a bit like that girl from the test card, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts on this? One in four builders? <laughs> it's obvious. It's while on a job, one in four builders does some fucking work and the <laughs> other three watch. <laughs> Is it compliments a young lady on her massive tits? <laughs> <laughs> if only it stopped at that, I have to say, as a matter of fact. Well, they compliment you as well on your massive tits. <laughs> 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 All right, Bill! Hey! <laughs> no, it's Bill. B-I-W. It's Bill. So, and you can tell how they're spelling it just from them shouting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hey. I've never yet been called by my name properly by Bill. It's always Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it's not always Bill. What are they shout apart from Boo? Just like, uh, do you like me? And things like that. <laughs> do you like me? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard some loads of insights. I've never heard anyone shout. Do you like me, Bill? Because <laughs> <laughs> I like you. <laughs> These builders, they don't have big black moustaches and they're in village people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
the area of North London I live in. One in four builders ends up shagging the lonely housewife on the kitchen table whilst the husband is Without away. Bird watching. Yeah, not bird watching. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what were you doing, Bill? Sorry, Bill, were you really bird watching with those binoculars? <laughs> or are you just. Hang on, he's giving her one. <laughs> he only came to do the kitchen. <laughs> I can give you a clue, I can tell you it's something to do with their unexpected eating habits. Gourmet food in their packed it's, lunches. Well, you're, you're pretty close with that. Fruit. A salad. Correct answer. <laughs> yeah, this is extraordinary, ladies and gentlemen. While on a job, one in four builders regularly has sushi or salad for lunch. Which begs the question, why are they such fat bastards? <laughs> OK, Dave, Fiona and Griff, on their first mission, 75% of astronauts what? Never left Earth. <laughs> Do you think they landed on the moon? Do you think that's a genuine thing? Nah. Well, you can see the shadows of the photos. Well, there's proof if ever we needed it. Oh, so. <laughs> And the flag's flying. The flag's oh. flying? Oh. But there's wind, but there's wind on the moon. The moon's very windy. Oh, the he's been there. The moon is not windy. Yes, it is very windy. It is not it windy. Otherwise, whoa, whoa, whoa. they'd Let's have built this. a windmill up there oh, or something I'm like prepared. that. I'm prepared to go toe-to-toe <laughs> -to -toe with the hardest man in England on this one. <laughs> it's bloody windy up there. Wind? Wind is no, air blowing around, you yeah. see. <laughs> it's air blowing about. That's why wind is on the moon. Wind wind makes it comes in your face with the air. Of course there's there air, is on, the air on the moon, on the moon. Kids, shut up! I can't believe I'm playing you an inch four on. All right, you know what? Okay. Easy. Yeah. Hey, I think we've upset Fiona. Let's no. all just take a moment. Right. There's air. There's no oxygen on the moon. Oh, there is air. It just hasn't got any oxygen in it. And it What's gets it made of, then? Yoghurt? What's it made of, then? Yoghurt? Stuff. <laughs> you would make the best science professor in the world. <laughs> Other stuff, <laughs> Moody <Mooney> Air. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> On their first mission, 75% of astronauts what? Play with their own piss like this. Woo, woo. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> they eat the packed lunch before they get to the stratosphere. <laughs> Nothing left for the rest, no. Demand <laughs> a lot of air miles from NASA. <laughs> No, I think you'll find there's no air uh, up there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's air. It's moon air. <laughs> We're doing a whole series about it soon. Yes. About <laughs> moon air. Or, just for fun, one of them goes... Tss, can anyone hear that? <laughs> I bet at least one of them goes, are we there yet? <laughs> it's taken ages. <laughs> But you didn't have to do that in a northern accent. Yeah, I did, cos I was trying to be stupid. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's something to do with their stomachs. Any thoughts? I wish they hadn't had a curry last night. <laughs> Throw up! Throw up is exactly the right oh, answer. Well done, Griff. Yes, on their first mission, 75% of astronauts throw up. Of course, the other 25% blow up. <laughs> It's not my fault. Talk to NASA. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Bill and Lee have two points. Dave, Fiona and Griff have five points. <laughs> <That's what's going laughs> on. Welcome back to 8 out of 10 Cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement and all they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. OK, this is for everyone. Let's have a look at a clip to illustrate the statistic. Suda. I don't seem to have an email from you again. Really? I sent it at three. Well, it's not here. I don't understand. I sent it. I thought you wrote down how to do it. Yes. Well, perhaps you wrote it wrong with your dyslexia and or. Is there? That was a clip from a training video for office managers. If you've got dyslexia, there is a number you can call, but pointless giving it to you, you won't be able to write it down, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Your related statistic, 16% of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscope. Do you think that's true or false? What are you? I'm a Virgo. Ha. What are you then, Fiona? I'm a Piscean. A Piscean? Least likely to kill somebody in your family if you're a Piscean. Least likely to kill someone. <laughs> you are clutching at straws. <laughs> Here's some advice: don't put that in a personal ad. <laughs> <laughs> Tom uh, Bowers. Apart from the magpies, obviously. 
You want to see two magpies, haven't That's you? That's typical Or else you're in the shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on, you must see two magpies every day, surely? Uh, several. Would you call yourself lucky? Absolutely. Every time I go past a building site, somebody goes... <laughs> I like you. Come on, then you get hey, lucky. Bill! Bill, come here! <laughs> I want to make love to you, Bill! I don't think it's ever happened before, but I imagine this weekend it's going to be happening a lot. <laughs> Builders, if you're watching, please. <laughs> for us. <laughs> can you make bird noises? I don't Some know. of them, yeah. I can make the one of one of a bird hit the pavement. <laughs> it's the only one I do, really. What would you like? I would like a chaffinch. Yeah. Well, no, a chaffinch, all right. It's like a fast bowler running up, and so he goes... Want to do, 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 That's cone dough. No, he comes up. Boom, 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 boom. Well, that, that's what the, the bird makes that noise. <laughs> Did Bill just stand up then? Amazing, that's extraordinary. A man actually gets out of his seat and is smaller than when he was sitting down. <laughs> Bill Oddie, I've had it up to here. <laughs> Have you really had Bill Oddie up to there? <laughs> you bloody haven't. Yeah, I used to work on a building site late. <laughs> but you don't know what this one is. <laughs> this is for true, this is true. It goes... <laughs> That's not an impression of a bird. It is! That's a midlife crisis, is no. what that is, Bill. It's one of the best loved birds in the country. Is it a uh, blackbird on a moped? <laughs> <laughs> is, is it a forgetful sparrow? <laughs> uh... <laughs> Very nice. It's, it's a puffin. Is it? Yes. Ah, oh, very well loved. I'm always bumping into puffins. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just remind us, and I think you may find this amusing, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to remind you what the question is. 16% of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscopes, true or false. The fuck are you people talking about? Sixteen percent of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscopes, true or false? Well, it's, we think it's true. You think it's true? Oh, I... Yeah. What do you think? We you think, think it's so? false. I think it's possible, but unlikely. Thanks for that, Lee. That's really cleared I mean, things up. Really... <laughs> I can tell you that the answer is true. Yay! So, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's two points for Sean's team and six points for Dave's team. Yay! And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Britain's favourite noise. <laughs> Is it that honking noise that women's breasts make when you go out? <laughs> that last one was Jordan. <laughs> Is it a <laughs> That's the biggest hit I've ever seen. <laughs> OK, it's not that. <laughs> I mean, it might be. It isn't that Britain's favourite noise. How about... <laughs> What was that? That's an albatross shitting on Bill Oddie. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be delighted. Albatrosses are quite wet, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he's shat in my it's face! Hey. <laughs> Go on, what do you think favourite noise it... might be? Oh, wow, that is... that. You're so close with that. Oh, oh, with glug, 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 Exactly the right glug. answer. Yes, Britain's favourite noise is the glug of wine as it pours into a wine glass. I think that statistic is skewed by the fact that the people most likely to stop and talk to a woman with a clipboard are winos. <laughs> Next question. Thing most likely to make men cry? Catching your knob and your zip. <laughs> I don't understand how anyone does that. Because normally when I do my trousers up, I've put my penis away. Yeah. <laughs> I've had the presence of mind to finish my, my urination yeah. and yeah. put the penis away and then do my trousers up. I don't yeah. shake it, then go, ah! <laughs> I forgot to put my penis away. No, the thing is, no, so it would be a miracle if I was in a toilet in the first place, if I was that bleeding stupid. <laughs> I'd probably be standing in the this food hall at Harris, pissing on some cheese. <laughs> thing most likely to make men cry, Griff? It's a little pony with a very long mane <laughs> getting separated from its mothers and getting lost in the enchanted forest. <laughs> and then, after a lot of adventures, finally finding its way... <laughs> back! <laughs> To its mother <laughs> and the rest of the herd. Speaking for the older generation, I would have to say that it's accepting that your daughter's friends simply think of you as 
her dad. <laughs> so you're crying because you can't fuck your daughter's friends? <laughs> Come on. That is perhaps the most honest answer we've ever had on this show. Great image, isn't it? Just so we go up to Bill on you go, oh, you must be Joanne's dad. <laughs> Welcome to Springwatch. I've got some binoculars, I'm in a shed. <laughs> My daughter's having a sleepover. <laughs> Should be a hell of a show. OK, yeah. thing most likely to make men cry, something you do in the kitchen. Oh, onions. 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 Onions is exactly That's the right answer, correct. Yeah. Well, well, well. That sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Bill and Lee have two points, but our winners are Dave, Fiona and Griff with eight points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. <laughs>to show about opinion, polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 60% of cosmetic surgery patients are disappointed with the results, although they look pleasantly surprised? <laughs> A quarter of the over-50s are failing to save. It's control S, you old buffers. <laughs> While abroad, two-thirds of Brits are more sexually adventurous. So, look out, Iraq. <laughs> One in four Brits claims that their post has been lost or stolen. Well, I can reassure you, it was definitely stolen. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking point. <laughs> We needed an S on the end of it, didn't it? Yeah, right, right. Right, right, uh, talking point. Yeah. Do the S again. Yeah. It's... It could be one of mine. Hey. Dave, Jade and Chris, what have the nation been talking about this week? Uh, take that aback with the uh, Inland Revenue Tour, I think it is, basically. <laughs> it's not front page news, surely to God. They've got no, the Beatles have got a hit album. Oh, right? hang on, there's a lady going through the menopause as we speak. <laughs> That's how take that fan speak. What? Uh, news words, they just go, woo! <laughs> <laughs> how are you today? <laughs> woo hoo! <laughs> you want a cup of tea? <laughs> woo! <laughs> Childline set up a, a hotline right after Take That yeah. split up. In 1996, the Samaritans set up a special helpline for yeah. distraught fans. Yes. It's the only time the Samaritans have ever been allowed to use the words, oh, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> On the phone. <laughs> Just <laughs> fucking grow up. <laughs> Why are they called Take That? What's the name mean? On their video, they had this thing saying, if you don't like it, throw it in the bin. Take that. That's my favourite thing you've ever said. <laughs> Those are the instructions that come with their video. Well, they said it, they said it. I promise, I watched it in my caravan with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. I imagine that was a party. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if Take That at number one is up there. Yes, it is. 
Yes, Take That have returned to the top of the charts. The reunion took longer than expected to put together because no one could remember who Howard was. <laughs> they spent six months rehearsing with a bloke from the Halifax advert. <laughs> Vic, Sean and John, what have the nation been talking about this week? I think they're talking about Michael Grade going from the uh, BBC over to ITV. You know, they're saying he got something like eight million and he's saying he didn't do it for the money. No. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> he's genuinely saying that, though. He's kind of come yeah. out in the press and gone, it's not about the money. You don't... I don't do a job for the money. What the hell do you do it for? He said he, said he did it for the challenge. The challenge being getting all that money home in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> ITV said it was a real coup. It's not, is it? No. A real coup would be when ITV's tanks actually roll into Television Centre. <laughs> that would be... A real coup. That would be an actual coup. <laughs> ITV have done it because ITV, apparently, is not doing very well at the moment. So they've stolen Chief from stealing. Channel One... Stolen, I mean. <laughs> stolen. <laughs> Chief from Channel One to come over and do it. But what really muddles my brain is... <laughs> <laughs> What muddles your brain? No, what muddles my brain is if they've got all that money to offer him, why don't they just make better TV programmes? I hope he finally ends Coronation Street, because this first series is really dragging on. <laughs> you know what he's doing to Coronation Street? What? He's changing. He's going to be CSI Weatherfield. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yes, indeed it is. Yes, Michael Grade has announced he's moving to ITV. ITV needs him, they're in trouble. I tried to tape the mint the other night and my Sky Plus box started crying. <laughs> Dave, Chris, Jade, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Chris. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What have you been talking about? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> I've been talking about the, uh, this royal editor of the News of the World, Dave. Oh, yeah, they've been listening in to people's phone calls. <laughs> yes, I was listening to stuff. But well, they've actually been tapping into the voicemail, that's how they do it. They hack into yeah. the voicemail and put some sort of cord in. If you were phoning up a royal like Prince Charles, you wouldn't leave like an important message on voice. If he doesn't answer, you're not going to leave... It's not going to happen, is it? You're not going to pick up any real news. It's not going to be like the Queen phoning Prince Charles and going, Hello, Charles, Mum here. I think I'll abdicate. Give us a ring later on. You know, it... <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it? No, you'd but... text that, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> the Queen doesn't use a phone. She does? She doesn't use... No, she hasn't. She has a, a big chain of butlers and they just whisper messages along. <laughs> <laughs> Go for miles. <laughs> Let's see if it's up there. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. A News of the World journalist has admitted tapping royal phones. The journalist will soon be sending messages of his own to his cellmate in Morse code by clenching and unclenching his buttocks. <laughs> Was that a dot or a dash? Please get out of my bin. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, over to you. What else have the nation been talking about this week? The Pope went to Turkey, which sounds like the start of a joke, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> the Pope went to Turkey. <laughs> the Pope ate a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and he went to Turkey and uh, there was a lot of protests. I think the interesting about it was, was when he looked at his diary on the Monday and he went, Turkey, Wednesday? Who put this in? <laughs> it's dangerous for him to go to Turkey, though, because it's a very sunny country and uh, popes can die in those pope mobiles if the archbishop who's driving them doesn't crack the window when he uh, are you saying popes die in hot cars yeah. <laughs> popes die in hot pope mobiles that's what happens that may be the most limiting safety campaign ever launched if you can save just if one, one life, life yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well i can tell you that the pope isn't one of the most talked about things this week but he did make an official visit to turkey the pope ever the diplomat was very happy with the warm welcome he received he said, at least I think it was a warm welcome, from what I could understand of their jibber-jabber language. <laughs> Figures or buzzers, what else have people been talking about this week? Uh, we think it's the fallout uh, from this KGB poisoning. That still rumbles on. There seems to be three suspects. It's either Putin and the Kremlin, it's either enemies of Putin and the Kremlin, who are trying to discredit him, or it's a group of ex-KGB spies led by a guy called Igor the Poisoner. <laughs> The police said the, the death was suspicious. <laughs> yeah. I think they should upgrade it to yeah. fucking suspicious. <laughs> Is he having a traditional Russian burial where they put them in a, a little coffin inside a bigger coffin, inside a much bigger coffin? <laughs> I think you're fine, Dave. A traditional Russian burial, you have to dig your own grave. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> But don't blame me, blame Stalin. <laughs> no, on a serious note, we indicted her because it was on the planes. Yeah. It was in a bag. Yeah. yeah. Unless they put it in TK Maxx, you'll be fine. <laughs>
They found oh, it yeah. a restaurant. They found it in two hotels. On a humpback whale. <laughs> <laughs> humpback whale's got a ten-foot dick, hasn't it? Sounds like the start of a song. Yeah, I was going to say. Oh, the humpback whale's got a ten-foot cock. Do da, do da. The humpback whale's got a ten-foot cock, and it's so hard as a rock. That's I a think I... <laughs> I think I've won money on you singing in the first ten minutes. <laughs> You have gone quite a long way to kill him. This is, it's a lot of effort, isn't it? Uh, to it kill is somebody by radiation. Why don't we just you shoot him? No. Whoa. No, we're going to kill him by radiation. I think maybe the KGB are having some kind of union issues with their snipers. <laughs> <laughs> but the KGB, the interesting thing about this is the KGB aren't called the KGB anymore. They're called the FSB, which worries me, because I think I bought a sofa from them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if the Russian poisoning is up there. Yes, it is. This is the ongoing poisoning story. Doctors are advising anyone who's come into contact with polonium-210 to shit their liver out and then move house. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about? Uh, but people have been talking about the fact that England lost the first test of the ashes. What have they been saying, then? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> or, oh, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> Our best, best chance we've got to keep the ashes is give up cricket. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't play their best bowler, which is a good idea, because they should, you know... Who's he, then? Monty Panasar. Actually, Australia have never uh, declared independence, so technically, we always win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vic, do you watch cricket? I like the fellow with the glass eye. What okay, was it called? What's that bloke you talked about before? Who? Who what for? That cricketer that you mentioned. Monty Panesar. Him, with the glass eye. Has <laughs> he got a glass eye? Yeah. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I can we... prove it! You can prove it. <laughs> What's that say there? <laughs> <Look>. <laughs> That's evidence. That's proof. Look, what does it say there? Proof. Proof. Right. <laughs> thing is, it's not it's him, because he's got a turban, Monty Panasar. He took it off on that shot. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a sec. That's not a photo. <laughs> I've never seen what the ashes look like. So when you say ashes, I do presume, obviously, when someone dies, that they get turned into ashes. <laughs> but Sorry, in this what, case, did you I do that? I didn't realise you were Catholic. Can, can we have that again? <laughs> when someone dies... I don't know, something the like that. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> She's showing people who... I don't want to die, it's me. <laughs> I don't want to die, my face doesn't want to die, neither are these fellas. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the ashes is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, the ashes continue. I guess if England wants to enjoy a sporting victory, we're just going to have to wait until Wimbledon. Come on, Tim. <laughs> At the end of that round, it's two points for Sean's team and three points for Dave's team. <laughs> the next round is called the poll with a hole. Dave, Jade and Chris, here's your first one. 33% of young men say they would what just to impress their friends? Anything. They're mad, they're idiots. Climb a pile on, bum a goat, punch a nun. Anything. <laughs> 33% of young men say they would spunk on a cracker and eat it just to impress their friends. Oh! oh. oh. On a cracker? Oh. No, but that's a, that's a big thing yeah. in the States with college and college. Digestive, of yeah. course. Maybe yeah. a hot roll. <laughs> fig roll? That's not it. I don't, I don't like fig rolls. I'm allergic. I'm not allergic to them, but I won't eat them. Why? <laughs> Do you not when agree with them? When I was a them? little kid, I went to a party <laughs> and there was a game of pin the tail on... This is true. Pin the tail on the donkey. And I cheated. Right, I went like that, and I pinned it straight on, first go. Obviously, I thought, got away with it. Mm. And the prize was some fig rolls. <laughs> and not only did I cheat, I was greedy as well, and I ran off and I ate all the fig rolls in one go. <laughs> then I was sick. <laughs> and strangely, the thing I didn't learn from that was, don't cheat. I learned, don't like fig rolls. <laughs> 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 Thirty-three percent of young men say they would what just to impress their friends? Would have a willy implant. A willy implant. <laughs> you make it longer. I watched a programme on it the other day. Willy extension. Ah, see. 
<laughs> I'm thinking of having a conservatory put on the end of mine. <laughs> for, for the summer months. It's it's be the a devil to get the planning permission, isn't it? <laughs> With something that size, Chris, it is difficult, yes. <laughs> uh, Vic, what do you think young men do to impress their friends? Well, it's obvious that they uh, spend a week in a coal bunker. <laughs> Did calculate pi? <laughs> 7,000 points. Uh, it's not... No, it's not pi, 7. but it is to do with eating something. No, when I said calculate pi, I meant the mathematical equation, not pi. Yeah, but words can mean two things at the same time. <laughs> Eat a really hot curry. Exactly yeah. the right Yay! answer. Yay! Yes. Yes, 33% of young men say they would eat an unbearably hot curry just to impress their friends. Yes, I'll have a number 68 uh, with a number 33 followed by an extremely painful number 2. <laughs> Sean, Vic and John. 99% of the over 50s say that what has got more difficult over the last 10 years? Being under 40. <laughs> Firstly. <laughs> but there's still 1% that it's not a problem mm. for. <laughs> But who is that person? <laughs> Doctor Who. The time travellers, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I can't live forever. I'm just not able to die. It's the doctor who can only live forever. This, see, this is really scary because I talk about it like it's actually real. <laughs> <laughs> How frightening is that? Quite frightening close up. Yeah. <laughs> well, over 50s, uh, imagine uh, Countdown. It's got a lot tougher over the last two years. <laughs> <laughs> your brain's going Indeed. smaller and smaller because it gets that's how you die, isn't it? Your brain, as you get older, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it pops out of your ear, and then you die. <laughs> I'm speaking as an over 50 here. Remembering stuff as as you get older, you just forget all sorts of shit. When it's like if you're looking for scissors, you have to incorporate a little mime when you get to a certain age. You're going like scissors, scissors, scissors. <laughs> if that's going to help, as if that's some sort of scissor diviner that's going to go scissors. There they are. <laughs> Sudoku. No, that's only came along a couple of years ago. I remember I went on holiday, came back, there was two new phenomenons. Happy slapping and Sudoku. <laughs> Which one did you go for? <laughs> <laughs> I used to happy slap people who are doing Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 99% of the over 50s say that what has got more difficult over the last 10 years? Come on, Vic, we need these points. What, playing the bazooka? I don't know. <laughs> Walking up the stairs. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Sorry, I just ain't coming to my head. Best to get it out quickly. You don't want any stuff clogging it up in there. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll give you a clue. It's to do with um, it's to do with being all fingers and thumbs. Opening a milk carton. <laughs> I'll give you that. Opening packaging. Opening is the packaging. Yeah. <laughs> you got yes, 99% of the over 50s say that opening packaging has got more difficult in the last 10 years. The survey was originally about Scottish devolution, but they wittered on about packaging anyway. <laughs> So at the end of that round, Sean, Vic and John have three points. Dave, Jade and Chris have four points. Well Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. Everyone, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Hey, praise the Lord, Jesus is Lord. Get the writing on the back. Going, so. Well, it's all fixed in Jesus' name. We're just, we're just standing in faith. Amen. Where do you put the Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Have you got a spare wheel? No. Well, I don't know whether it's there, but I know in faith that we've got one. Amen. I didn't know that we had no MOT. Because we were on our way to a glory meeting, I knew we didn't have a worry. You see, God doesn't see the MOT. Because we've got the Lord Jesus Christ with us, and each and every one of us on this bus, We've been saying to it. We are very, very lucky. Who can tell what God can the stupid bug! God doesn't see the MLT. Oh no. <laughs> oh. He doesn't like it if you're untaxed though. <laughs> It was your related statistic. 62% of Brits <coughs> say they would believe in God if they saw a man walk on water. Is that true or false? Could be ice. You could be walking on ice. Yeah. yeah. Technically, yeah. on ice, there's a thin layer of water on top that keeps the ice smooth. So you are walking on water. So yeah. there is a God. <laughs> <laughs> Many Brits are quite cynical. I think 62% of Brits wouldn't believe in God if they saw God 
walking on water. <laughs> David Copperfield walked through the Great Wall of China once and saw it. So he could do it, couldn't he? He made the Taj Mahal disappear. The Indian tourist board were livid. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, do you believe in God? I don't just want to sit here and say, no, I don't believe in God and I get in grave and that's the end of me. I'd like to think that I could come well, back as a bee or something. <laughs> <laughs> do you know most people now have in their wills that they want to be buried with their mobile phone on a full charge? <sighs> Just in case they're not dead and they wake up, they can call somebody oh. and we get them out. They're not going to get a signal. <laughs> if I was buried with my phone, and I was like, they wake up, I'd start phoning people up going, Oh, it's me. <laughs> 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 I never liked you. <laughs> there was a rapper in the States buried in his Cadillac because they couldn't find a coffin that was big enough for him. He was so big and they buried him in the <laughs> Cadillac. Get you out your ass with a crane if you're overweight in America. Yeah, yeah. That's a bit harsh, that. Yeah. I think the best way to get someone out, someone really big, out of a house is with those mincing machines. <laughs> <laughs> Does yeah. make me worry, though. What? Because I like to eat a bit, and if I ever did overindulge more than what I normally do, and I did fall asleep and then woke up and I was like, massive. How would I get the ass? Like, I worry. Sorry, you're talking about actually you having a big meal and then just going. Jay. <laughs> Jay. Oh, if you live in a cartoon. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Well, maybe maybe she's got a ripcord. She just goes. <laughs> 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 okay, we're well, back back to God. 62% um, of Brits say they would believe in God if they saw a man walk on water. Is that true or false? We're so used to illusionists, brilliant illusionists like yeah. Mr. Blaine or Paul Daniels even. You know, <laughs> the way he passed himself off as a magician all those years. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'd say, no, it's false. What about over here? What do you think? We're no. going to say true. I'm true. captain's decision, yeah, six right. to two percent. True. True. Well, I can tell you the answer is false. Oh, yes. But Sean's got the point there. Oh. It's obviously false. <laughs> yes, just 20 percent of Brits say they would believe in God if they saw a man walk on water. Interestingly, 37 percent of people would believe in God if they saw a man come back from the dead. Have they not seen Deal or No Deal? It's happened. <laughs> So at the end of that round, it's four points for Sean's team and four points for Ooh. Dave's team. Ooh. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and it's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Britain's most disappointing day trip. Basra. <laughs> I think the most disappointing day trip would be to a diabetic's birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You wouldn't get any cake. <laughs> But if you like hummus... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Vic, you've been on a few day trips in your time, surely? Um, the most disappointing one was the sun. <laughs> Very hot and sweaty. Have well, you any proof that you went to the sun? Probably, somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Most disappointing day trip. Is it Madame Tussauds after a fire? <laughs> you are absolutely right, and it's Madame Tussauds. Yay. Yeah. Yes, Britain's most disappointing day trip is Madame Tussauds. It's basically novelty candles. <laughs> Top thing to do before you're ten. Does it get to nine? <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be right up there, isn't it? Surely. <laughs> Surely. I think it's appear on You've Been Framed falling backwards off a slide and crushing a hamster. <laughs> <laughs> Get adopted by Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Neverland and drink Jesus juice. Oh, yeah. oh. oh come on! Yeah. Right. You all thought it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, when I was ten, if they'd given me the option. <laughs> you want to do what with me? Yeah. There's a fun fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right over, yeah. <laughs> Vic, any thoughts? Well, it'll be ride a sea serpent to Banbury Cross. No <laughs> <laughs> <I> doubt. <laughs> you have any proof, Vic? I've got a speeding charge coming up. Could you come and draw a picture of my car going quite slow? No worries, I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> you think you could... I'll do, I'll do a picture of you in your car with slow written above it. 
<laughs> well, that is all they'll need, because they've sent me a picture of the car going quite fast. <laughs> <laughs> Why not just have him not in the car at all? Water ski. Exactly, I'll put someone else in the car. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. Brezhnev. <laughs> <laughs> OK, top thing to do before you ten. It's an overnight thing. Ham! Correct. Yes, the top thing to do before your tent is camp out in the garden. Camping with your child is a great way to teach them about wildlife. That's an owl, that's a fox, that rustling sound is a released psychiatric patient <laughs> trying to get through our hedge. <laughs> right, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Vic and John have four points, but Dave, Jade and Chris have one with six points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience and all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Housewife's favorite, Alan Carr. The Jungle VIP, David Guest. And their captain, John Locke. And facing them tonight, the queen of comedy, Joan Rivers. The prince of pop world, Alex Shane. And their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. Well, thanks very much. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, David Beckham is the only English player to have scored in three World Cups, with two personal assistants and a hairdresser. <laughs> the largest consumer of fortune cookies in Europe is Greece. Tomorrow you will eat hummus and have a hairy wife. <laughs> and inbreeding causes three out of every ten Dalmatian dogs to go deaf in Disney's bleakest ever Christmas film. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave, Joan, Alex, what have the nation been talking about this week? Um, I think it's this great story that the NHS are going to offer dance lessons to fatties, basically, isn't it? They're going to help them with the obesity crisis. But the only way you're going to get fat people on the dance floor, I think, is by making the announcement, the buffet is now open. <laughs> Just across the dance floor, though. And it's, a, it's another government gimmick, isn't it? It must be awful to see, like, here, like, a fat person dance. I'm not being over, but, you know, like, the... Uh, 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 well, that's the shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's going to be a slow process. <laughs> I resent people talking about fatties like this. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. belong to Overeaters Anonymous. Really? Yes, this is the truth. And it's a, it, it's very, a lot of you here are thin, so, <laughs> but it is very, very sad because we all sit there and the women cry. Cry and they go, no one loves me. And I always say, yes, yes, your butcher loves you. Your, your, your baker loves you. And one woman, I mean, last week, which we had before I came over here, she was saying things like, I went on an airplane and she was sobbing. And she said, and they made me buy two seats. And she just cried. And then I said, yes, but now you can have two meals. And she perked up. <laughs> We want to be fat, God damn it, we can be fat. That's the way it goes. So, I mean, David, are you, do, you, do you dance? No, I have, a, I have a cousin. You have a cousin? Yeah. <laughs> I have a cousin. Good answer. I have yeah. a cousin, 279 pounds. 279 pounds. He started ballroom dancing, Fred Astaire studio, met right. this lovely woman, five months, lost 100 pounds, got syphilis, and died. <laughs> If that's not being made into a musical, yeah. I... <laughs> I'm too come dancing too literally, I think, really. <laughs> OK, well, uh, let's have a look and see whether uh, Fatty Dance Classes is one of the top five most talked about things this week. Yes, it is. Oh, just... Yes, it was. Yes! Oh. 
Yeah. All right, that's good. Sean, sure, David, Aaron, uh, what else have the nation been talking about this week? I imagine a lot of people are quite upset uh, about England losing the Ashes. Well, I mean, virtually losing, losing the second test. And uh, I, think, I think it's stupid, really, because what we invented the game, we should just change the rules to suit us. <laughs> so in that match, we should have said, ah, ah, yeah, we just made this new rule up. Like, if we have tomato soup, lowest score wins. <laughs> <laughs> So just stuff like that, just make up rules. If it's cloudy, oh, uh, no, you can't lose on a cloudy day. Just anything. <laughs> you make the sport up, you can do what you want. You're not wearing the right pants. We win. <laughs> My dad tried to get me... He's always trying to get me sporting. He tried to get me interested in cricket, right? And I hate cricket, it's so boring. He told me that the Ashes, yeah, were Ellen Daniels from Neighbours. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, a spark of interest And I was there. like... Ellen Daniels, you say. And I was hooked. <laughs> Joan, have you ever seen a cricket match? I hate sports. You hate sports? I go to tennis matches, I don't even turn my head, you know. The ball doesn't come back, that idiot missed it. I mean, it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like sports. Yeah. Well, I don't like sport either. Really? Well, yeah. Because you look like quite a sporty... <laughs> yeah. Do you I not, get... Have you not been... I you get... work out, though, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, In I... indie clubs. <laughs> You big cricket fan, David? You, you aware of cricket? No, more baseball. More baseball. Yeah. Have you heard of cricket? <laughs> of course. He forgets I was in the outback and I yeah. just it was with all these crickets all over there. Yeah. You knew Fina, right? Um, well, I didn't actually watch... I, I meant to watch it, but um, at okay. the last minute I fell pregnant. <laughs> So it's been quite a few, quite a few crazy weeks for me as well. So uh, <laughs> turns out it was a scare. But no, no. What did she do? What did Fina do? She stole all the food. She stole all the food. Yeah. Really? She ate a few crickets too. Did she? Yeah. People have to eat testicles, don't they? No, it's an anus. Matt, it? Matt ate an anus. Someone had to eat an anus. Yeah. Oh, Matt. Matt ate an, ate, an ate an anus. Matt ate an anus. Yes. I see. I thought you said a marinated anus. No. A second. <laughs> no. no. We had no, no, nothing, nothing to marinate there. <laughs> what do you eat it like a hula hoop like that? <laughs> <laughs> On I'm a Celebrity, you claimed your maid's name was Vagina Kasiman. Is that true? Yes. Is she real? She's real. Are you sure she's I'm real? I'm positive she's as real as this set is real. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> her mother, and this is the truth, her mother loved her body part so much, she said if she had a girl, she was going to name it Vaginica. Then, no, this is true, not noble. <laughs> then she married... <laughs> a guy named Harry Seaman. Harry Seaman. And she became Vagina Seaman. What's her middle name? I have no idea. She hasn't got a middle name. I suppose she doesn't need one, really. <laughs> Mostly when she tells, tells her name, she's probably just wiping the drink they've just spat in her face. <laughs> 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 Let's get back to the ashes. Should we have a look and see whether the ashes is one of the most talked about things this week? Incredibly, it's the second yes. most talked about thing. The Ashes is a best of five, although England have controversially opted to play worst of three. <laughs> Back over to you, Dave. What else have the nation been talking about this week? John reckons it's Christmas, well, too. Christmas and the politically correctness of Christmas. Oh, yeah. Where they're doing the Queen's speech, and that makes sense to me, and they're having <coughs> a Muslim lady do it. On Channel 4, yeah. yeah. It's the alternative Queen's speech is being done, yeah. done by a Muslim lady Not in a necessary. veil. They could have gone halfway. I mean, she's a, she's a fundamentalist Muslim. She wears the hijab, whatever, the niqab, which she covered. She could have actually really dressed up as Father Christmas with a big beard. <laughs> and, <pulled> the... <laughs> <laughs> and gone, ho, ho, ho. They could have gone halfway. The Muslim lady? Yes. I'm the one that sold her the veil from my New York website. Your New York website? Yeah, I, have a new, I sell veils. You sell veils? <laughs> yeah. Of course you do. What's, yeah. the, what, what's, the, what's the website called again? Yeah. Veils for Muslim women who want to speak in England. <laughs> oh, that website! That website! <laughs> dot com, remember? Dot, dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all crazy. The, the internet now, they had the best day ever. And the, the, yeah, indeed, yeah, the best online day. $182 million in one day mm -hmm. in internet sales. And they looked it up, and it was Mel Gibson buying Nazi memorabilia. <laughs> and I thought that was fascinating. I like online shopping, because you know, like, when you're looking, if you get bored, you can just go to some porn, fill it, perks you up, 
and then you carry on chopping. Now, <laughs> I wish it was like that. Normal shopping. Do you mean like you go around the Trafford Centre, board, someone shows you a cock, you're like, right now. <laughs> Auntie Janice. <laughs> That probably does happen. Oh, I just think it's so great. Everything gets decorated and it's pretty. And I'm Jewish and even I have a Christmas tree and I have a nativity scene. I have Jesus and Mary and the baby, but I'm Jewish, so we have a nanny. But it's just <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> and I dress Mary better. Of course you I do. I put her in a nice Chanel suit and I gave her an Hermes bag. You're the mother of God, look it. And I just <laughs> made her look good. Shall we have a look and see if Christmas is one of the most talked about things this week? Of course oh. it is. The most talked yes. about thing this week. <laughs> if you follow a light in the sky in the Middle East these days, you'll end up tracking a Scud missile into a Palestinian hospital. <laughs> the true meaning of Christmas. <laughs> right, over to you, Sean. What else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it the moon? <laughs> Is it the moon? They're going to build a permanent base on the moon. It's going to take $10 billion, isn't it, to get people up to the moon. And you just know that if you go on the internet, EasyJet are doing it for £17.50. <laughs> One way, no hand luggage, and Stelius going, it's out of this world. <laughs> you just <stand. laughs> Joan Rivers, do you think Americans should be spending this kind of money going to the moon? I think to spend $10 billion to go to the moon is disgusting. They should spend on something important like jewelry. You could get <laughs> three really nice pieces of my jewelry on QVC. You've really cut to the core of this have? issue, I think. A great ring or some stupid trip to the moon. Who gives a fuck? I couldn't care less. <laughs> Twinkle, twinkle, or twinkle, twinkle. Twinkle, uh -huh. twinkle. If they find oil on the moon, though, that's another thing. Yeah, but yeah that'd be a hell of a pipeline, wouldn't it? Yeah, how are they going to get it back? <laughs> well, it'd just fall down onto Earth, wouldn't it? Aren't what? they going to build some sort of cosmic escalator? So it's sport and science you're no good at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they yeah, were. Just, they were, seriously, weren't they? Uh, but they can't get through... Yeah, not into science, am I? They can't get through the Van Allen belts. There's too much radiation. Mm. Belts of radiation above the Earth's surface. That's why the cosmic elevator's going to fail. <laughs> In your face! <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That sounds like a boy that fancied his science teacher. Yeah, you, that could be science, or it could be the lyrics from some indie band as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if it's up there. Oh, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> right, fingers on buzzers. One more thing to get. What else have the nation been talking about? Uh, submarines. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, they want to spend 20 billion pounds on submarines full of missiles. The mis That's it. The missiles are going to be outdated by 2024. How do you know if a missile's gone off or something? Gone off? The bloody big bang out of <laughs> <that. laughs> <laughs> You're implying it was like milk and you'd go... <laughs> <laughs> you just farted. No, it's this scud. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, we never use any of these missiles. They're never used. They're a deterrent, aren't they? It's a shame, really. <laughs> People make these amazing, amazing missiles and nobody ever bothers to use them. <laughs> must be very frustrating if you do make missiles and you just go, why do I bloody bother? <laughs> <laughs> these are made that can wipe out half the population ever. Nobody ever bloody uses them. <laughs> years making this. <laughs> Have you thought of moving to North Korea? Yeah. <laughs> 20 billion for the, the stupid moon thing and 10 billion for this stupid thing. Yeah. Such a waste of money. Well, if they took all that money, everyone would have a tiara. Imagine that. <laughs> oh, I'm for that. No, that's great. I'd rather go with the nuclear weapons. Enough yeah. people think I'm gay. <laughs> Without a fucking tiara. Jesus. <laughs> Without a fucking tiara? Yeah. How often has tiara been prefixed with fucking? <laughs> Where's my fucking tiara? <laughs> Fucking saw you out. Put my fucking tiara back in the fucking box. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if Biden is up there. <laughs> yes, it is. This is the news that the government is spending £20 billion on replacing Trident. £20 billion seems like a lot of money to spend, but it is only 10 pence for every person they're going to kill. <laughs> well, at the end of that, I can tell you Sean's team have two points and Dave's team have three points. <laughs> The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. Dave, Joan and Alex, here is your first question. 40% of couples in counselling say what is a problem? Viagra. 
Oh. 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 These old guys that take Viagra. Oh, and it's good for 36 hours. You know how many orgasms you have to fake? I imagine there's a certain amount of chafing involved as well. <laughs> oh, chafing those poor old dry ladies, they'd set them on fire. <laughs> I <am> just... <laughs> <laughs> That's a painful image, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I imagine Sting would quite like it, though. He does 15 hours with his tantric sex. Is that what he says? Even a terrific swordsman, after six hours... Swordsman? You know, the... <laughs> Where are you from, the 17th I'm century? <laughs> yes. <I'm a> <laughs> Snoring? Oh, you can talk. Oh, brilliant. You snore in the most monumental way, my friend. Thank so, you very so I much. I should explain to the viewers that um, uh, David and Dave are having an yeah. affair. <laughs> <laughs> Does it hurt not locking the bathroom door when she goes to the toilet? They go and sit on the toilet and just leave the door and you keep walking and going, oh! <laughs> but what about men that leave the toilet seat up and they go all over... You know, yeah, what's the you've point? got a pointer and it's a lit room, for God's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> A woman I could understand if we were standing up with a penis, because you'd be looking around, oh, I'd redecorate, you know. <laughs> so I could see what... I'll, I'll give you a clue. It's to do with computers. Watching porn on the computer. That's the correct yes. answer. <laughs> well done, John Lewis, yeah. Yes, 40% of couples in counselling say internet pornography is a problem. I think they should change the internet's name to the pornography. I was on the pornography the other day, and you know what? You can buy train tickets on it. Brilliant. 3% <laughs> of Brits would like Tom Cruise to what? Come out of the closet. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> and he wouldn't come out of the closet anyhow. He's short. He'd come out of a cabinet. Yeah. So it's just a joke. Have uh, you met Tom Cruise? Uh, I produced a salute to him. You produced uh, a salute he, to him? He was honoured. Uh, Jimmy Stewart was honoured and uh, Gene Kelly. It was a great evening. In fact, Miss Rivers was there with her good friend Roddy McDowell. That's right. And... Um, they're all dead now. They're all dead. <laughs> All dead. That must have been the catering then, was it? <laughs> have you met Tom Cruise a few times then? I, I think he's here. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> he's lovely. He's very charming. What do you think 3% of Brits would like Tom Cruise to do? Make Rain Man 2 the revenge. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I would so love that. <laughs> what happens in Rain Man? In Rain Man? He's got an autistic brother and he, he counts matches. That's the only important bit. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it turns out in the sequel, it turns out it's just luck. Every time it's 74, nobody bothers to count them. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a chance he's not autistic. <laughs> he's taking the piss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these autistic people, they've had it too easy too long. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the film. <laughs> I have two cousins that are autistic. What are they called, David? Be some weird name like Clitty. Or... <laughs> Clitty and Anus. Yes, they're. He got their names right. It's Clitty and Anus. <laughs> just came to me, Clitty. <laughs> I found it. That's how I represent the whole you pipe up. <laughs> that was amazing. It was on your mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Three percent of Brits would like Tom Cruise to play them in a film about their life. That's a nice way of saying three percent of Brits are teeny tiny weirdos. <laughs> So at the end of that round, Sean, David and Alan have two points. Uh, Dave, Joan and Alex have four points. Yay! Yeah. Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is called Believe It or Not. So let's have a look at a clip to illustrate the statistic. <laughs> oh my god. You can dream of you will never talk back. Look at how funky he is. <laughs> I will never be hip. I'm hot! And you're not. But if you want to hang with me, I'll give it one shot. Top that. Supersonic, idiotic, disconnected, not respected. Who would ever really want to go and top that? Such a waste of pretty face, but hanging in your nose face. I wish that you would take a look and really stop that. What's this? Stop that. What gives? Stop that. I don't really give a about trying to stop that. Top that. Big deal. Stop that. Unreal. You can try until you blue. I will make a fool of you. Top that. That was the American 80s teen movie, uh, Teen Witch. I thought it was some kind of like public information film about twats. <laughs> <laughs> like 
<laughs> warning you about. There are twats around, and this is what they look like. <laughs> He's wearing the same outfit as me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are twats in our area. Hey, you see you. Here is your related statistic. 34% of adults would rather be a teenager again than win the lottery. Do you think that's true or false? Well, I know I would never want to win the lottery. I think it's a, it's a curse to win a lottery. Right? What, why? Well, it depends when you win it, but if you say you win it when you're sort of 40s or 50s, it means, that means that everything you've done in, the li in your life, all the work, any training, any skills, was completely pointless. <laughs> <laughs> I'd feel like an idiot if I won the lottery. Do you have the brain you have now as a teenager, or do you revert to your teenage brain? How would that make any difference to you? Well... <laughs> Sulking. No. Sulking, no. I just want, you know, wanted a bit of, you know, tension. <laughs> <laughs> Too much happens when you're a teenager. Too confusing. Like, uh, the first date, the first kiss, the first sex, the first drugs. I mean. That was an afternoon. I mean, it just was too <laughs> fast. <It> just... <laughs> but I had a cousin <laughs> who won the lottery. What's her name? Chlamydia. <laughs> I think her name's Veruca Sustainers. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, tell us about Taramosolata herpes. Come on. <laughs> Why am I on the show? <laughs> I have literally no idea. I neither do I. <laughs> tell us about your cousin. Two million dollars. Won two million dollars on the lottery. Had a heart attack right there on the spot. What well, would you rather be, a teenager or have a heart attack? <laughs> well, I think I'll go for the teenager thing. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I once convinced my friends when I was a teenager that I'd bought a hoverboard in the US from Back to the Future 2. David probably sells them on a website. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he does. I'll check. <laughs> <laughs> I think this show's turned into Call My Bluff this week. <laughs> Can you go back and be a teenage girl? <laughs> what I'd like to be. A Mexican teenage girl called Bernard. <laughs> she hasn't got legs, she's got wheels. A hovering, a hovering Mexican teenage girl called Bernard who's got no legs. My father only has one leg and my mother only has one leg. It's the truth. Really? Yeah. But one has a left leg and one has a right leg. So <laughs> can see. Right. <laughs> so I suppose they just met. got one big belt. <laughs> <laughs> right. 34% of adults would rather be a teenager again than win the lottery, true or false. I think it's higher, so it's false. Dave Steen, what are you guessing? We said true. OK, I can tell you the answer is false. Yeah. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. So, at the end of that round, it's three points for Sean's team and four points for Dave's team. Yeah. 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 And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your first one. Worst way to be woken up. Oh. Uh, with an erection. <laughs> In your back. The sound of keeping time vomiting. <laughs> <laughs> David, any, any thoughts? What's the worst way you've been woken up? <laughs> Is it by a cousin? <laughs> <laughs> um, Westlife waking you up, thinking that you were actually in a coma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Is it a woman demanding money in Pigeon English? <laughs> The sound of waves crashing against your plane windows. Oh. <laughs> it does involve water. Oh, well, right. Just being in the womb. Face. Water on your face is the right answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, the worst way to be woken up is having water thrown on you. Well, surely the worst way to be woken up is Kerry Katona shaking a stick at your face and saying, it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> Top celebrity to have a night out with. <laughs> Kate Moss, because whenever you're with her, it's a white Christmas. <laughs> Is it like um, Rosie and Jim? <laughs> you're talking I... about the ragdoll puppets? No, yeah, Rosie and Jim, Rosie and Jim. What are you doing watching that? <laughs> Just before Loose Women. Just before what? Loose Women. I'd <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like to take Loose Women out with me on a night <laughs> out. Well, oh, wouldn't we all? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joan, I imagine you've had some stunning nights out. Uh, one of my great nights was with George Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to see the, uh, 
the Hyde Park men's room at four in the morning, and it was just <laughs> amazing. Did you come across any police officers? <laughs> uh, it's a she. Angelina Jolie. Uh, no, that you want a night in, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Charlotte Church. Correct answer. Well done, Sean. Oh, thank you. All right. Bottom of the list of celebrities to go on a night out with is Dodie Al Fayed. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, David, and Alan have four points, but tonight's winners are Dave, Joan, and Alex with five points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panelists, our wonderful studio audience, and all of you for watching at home. Join us next week for a special show featuring all the best bits from the current series. See you then. Good night. to the best bits of 8 out of 10 cats on tonight's show. Vic Reed, John Barrowman, Nikki Graham, Louis Walsh, Alan Carr, David Guest, Lee Mack, Ulrika Johnson, Bill Adi, Michael McIntyre, and their captain, John Locke. And facing them tonight, Johnny Vegas, Joan Rivers, Jason Manford, Griff Reese Jones, Jade Goody, Alex Zane, Frankie Boyle, Boyd George, Fiona Allen, Pierce Morgan, Chris Addison, and their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, here's your host, Jimmy Carr. Welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, the show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. This week we're bringing you the very best bits from the latest series. Our first round is What Are You Talking About? Every week we team up with a leading polling organisation to find out what the British nation is discussing and it's our panellist's job to guess the five most popular talking points. Uh, take that aback with the uh, Inland Revenue Tour, I think it is, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's not front page news, surely to God. They've got, no, the Beatles have got a hit album. Oh, right? hang on, there's a lady going through the menopause as we speak. <laughs> That's how take that fan speak. What? At news words, they just go, Woo! <laughs> how are you today? Woo-hoo! <laughs> Do you want a cup of tea? Woo! <laughs> Why are they called take that? What's the name mean? On their video, they had this thing saying, if you don't like it, throw it in the bin, take that. Do that again? If you don't like it, throw it in the bin, take that. That's my favourite thing you've ever said. <laughs> Those are the instructions that come with their video. Well, they said it, they said it. I'm honest, I watched it at my caravan with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, yes. I imagine that was a party. <laughs> Yes, Take That have returned to the top of the charts. The reunion took longer than expected to put together because no one could remember who Howard was. <laughs> they spent six months rehearsing with a bloke from the Halifax advert. <laughs> I'm a celebrity to get me out of here. I started. And um, gripping stuff. I was actually asked to go on. Were you? I get asked every year and I'm that far away from Panto. It's good. <laughs> 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 Go on, what, would you ever think about it? I've thought about it, but in really vicious dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn up the first night, eat every bit of rice in the camp, <laughs> stand there looking menacing, and then set your own camp up ten yards away going, <laughs> ONE OF YOU WILL DIE TONIGHT! <laughs> I, I like David Guest. I think you he's, like him? He's great. I think he's great entertainment. Right, well, Don't you agree with that? Well, that's like, I mean, there's lots of great documentaries about Hitler. Well, I, this man's nothing like Hitler. He's done nothing wrong. He's, I, I vote for him. I want him on the Bush Tucker trial. I put him, <laughs> I'm literally I'm obsessed with seeing him repeatedly on television. I like David Guest. Is he very gay? Is who very gay? Is he very gay? Well, Michael. No, no don't yes. do that. <laughs> well, in fairness, in fairness, you are wearing a pink shirt and saying, I love David Guest. <laughs> 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 
mentioning my sexuality to Jimmy. Like Jimmy knows of my sexuality. Jimmy knows. <laughs> He's definitely gay. <laughs> To get on this show, you have to have a medical with Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> my wife is obviously squirming uh, watching this. Thinking, He's... oh, my God, I've married a gay. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if it's there. <laughs> yes, the latest series of I'm a Celebrity started this week. Fashion designer Scott Henshaw said he tried to turn the other men in the camp gay. What, Jason Donovan, David Guest and Tommy Anstis? Good luck with that. <laughs> I saw you went straight, you cut to me after the gay joke. He didn't. Even before you said gay, I thought, why am I on the screen? <laughs> hey, and I it's know... because... <laughs> the reason we cut to you was because some people yes. watching in Newcastle won't know what a gay man looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we think it's the fallout uh, from this KGB poisoning. The police said the, the death was suspicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they should upgrade it to yeah. fucking suspicious. <laughs> Is he having a traditional Russian burial where they put them in a, a little coffin inside a bigger coffin, inside a much bigger coffin? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're fine, David. Traditional Russian burial, you have to dig your own grave. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but don't blame me, blame Stalin. <laughs> no, on a serious note, we endangered her because it was on the planes. Yeah. It was in a bag. Yeah. yeah. In unless they put it in TK Maxx, you'll be fine. <laughs> they fine. found it yeah. a restaurant, they found it in two hotels. On a humpback whale. <laughs> <laughs> humpback whale's got a ten foot dick, hasn't it? That's that start of a song. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> oh, the humpback whale's got a ten foot cock. Do da, do da. The humpback whale's got a ten foot cock and it's so hard as a rock. That's I a think I... <laughs> This is the ongoing poisoning story. Doctors are advising anyone who's come into contact with polonium 210 to shit their liver out and then move house. <laughs> Nikki, what do you think of Madonna? She's a bit high maintenance. I like her, but to be honest, a whole week's news on her adopting the child. Oh. Who cares? <laughs> God, you're a big brother. <laughs> so were you looking for more news about what was going on in Kazakhstan this week? I'm not getting the bottom of this, just Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. <laughs> But yeah. you've managed to get more attention than Madonna in a very short space of time, so you're more fabulous. Oh, thanks, Rachel. On I'm a Celebrity, you claimed your maid's name was Vagina Kasiman. Is that true? <laughs> yes. Is she real? She's real. Are you sure she's I'm real? I'm positive she's as real as this set is real. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> her mother, and this is the truth, her mother loved her body part so much, she said if she had a girl, she was going to name it Vaginica. Then, no, this is true, not noble. <laughs> then she married a guy named Harry Seaman. Harry Seaman. And she became Vagina Seaman. What's her middle name? I have no idea. She hasn't got a middle name. I suppose she doesn't need one, really. <laughs> Mostly when she tells, tells her name, she's probably just wiping the drink they've just spat in her face. <laughs> <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> <laughs> But people have been talking about the fact that England lost the first test of the Ashes. What have they been saying then? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. oh I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't play their best bowler, which is a good idea because they should, you know. Who's he then? Monty Panasar. Actually, Australia have never uh, declared independence, so technically, we always win. <laughs> Uh, Vic, do you watch cricket? I like the fellow with the glass eye. <laughs> what okay, was that called? What's that bloke you talked about before? Who? Who what fellow? That cricketer that you mentioned. Monty Panesar. Him, with the glass eye. Has <laughs> he got a glass eye? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I can, you, you can prove it! You can prove it. What's that say there? <laughs> <Look>. <laughs> That's evidence. That's proof. Look, what does it say there? Proof. Proof. Right. <laughs> the thing is, it's not Next him, because he's got a turban, Monty Panasar. He took it off on that shot. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Hold on a sec. That's not a photo. <laughs> what else have the nation been talking about? Uh, submarines. Whoa. <laughs> well, they want to spend 20 billion pounds on submarines full of missiles. The mis That's it. The missile's going to be outdated by 2024. How do you know if a missile's gone off or something? Gone off? The bloody big bang out there. <laughs> <know, yeah>, yeah. <laughs> You're implying it was like milk and you go... <laughs> <laughs> you just farted. No, it's this scud. <laughs> 20 billion for the, the stupid moon thing and 10 billion for this stupid thing. Yeah. It's a good waste of money. Well, if they took all that money, everyone would have a tiara. Imagine that. <laughs> oh, I'm for that. No, that's great. I'd rather go with the nuclear weapons. Enough yeah. people think I'm gay. <laughs> Without a fucking tiara. Jesus. Without a fucking tiara? Yeah. <laughs> How often has tiara been prefixed with fucking? <laughs> you wearing my fucking tiara? <laughs> Fucking sort you out. Put my fucking tiara back in the fucking box. <laughs> All revelations in the McCartney divorce proceedings. All that business rumbles oh, on, doesn't I'll it? I tell you what, I wouldn't want to be the fella that introduced them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I introduced Heather Mills to Paul McCartney. Why? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what he's asking. <laughs> she's a, don't you think she's awful, Heather Mills? Yeah. He's Paul McCartney. You know, he wrote yesterday. She's Heather Mills. And today. A... And he'll probably write tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he's a relentless worker. <laughs> I, think the, well, I think the obvious thing, though, is, is that mostly when you meet a very beautiful woman, you assume there's a catch. There must be a catch. It can't be this good. And he thought the catch was the leg. Oh, it wasn't. <laughs> But this would never have happened to the Stones. None of the Stones would have ever married a one-legged nutter. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing he said was, she threw a bottle of ketchup That's at him. Right. And he's still not got it out of his hair, has he? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that, I like the way even celebrities can't have an argument without doing some product placement. You know, it's like, oh, he threw <laughs> some Heinz ketchup at me. <laughs> Some marmite bottles in a sock and hit me over the head. Tried to choke me with jaffa cakes and spray jiff in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Heather is going through a very rough time at the moment, and if she were here, I would tell her, time heals all wounds. <laughs> well, not that. You'd have to be a starfish. <laughs>40% of couples in counselling say what is a problem? Viagra. Oh. 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 These old guys that take Viagra. Oh, and it's good for 36 hours. You know how many orgasms you have to fake? <laughs> I imagine there's a certain amount of chafing involved as well. <laughs> oh, chafing those poor old dry ladies, they'd set them on fire. <laughs> 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 That's a painful image, isn't it? Yeah. I imagine Sting would quite like it, though. He does 15 hours with his tantric sex. Is that what he says? Even a terrific swordsman, after six hours... Swordsman? You know, the... <laughs> Where are you from, the 17th I'm century? <laughs> yes. 20% <laughs> of Brits have sent a text message what? Is it 20% of Brits have sent a text message when really a bunch of flowers and a deepest sympathy card would have been more appropriate? <laughs> Bring a kiss at the end of the message, then delete it, then putting it back on again afterwards. <laughs> do you ever do that? No, I should. Yeah, I will. No, I won't. <laughs> I, I like it when you do, Dave. 20% <laughs> of Brits have sent a text message playing the game Fuck You Roulette. 
uh, which is where you type fuck you into your text message and then just go through your contacts like that. <laughs> <laughs> One in five Scots say they drink because what? Because they've run out of heroin. <laughs> Scots said they drink because they want to. That's so close to the answer, I think I might give you that. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, one in five Scots say they drink because they want to get drunk. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> of course, not all Scots are alcoholics. Some of them are ex-alcoholics. <laughs> with drug problems. <laughs> Jimmy Carr is performing at this year's Glasgow Festival, <laughs> where he will be ripped to fucking pieces. <laughs> On their first mission, 75% of astronauts what? Never left Earth. <laughs> Do you think they landed on the moon? Do you think that's a genuine thing? Nah. Well, you can see the shadows of the photos. Well, there's proof if ever we needed it. Oh, <laughs> And the flag's flying. The flag's oh. flying? Oh. There's wind, but there's wind on the moon. The moon's very windy. Oh, the he's been there. The moon is not windy. Yes, it is very windy. It is not it's windy. windy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Otherwise, whoa, whoa. they'd Let's have built this. a windmill up there no, or something like that. I'm prepared to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the hardest man in England on this one. <laughs> it's bloody windy up there. Wind? Wind is no, air blowing around, you yeah. see. It's air blowing about. That's yeah. right, That's air on the moon. Wind, wind, mate, it comes in your face in the air. Of course there's there air on the moon, There is air on the moon. Fucking shut up! I can't believe I'm going to be a moron. All right, you know what? Okay. Easy. Yeah. yeah, I think we've upset Fiona. Let's no. all just take a moment. Oh, there's air. There's no oxygen on the moon. Oh, there is air. It just hasn't got any oxygen in it. And it What's it made of, then? Yoghurt? What's it made of, then? Yogurt. <laughs> Have a stuff! <laughs> you would make the best science professor in the world. <laughs> Have a stuff, moony air! <laughs> Write it down. Just for fun, one of them goes... Tss, can anyone hear that? <laughs> I bet at least one of them goes, are we there yet? <laughs> Second ages. But you didn't have to do that in a northern accent. Yeah, I did because I was trying to be stupid. Uh, <laughs> Three percent of Brits would like Tom Cruise to what? Come out of the closet. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> the closet anyhow he's sure he come out of a cabinet yeah. so it's just a joke have you met tom cruise a few times then i i, I think he's here <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> he's lovely he's very charming what do you think three percent of brits would like tom cruise to do make rain man to the revenge <laughs> yeah, i would so love that <laughs> what happens in rain man in rain man He's got an autistic brother, and he, he counts matches. That's the only important bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have two cousins that are autistic. <laughs> what are they called, David? It'd be some weird name like Clitty. Or... <laughs> Clitty and Anus. Yes, they're... Uh... He got their names right. It's Clitty and Anus. <laughs> just came to me. Clitty. <laughs> I found it. That's how I grab with him before you pipe up. <laughs> that was amazing. It was on your mind, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. Let's have a look at a clip to illustrate the statistic. Suda, I don't seem to have an email from you again. Really? I sent it at 3. Well, it's not here. I don't understand. I sent it. I thought you wrote down how to do it. Yes. Well, perhaps you wrote it wrong with your dyslexia and... Oh. Is there? That was a clip from a training video for office managers. If you've got dyslexia, there is a number you can call, but pointless giving it to you, you might be able to write it down, will you? <laughs> 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 Your related statistic, 16% of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscope. Do you think that's true or false? It's all bollocks. Apart from the magpies, obviously. You're going to see two magpies, haven't you? That's typical you're in the shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on, you must see two magpies every day, surely? Uh, several. Would you call yourself lucky? Absolutely. Every time I go past a building site, somebody goes... <laughs> <laughs> I like you. Come on, then you get hey, lucky. Bill! Bill, 
come here. I want to make love to you, Bill. I don't think it's ever happened before, but I imagine this weekend it's going to be happening a lot. <laughs> Builders, if you're watching, please. For us. <laughs> Can you make bird noises? I don't Some know. of them, yeah. I would like a chaffinch. Yeah. Well, no, chaffinch, all right. It's like a fast bowler running up, and so he goes... Want to do, 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 bowl. That's count down. No, he comes up. Boom, 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 boom. Bowl. Well, that, that's what the, the bird makes that noise. <laughs> Did Bill just stand up then? Amazing. That's extraordinary. A man actually gets out of his seat and is smaller than when he was sitting down. <laughs> Bill Oddy, I've had it up to here. <laughs> have you really had Bill Oddy up to there? <laughs> <laughs> you bloody haven't. Yeah, I used to work on a building site late. 34% of adults would rather be a teenager again than win the lottery. Do you think that's true or false? Too much happens when you're a teenager. Too confusing. Like, uh, the first date, the first kiss, the first sex, the first drugs. I mean, that was an afternoon. I mean, it just was too fast. <laughs> <It> just... <laughs> but I had a cousin. <laughs> Who won the lottery? What's her name? Chlamydia? <laughs> I think her name's Veruca Sustainus. <laughs> Come on, tell us about Taramos Lata Herpes. Come on. Why am I on the show? <laughs> I have literally no idea. I neither do I. Can you go back and be a teenage girl? That's what I'd like to be. A Mexican teenage girl called Bernard. <laughs> she hasn't got legs, she's got wheels. A hovering, a hovering Mexican teenage girl called Bernard who's got no legs. My father only has one leg and my mother only has one leg. It's the truth. Really? Yeah. But one has a left leg and one has a right leg. So <laughs> can see. Right. <laughs> so I suppose they just met. got one big belt. <laughs> <laughs>is the name of our final round. I'm going to be giving the teams a series of opinion polls and surveys. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Top reason to celebrate. I know! Jesus Christ, don't do that! Fuck, <laughs> 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 well, the life It's a funeral. <laughs> it's a <joke>. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You only go to funerals with people you don't like. <laughs> I've been to one. <laughs> I've never been invited back. I've been invited back. I've been to a funeral. <laughs> oh, I've been to one funeral. I didn't get invited back. <laughs> 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 That's the same job again next year, then. <laughs> the biggest worry for farmers. Is it like being asleep at night and the scarecrow tapping on your window? <laughs> Outside. <laughs> I'm just gonna put my killing head on. <laughs> Britain's favourite noise. Is it that honking noise that women's breasts make when you go out? <laughs> that last one was Jordan. Is <laughs> it uh. <laughs> That's the biggest hit I've ever seen. <laughs> OK, celebrity most in need of a makeover. Cherie Blair. <laughs> I think probably the most honourable thing I would do is I bought some pictures of Cherie Blair topless off the market and didn't publish them. There are just some things oh, you can't... Well, you thanks. just kept them for yourself, you <laughs> dirty <laughs> self. Well, they did one on Anne Widdicombe, didn't they? That was, that was fantastic, obviously, but it's pointless, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> it's like sprinkling glitter on dog shit, isn't it? <laughs> Best way to become famous? Is it, is it sleeping with Simon Cowell? Is that how you did it? No, that's not. <laughs> Thing most likely to make men cry? Speaking for the older generation, <laughs> I would have to say that it's accepting that your daughter's friends simply think of you as her dad. <laughs> so you're crying because you can't fuck your daughter's friends? <laughs> Come on. That is perhaps the most honest answer we've ever had on this show. Great image, isn't it? Just so good up to Bill Oddie, you go, oh, you must be Joanne's dad. <laughs> Welcome to Springwatch. I've got some binoculars, I'm in a shed. My daughter's having a sleepover. 
Craig Beer, hell of a show. <laughs> Well, that is the end of the show. Thanks to all our fantastic panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it for now, but 8 Out of 10 Cats will be back next year. We'll see you then.